watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Good morning to you. We are ready to go with some red fishing here. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup presented by Skeeter. That is Port Aransas, Texas, a notorious fishing town, and I mean that in a good way. Tommy Sanders here with the great Captain Rick Murphy. And Rick, we, you, you've got all the info, and we're going to be leaning on you so hard today, but this is going to be a unique game. Just 10 teams but fishing hard for three days. You're absolutely right, Tommy, and the cool part about these 10 teams is they're made up of guys that, one, they love to sight fish, and then you have some guys that are the traditional popping court guy trying to attract this stuff. But I'm really excited about what's gonna happen in the next three days. Absolutely, 10 two-person teams, three full days as we said. You get two red fish per day. Now the slot limit here in Texas is 20 to 28 inches. Those fish must fall between that. So obviously you want the heaviest two fish that will get under or right at that 28 inch mark. Heaviest three day total wins, 50 grand the first first place team. That's, that's plenty of incentive. The incentive for us is it's just plain fun to watch red fishing. It absolutely is. You know, Tommy, and the cool part about this is, you know, these guys got some really good weather that uh, they're gonna have on here in day one, and I'm really excited about some of the stuff that you're gonna see. There'll be some top water as well as some guys that are throwing jigs with soft plastics, and they're gonna really do well. Oh, the more the merrier. Let's take a look at our hummingbird unlock the lake. They, here on the southeast coast of Texas, we have that big barrier island complex that runs all the way from just south of Houston, basically all the way to the Mexican border. The Laguna Madre is the space between the mainland and that, and that's where we're concentrating. That's our playing field. You're absolutely right. And so from our takeoff in Port Aransas to the north, Port O'Connor is the jetty. There's a, about a 40 to 50 mile run if the guys are going up there north. But the great part about the habitat is that you have uh, sawgrass marsh, you have uh, sand bottom, and then you have shell reefs and oyster reefs, depending on where these guys are setting up. So it'll be really interesting. I can't tell you how excited I am to be here with you in the studio to give you the play-by-play -play as to what I'm seeing well, with these we guys. Well, we are so happy to have you with us, uh, Captain Rick, and we are anxious to see which which directions these guys are going to go, what, what technique, what approach they're going to take. Let's get out on the water right now. The team from Southwest Florida. It's Jeremy Himes and Mickey Gibbs, and you know, they've they, they, they qualified through another tour, uh, the Power Pole Tour. The water is so high. And uh, they have a, a real to. seasoned so team, and they're out. really, really good. Let's All listen. That grass right there, that's Sparkini grass. There'll be groups of them in there. Really, we'll throw swim jigs and Smaller jigs in there. We need to get that motor out. Dragging now. We'll have them. Eventually, these fish will start blowing up in there. Don't don't put it too far up. Just enough to where it kind of yeah, I got it. Drag just a little bit. Really, we'll probably take a gulp and throw in there and yeah, just we'll start take throwing. the time right up in that stuff. I'm gonna start throwing my uh, weighted bass hook now. Uh, come on. You know, Tommy, a little difference in, uh, they don't have the 30 rods laid up on the bow of the boat like you'd see traditionally in a bass company. No, that's, that's a good observation there. And these guys are using spinning rods, which typically from Texas, most of the Texas teams and the bass guys are going to be using conventional Think tackle, about you know, bait grass casters. Like this. If you throw this far away from him, he might not even know it's even there. That's the bad part. Hines talking about the importance of being able to put your cast where it needs to be, and I know you emphasize that just before we came on the air today, so we'll get into that more. There's another dimension to our teams here. 
because six of our teams fe feature not only a standout, very decorated redfish angler, but also an angler, a crossover from the Bassmaster yeah, Elite Series. That's the on. case here. And it looks like they got one on here. Ricky's got one on. He's from Texas, so they do have a little advantage. He knows the water when he showed up here pre-fishing. Looks that like stands, a good one. Yeah, Mark Menendez. Tiny little thing. He ain't gonna work. Stalwart the Bassmaster Elite Series. <laughs> First of all, a fish within the slot, 20 to 28 yeah. inches. Over there. Yeah, that fish to me looks like he's going to yeah. be probably yeah, about a four pounder, somewhere around 20, 23 to 24 inches. I wonder how that felt for Mark to be netting a fish. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because the if vast you're unfamiliar, guys the Elite Series are not allowed to use nets. Right. Oh, did not make the slide. Just short. Wide angle lens made him look big. <laughs> Don't give away all the secrets here. Though. Yeah, I like it. So I got the starter work going. It broke right there. Must have been a moulet. These bites are real soft today. They're coming off quick. Are they? Yeah. So it they looks like Ricky's using a, a weedless spoon and yeah, he's tipping it with some type of scented trailer. There's either fish bites or uh, a gulp. I couldn't see very well, but that's kind of cool. It'll be neat to see the way he, if he's reeling it straight back or if he's jigging the spoon like you would typically jig a lead-headed soft plastic. Mark Menendez there, like the rest of our bass anglers, our Elite Series anglers in here, looking for some crossover in the techniques. And Mark says, hey, I'm just fishing for bass. I am bass fishing for redfish, and what's really neat about it is there are certain areas that we've gotten into, and I'm getting the bites. Then we'll change to another area. Ricky takes his proven tactics for redfish, and he gets the bites, and I'm excluded from it. So we're taking a multi-prong approach at this so that we can cover the biggest swath of water. Your partner Ricky Bortz also got his Got his start in bass fishing, made the transition over to redfish about, uh, well, a decade ago, and has done very well. He certainly has. You know, certainly with him being from Texas, um, you know, he knows the water. But what's amazing to me is that he's fishing really close to where the takeoff was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Two teams we've watched so far are just right around the corner, still running. That's Dwayne and Patrick, and um, it looks like they're idling into a place. Running. Let's go up to the team of Houston and Hudnall. Derek Hudnall. Ron Houston. Oh, no. Rat. Florida Little Angler. rat red. Old porpoise wants him. That little fish ate that big plug. Crazy, huh? They're hungry. Naples, he's on the right, and Derek from Baton Rouge on the left. Are you serious, dude? Freaking porpoise. <laughs> Got that redfish. He ate that redfish he just threw back. Yep. He came up here and ate that redfish he just threw back. <laughs> What's that? It's a porpoise. Dolphin. You hear him out there coming? That was a dolphin. He came up and he ate, and he ate that redfish he threw back. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that was pretty neat. <laughs> now he's going to hang around the boat. One thing a porpoise don't like is the top water. 
So what Ronnie's doing there, Tommy, is that we've Can learned <laughs> if we throw our lures in the vicinity of that porpoise, they are not used to having things drop on their oh, head. So you kind of it'll make them evacuate and get out of there. Interesting. Oh, go ahead, Jay. We're up here in this uh, little ICW, and we're fishing these marsh banks, and we had a slow tide going, outgoing tide until about the next 45 minutes. It's going to aggressively drop off. And what we're hoping is all the fish that are up on these flats over here are going to have to come out and through and get feed on this grass and then work their way out to this ICW in this deeper water. So we're just kind of waiting for the water to drop out a little bit to, for our game plan to come and play. And we're just going to keep casting until that happens. Chad Manning, also a Florida anglers. multi-species master, sort of in the Rick Murphy mold a little bit. Yeah, he mean, you know, he works for a private guy a lot of times. They're off Blue Marlin fishing for all through the Caribbean. He's an unbelievable fisherman. It's just so diverse. And I think what they're challenged with right now, his, Tommy, is what he was talking his about. Tides was up a little bit. The water's yeah, so high. These fish all the way out no. here. Yet. That the fish can uh, be the water's moving around the points. in the grass, back up in the grass. So they're waiting for that tide to fall a little, and then those fish will slide out of the grass and be a lot more vulnerable to catch. It's that cove over there that we did the best in. Saw the most amount of fish, remember? Yeah, it is. We're just, I'm literally trying to give it a few minutes away from yeah. the sun to get up so I can see what we're doing. Yeah. So there's a, are we still going or no? Go ahead. <clears throat> so inside all these marshes, there's natural drainage fields. And we're in a pretty big boat. We're in a 25-foot bay boat. <clears throat> and it, you can be in this, these chutes, and they're nearly the size of the boat. And it's a foot and a half difference. So I mean, <laughs> you can be trolling motor along, and I mean, you not see it, and pff, you're on ground. So we need that sun to come up a little bit so we can not help navigate us around. The last thing we want to do is end up high or dry or, or spooking fish by running aground with a trolling motor. Or making the camera guy get out and push. Yeah, the camera, <laughs> that camera guy, he looks, he's, got, he's even got on wading boots. He's ready to get him and push. <laughs> what a beautiful morning, huh, Tommy? Mm -hmm. Just ideal. Wind's flat for now. Mm-hmm. You know, I was looking at Google Earth last night. And right behind that deal, uh huh. Back in there, there's one in big old shoots in there. This tidal fishing's all about timing. You can be around the best school in on the, in the area, and if you ain't there at the right. Well, well, was it? Was a short strike, short strike behind me. Yeah. Straight out. Straight out. Bass guys are so smooth in the way they cast. Well, according to the redfish guys, they cast a whole lot more than redfish guys do. Of course they, <laughs> they do. They complain <laughs> about it a little bit. <laughs> matter. Hey, they're just casting one after the other all day long. Yeah. It just make it look like poetry in motion, you know. Mm -hmm. Just a little flip of the tip of the rod, and there goes. We've had to cover foot. so much water the last three days. We really haven't gotten to play the tide in certain areas, so. We're in a two box now, so just keep on fishing. But we're still on. But we're not. All right. We're live. I'm we're trying alive. to stay off this motor, Chad. Yeah, I hear you. Good morning, everybody. Control that drill. Welcome to the Bass Mass Redfish in these flats. Classic the thing here. Is you want to start we way are back in Port Aransas, Texas. And you just, we're not even using trolling motor right now. We're letting the wind control we our drifts. We are fishing in the Laguna Madre. And so we just want to. I'm sitting here with Mr. Patrick Walters. What is he talking about? <laughs> AKA Mr. Redfish himself. 
Patrick Walters. I'm surprised nobody ran down here. I don't know, just one other boat. Dwayne Eshte and Patrick Walters on the left right there. Patrick's the young gun of the of the of the series, 27 years old, and certainly he's been teamed up with Dwayne, and Dwayne's probably won Bar more money on the redfish yeah. professional redfish than any of us put get together. Get some sun in a little while. He's we'll so get talented, 57 years some, old, brings uh, a lot to the table. Sand holes. God, I'm ready for some sand holes. Is that like donuts? Donut holes? Donut? Uh, ooh. Is that like donut holes? But why is a donut hole a ball? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Can't tell you that. I don't know why. Why not just call them donut balls? Even though donut it is balls. the donut hole. Yeah. But. Well, but there's a hole, but then there's a donut ball, right? So the balls comes out the hole? No. The donut hole is the ball. Oh, gotcha. If anybody had to answer these questions, we're answering them this morning. <laughs> if anybody had questions about that. You're right. We're going we're gonna to give you we, answers. Yeah, thanks, this is guys. not going to just be a fishing. Uh, Educational. <laughs> it's gonna be, we we are all about eating <laughs> and food. We are your food critics. We have been eating pretty good this week. All right, we get to solve the burning issues of the day and redfish at the same time. We're gonna take a move right now. We have more teams out there arriving at the spot number one for Plan A and getting set up. And hopefully we get some fish in the boat, some keeper fish. Let's. Uh, Take a look at this team right now. McCabe and Zaldane. Matt McCabe and Trey Zaldane. They're checking on us live now. Give us an update, Captain Matt. All right, we just made it across Corpus Christi Bay to the Laguna Madre. We're getting rigged up and we're going to go drip these flats on the backsides of these islands. So we just kind of wanted to stop here, get our stuff rigged up, and get our uh, gear together, and we're fixing to go get us a start on starting point right there with this dumps in to this back side of the Laguna Madre over here. Got that ready. That'll be good to go. Need my glasses. There we are. A little bit of a bouncy ride over, but wasn't too, too bad. Boy, Trait's in the zone, isn't she? Yeah, she's uh, grinding hard already. Mm -hmm. Not much, because that sign's blinding me. <laughs> that sun is, uh, it's a little windier than we expected. We thought today, it, it should lay maybe. I don't know where mother nature got it wrong, but uh, a lot more wind than expected. Today is supposed to be pretty chill where you can move around and, and um, kind of see things a little better. But right now it's saying hi, it's a little rough. Rachel Ding been competing in the Bassmaster Opens for a good many years now. Also married to another one of our troll team members. Two guys. Yeah. That's the Hold tournament on. within the tournament, Tommy. That's which which Zaldane's going to yeah. win versus the other ten? You know. You'll have to <laughs> chime in on that later. You're going to make your decision. Remote with, control. Uh, Steve Bowman and have his input on that. <laughs> well, good morning about a 20 minute run about a 15 mile an hour wind it was a little rough coming down to our area here <laughs> a little bit but we're here and we're on a shallow shallow flat you're gonna see a lot of that this week over the next three days flats fishing man this is a it's a lot like smallmouth fishing up north where you're looking for them in the kind of the sand holes of, of grassy areas so we just pulled up to an area that it's got a lot of grass real flat water I'm talking under two feet of water and this um, this 24 foot Skeeter is actually floating on top of this stuff really nice. Whereas a regular bass boat in like a like 1.8, 1.6 will be scrubbing the bottom. This thing floats super high. So Captain Ryan up here is just trying to be as quiet as possible, letting the wind kind of push us through these flat areas. And we're just trying to make bomber casts all along here, just fan casts. And uh, for the bass fishermen that doesn't know about these redfish, they're kind of like carp. They're just, they're just kind of up there looking for little crustaceans. They got a mouth that faces down, so they're really just kind of scanning the flats here. And when we pull these silly looking spoons and swim baits by, 
they can't stand it, man. They're apex predators here. There's not too many predators in these flats that, uh, that would eat a redfish. So they're the apex predator and they absolutely hammer anything that comes by them. So yeah, I love what we're looking at too. I mean, we've already got some mullet in the area jumping. It's already showing some life on this flat. Um, I mean, we're just getting started on the, really the location where we want to be, but uh, it should happen pretty early. Uh, this actually, this little bit of a breeze that they weren't calling for, mm -hmm. I think is actually going to maybe be to our benefit. Uh, it won't make the fish so quite, quite so aware and spooky. So that's a good thing for us. I've got my wife's spinning rod in hand right now. She's also fishing out here today, but I'm going to try to catch one. How bad do you want to beat her? <laughs> Pretty bad. They asked us yesterday who, who, who was going to place higher and I really don't care who wins, but hopefully we win because all that money goes in the same account. <laughs> I hope we win too. Yeah. So. But the cool thing about this, like it's, um, you know, it's when you hook these redfish and I don't do a lot of it, but the three days of practice I've seen a really cool thing is when you hook one in like inches of water, like a bass would dig down four, five, six, ten 10 feet or whatever. And you just give it line. These redfish, they're 180 degrees back or 180 degrees forward. They can't go down. So they're either going to strip line, boom, 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 like right off the bat, or they're going to swim towards you. And it's your job as a great angler to catch up with them and keep that, that hook peg. So, um, you know, they typ typically have a little softer mouths. So, you know, when you hook them, they, they stayed hook unless they get buried in the grass. Yeah, a lot, um, of, a lot of people make that mistake, man. They make the mistake of like, because these redfish, they'll eat it and they'll they'll be still moving and running towards you as, yep. as you've got them hooked. Yep. And everybody thinks, oh, I lost him. Yeah. You didn't really lose him. You just got to speed up and catch up to him because he's running right at you. Got him, dude. Go. Got him. Oh, I don't yeah. know if that's a trout or red. Look, we just, we just puffed one out here. Let me... When you get the power pole on the uh, on the dash right there to the left of the wheel, the left of the all steering right. wheel. So, this boat's going to be chaotic all day here. We're small fish. Small fish. Red. We just had a huge puff out right here. I don't know if y'all can see it or not, but huge puff out right here. That's good indication of really good fish. Ryan Rickard and Chris Saldane looking for their first keeper, the first inside the slot fish today. We're looking through, throughout our whole field for that first one today. We're just now getting set up, settling into a day of fishing. We've got three days ahead. Ten two-man teams, or two angler teams, I should say, and we'll get right back to it in a moment. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is brought to you by Skeeter Boats. Minn Kota, and by Lithium Pros. We're back, still just getting started on the first of three full days of fishing for our 10 teams here in the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship for Tarantis and all the environs north, south, east, and west inside the uh, complex of islands known as the Laguna Madre. Our takeoff there is Port Aransas, of course, and a, a Definitely a big time fishing town builds itself as the fishing capital of the state of Texas. So we have got some great stuff ahead of us. So happy to have the winningest, all time winningest saltwater tournament angler anywhere, Captain Rick Murphy. And Rick, just a, just a great day. But these guys have got a very specific task to do. It's fun to catch them, but they got to catch them just the right length and just the right size. 20 inches to up to 28 inches. And the cool part about this, Tommy, is that these guys are comprised of a bunch of different makeups of the way they fish. You have guys that love to throw popping corks. You got guys that throw soft plastics on a jig head, bouncing on the bottom, which is a kind of a quiet approach. You got guys that are throwing top water. A lot of the teams are sight fishermen. So we're gonna see how well they do at, they're, they're all right now blind fishing because they're waiting for the sun yeah. to get up. Once that sun gets up, they're going to move onto the flats or they'll move into those areas and actually start looking for the fish. As the weather changes, we're going to see how that's going to affect them over the next three days. It may be very important to hit a big lick today, right? Absolutely. Okay. You've got to put two in the well, and then everybody can breathe. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And that'll be fun, too. Ronnie Moore is with us as well. And Ronnie, of course, all Bassmaster fans know Ronnie. And we're, we're One of the reasons this whole thing was put together is to, uh, to showcase the commonalities between bass fishing and redfish. That's what's going to be cool, Tommy, is seeing our Bassmaster Elite Series pros, the ones that make up about six of the ten teams, how they adjust and how much they contribute to the two 
two fish limit per day. But one thing we talked about yesterday getting prepared for this, the difference between a 28 and a quarter inch fish and a 27 and 7 eighths, those guys, those redfish anglers that know deciphering that and knowing when to leave, when to stay and when to find the fatter, shorter fish, you know, it's going to be a game of inches and quarter inches this week to see who actually gets the biggest fish. And that'll be important with that slot limit. Absolutely. Let's get back out on the water right now. A lot of our teams, most of them now, either set up or very near to the spot where they're going to begin their day. Dwayne Eshte, super highly decorated redfish angler. So many wins to his credit. And Patrick Walters, who at a very young age has established himself as definitely a top tier elite guy. Absolutely. Uh oh. Drag screamer. Put the poles down. He ain't a huge one, but he is a red. So don't step back. Mr. Patrick Walters here. Mr. AKA Redfish Master here. Gotta get him in the boat first. I can pull a little drag on him there, Tommy. Mm. Hey, we didn't zero. Boom! All right, you take care of this. Leave him in the water. Okay. I'm gonna go get the live well of work running. Get the live well and uh... so we might have our first keeper. Yeah, I believe we do. They seem confident. He's got to be minimum 20 inches in length. More than 28. He said that was a $400 net. Short little guy. He's probably 23. Inches. Dwayne, you want to measure them? Uh, you, I mean, we don't have to, okay. but I guess for. We don't have to if you don't want to. I just. He's definitely a keeper. Yeah, what we'll do is I'll show you when the sun really gets up. There's a. We're fishing. It's a three foot flat, and there's good grass in here and there's good sand holes. You'll see them in it. What these the redfish are doing is they'll just be sitting in those sand holes feeding and they're just really kind of swimming around. But if you can cast at a long, I mean, further cast the better. If you can get your bait in that sand hole, it's most likely when you're gonna get your bite. And you're gonna get your bite probably the first five seconds, 10 seconds of your cast. Yeah, you can. Get out your way. and Walters. Interesting to see. They'll, they'll let us know what they guess to make the way to that fish to be. Yep. It'll not be official until we get the weigh-in time. You can find it right here also on Bassmaster.com. Back to another Bassmaster Redfish Master combo. Manning and Heron. Remember we saw fish out. Oh, you got no trout. Yeah. Well, they're in here good, aren't they? Trout kill. Redfish is in here too. Just all a matter of time. See how much water is back in them bushes now? Got one? Yeah. Redfish? Yes. 
Where's the net? And that le left Over here on the left side? Left side. No, 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 no. Get. Come on now. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. All right. Pulls down. Did it come out in there? It did, didn't it? Whoo! All right. Leave him in the net. We get the, I don't really need to check him. I can tell you. No, he, he's good. He's good. We're not even going to bother to measure this one. You need an estimate because I'm going to put it four, probably four and a half, five pounds. Yeah. That right here is a 24 inch fish. Look, you get the fish, I'll get the, the bait, okay? Hold on, let me get the well. Here, just leave him in the net and bring him back here. I can't. The bait's in the sink of the net, dude. All right, I got the bait. Well, I'm going to have to hold them over. There we go. We're pumping water now. You put him in here, dude. Oh, that's some dangerous stuff going on what right there, man. You know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I'm over here panicking for him. And I'm not even there. That's bigger than what you think. So a 24-inch fish estimated, four or five pounds? Yes, sir. Estimate. I would say Looked all like of that. Fish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For so sure. they might be in the right area? Possibly? It could, it could be. They just, they just got to get the right size. It's our Skeeter Boats bird's eye view, the uh, aforementioned porpoises that uh, were bedeviling one of our teams a little bit earlier are out in force today. They talk about the redfish as an apex predator. He's not the absolute apex. Oh, no. Those guys there, they can eat whatever they want, mm -hmm. <laughs> when they want. And I can tell you, Tommy, the one thing that's bad when you have the porpoises in and around you, you know, that porpoise has the ability to, with his sonar that they have been mm. naturally built in. And as they're searching the areas for something to eat, whether it's a mullet or a redfish or a trout or, you know, in Florida, different species, they can shut down a bite faster than anything you've ever seen. They I just, mean, just vanish. Yeah, you well, it just right makes there. everybody go into hiding and kind of yeah. lay down low because, you know, they certainly uh, have the ability to stop the fish from feeling comfortable. Because mm. they're there for the same reason, and that's to have breakfast, you know, yeah. <laughs> in this case. You can tell Ron Houston's oh, right now. really tuned in on those porpoises. He's trying to get them out of there. Yeah, he had the had an undersize he threw back, which is immediately right into the mouth of a porpoise. Yeah, the porpoise <laughs> ate him right yeah, away. Yeah. Thanks for the breakfast. Yeah. You know? Looks like Ronnie's going to probably put on a big jig or something and throw over there towards the porpoise and try to run him out of the area. fishing oh, on ties on there Derek from southwest south central Louisiana so plenty of saltwater experience for him to rely on today he told me a funny story when I was talking to him about a few things they used to call them dope heads when I they heard would him say catch that. I a red heard fish it. because of the, how they how easy they were to catch Back over to Ryan Rickard, Chris Saldane. Chris Saldane, 17 years fishing the Bass Masters. Two wins, including a tournament to decide the Angler of the Year 2015. Ryan Rickard, 17 second places. Can you imagine being the bridesmaid 17 times? <laughs> Got him. Yep. Atta boy. Atta boy. 
Oh gosh. Oh. Stay out there. He ain't that big, dude. He ain't that big. No? No. Get this fish in the well quick. Get this for me. That's one will go in the well, though. Dude, they smoke it so hard. Uh, well, you can tell he's 18. Ryan he's is definitely very there. No, he's definitely there. He's around the nest in the boat. He knows exactly. Yeah, he's very methodical. Look, here we're going to measure. 23, we're good. Five pounder. 23 inches? Yeah. Good job, brother. Yep. It's a little hollow belly. I mean, it's, that's bass fishing 101. This is like the original Bastrix. Uh, it's just a, I think this is a five inch uh, original Bastrix. This is, this started the whole hollow belly craze way back in like 1999 or 2000. So this originated as a bass bait, but it's, I mean, it's just a bait fish imitator. Good job, dude. this hookup right here you ever uh, what do you think about that bait selection well I think a paddle tail and blind casting situations is certainly the way to go that or a spoon because really right now with a low light Tommy they're just it's a search bait situation you can't sight fish anything you don't have fish that are blowing up or tailing uh, so why not you put on something that you can throw a long ways and the paddle tail itself allows it to vibrate the lateral line of the redfish feel it and they eat it in the dark well my main man right here just put us a five pounder in the boat got a ton of mullet working right here and uh, we we had bait in here the other day when we found these fish but not like this and I mean these mullet are just shattering which means to me I, I feel like the predatory fish are moving them so um swim baits dude <laughs> they eat swim baits <laughs> yeah yeah they smoke them swim baits when they when they are on the swim bait bite or the spoon bite it's really good but the swim baits they're really keyed in on right at the second we've only caught two this morning so far but we've probably only got 50 or 60 casts in the water yet so we got all day it's only a five pounder in live well, but oh my gosh, do they absolutely <laughs> murder job it. It is so much fun. I like this little breeze. It cuts down on that intimidating, spooky fish that you have to creep on, which we're kind of creeping anyway, just kind of moving up 20 yards or so, power pulling down and just fan casting in an area but this wind and and these mullet landing like this makes them not so aware of like the compression of the boat the the uh you know like the pitter patter on the boat when the waves hit it mm -hmm. so this will help us so tommy you can see that mullet jumping in the it's background right, right behind you know, man i'm gonna tell you something tomorrow is gonna be a different ball game the cool you know for us the cool part for us is we really tried as we were pre-fishing to target areas that would have full protection no matter what happens with the wind. Yep. So if it blows 30, we're going to be fine. If it blows 20, we're going to be fine. If it blows five, we're going to be fine. Uh, you know, a lot of the guys, which unfortunately, wherever you find fish is where you find fish. So unfortunately, some of the guys that have patterned fish out on big wide open flats, that may be a problem come when the, uh, the wind really kicks up. So. You guys see it on Bass Live all the time where we're up north smallmouth fishing and when that wind starts blowing it absolutely annihilates any pattern or area you had going so it's the same thing down here. We're obviously in the Gulf that south wind is kind of the predominant wind down here yeah. but we're it's forecasted to blow out of the north so again just like bass fishing whenever that happens it's a huge change at north northeast wind and, and you know that predatory fish just you know starts to become inactive less like an apex predator so we're trying to stay on top of them captain ryan kept us on these kind of you know northern banks um you know we're on the south end of the the gulf here or this area but we're trying to trying to tuck up against these kind of northern banks so the wind kind of blows over us um but like if you're out there on that giant bay and those giant flats i mean you're gonna get murdered by the wind tomorrow so 
Um, but for us, we're gonna take it one day at a time. We've got a general area here, I would say within a mile or so, and we've got like three money spots within that area. Ryan and Chris, uh, things brighten up when you get that first keeper to come into the boat. But it's talking bad. about what we were just talking about before we came on today, this is the big topic, Rick, the weather, what it's gonna do. Well, certainly on Friday, you know, what I saw early this morning, is that the wind is supposed to lay down through the day. We get around 9, 10, 11 o'clock, it's supposed to lay down, but then late this evening, leading into Saturday, it's supposed to blow 25, 15 to 25 out of the north. Here's the bad news about this. When you have north wind and redfish typically like high humidity and south and southeast wind, it could shut the bite totally down. It'll be real interesting to see what happens. As the high pressure, the front goes by, it'll be interesting. And then Sunday comes, the wind's supposed to go back into the south, traditionally this typical Texas weather, and, and we'll see if that allows the bite, or did it get wrecked from all the high winds on Saturday? And the, the wind, the magnitude we're talking about tomorrow, as you mentioned before we came on, moves water around too, which certainly can affect a fishing spot. Great point. You know, the, a lot of these places these guys are fishing, you had uh, oh, talking about Chris tomorrow. talking about a foot and a yeah, half of water that the, they, the they may be 300 yards from that place wow. if all the wind blows out. It depends on he what happens with the tide and the wind ball. direction. If they're going together, it could be problematic. Huh? That one ain't gonna help us. No. No, little red. I gotta get a big. It looks like there is some kind of I'm bite. Dink manufacturer. Yeah, they so got a little right bite there. going on. It's just a matter <laughs> of getting the right fish. Bait. That fish didn't eat it, but he pushed the spoon almost clear out of the water, and then he cast it right behind it with a slower presentation and was able to catch the fish. The teamwork. Guys getting the lay of the land here and the tenor of the weather as they settle into their position for three strong days of competition that we look forward to and have been looking forward to for a long time in a special place, Southeast Texas, coastal fishing. We've got a couple of three teams on the board, as a matter of fact, right now, and we'll see who makes it next time we check in with them. We'll be right back. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. What a treat today. Getting some team fishing action, a rare treat for us. And of course, for the first time ever on our live platform, we are fishing for redfish. This is the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup competition. Three days, 10 teams, two fish limit per day inside a slot limit of 20 to 28 inches. The two biggest ones you can bring in under 28 inches are what you want on your scorecard. We got three teams on the board so far score wise. It's like our first visit. Team of Land and Savoie. There's Mickey Savoie. Hooked up. I sure hope he doesn't hurt that fish. That guy is one <laughs> big dude. He is a big guy. <laughs> Sounds like Travis has already got the live well going, yeah, so can... he's confident. Mm. <clears throat> got to get this out of the way, Tommy, but Nicky Savoie, former NFL tight end, so you, we know he's good at catching things. He's just transitioned into catching redfish this week, <laughs> not football, so that's that's the connection there. No. LSU, New like Orleans God. Saints, a few yeah. other teams as well. He's not a, he's not a monster. You sure are taking your time with him. Yes, I am. He's bigger than five. Yes, I am. Ready? Come on. Woo! That's what I'm talking about. On the board, he's not a monster. He's about six pounds, 
but we'll take him this early in the morning with the front coming. I think there's some more out there. We just started to see them push up. That's what we were pointing at. <clears throat> I think there's a school still out there. If they're still out there, we'll see what happens. But good start to the morning. It's always good to get the pressure off. There's one nice six pounder right there. Good South Texas redfish. He's a little skinny, but uh, he's kind of like me. We need something like my partner, a little bigger, a little fatter. What you talking about? <laughs> What you talking about? Travis Land, the Texas angler, of course, Nikki Savoy from Louisiana, cut off Louisiana originally down there on the intercoastal. So I noticed that Nikki's throwing a big half ounce gold spoon. The cool part about the gold spoon, again, like we talked about earlier, it's a search lure. You can throw it a long way. You're just simply reeling it back. However, when you do get the bite, because you're a straight reel, no twitching, it's usually a great hookup with all these braided lines. So great lure to have early in the morning if you're not sight fishing because you're searching for the fish to find you as well. And that duo, I mean, we have 10, ang 10 teams competing this week, 20 anglers, and, and you had your eye on land and Savoie because of regionally, they, they know this body of water. Yeah, they do. Yeah, and they were, you know, they were keeping me updated through their pre-fishing and they were doing Look very, how very well. They are down. Like, you can't even see them, that's a, that's a trout there. That's a uh, brook trout. That's a <laughs> nice bite catch, Tommy. Oh, yeah. That trout doesn't know how lucky he is that There's we're in a redfish about... tournament. Otherwise, he would be his, uh, saltwater fish. His next swim would not be in the Gulf. Like that. Mm -hmm. Speckled trout, speckled sea trout. Pretty darn aggressive fish. A lot of people don't know, but that actually is not in the trout family. That's in the drum family. Drum? That's in the yep. drum family, just like a redfish, yep. So that one speck out of the way, and they'll get back to the redfish right now. Eshte and Walters. 20 pound braid to a uh, 20 pound fluorocarbon leader. I don't know how much, usually typically you don't need a leader in redfish, and a lot of times it's just for abrasion resistance. But um, for this, mainly it's just, this is real clear water down here, and we're fishing actually in Laguna Madre, that's where we're at right now. Got him? Good one? Uh, he's getting better. <laughs> getting the net. <laughs> Might be another flounder. Really? I don't know. Hey, stake us down. Good job. Oh, it's in this side. We have to check him. Do what now? Push back. The measuring board's on this side. Oh, yeah. Check this one. They've already got a five pound keeper you're in the boat. You good? Oh, he's good. He's good all day long. It's not big, but he's number two. Patrick. He's number two. Tell these people what we're doing here. Hey, I got a uh, hook out if you need it. You got it? I'm probably going to need it. Ooh, well, it's close, but if I can get a pair of pliers to him. Here. Grab it real quick. He's right there. It's just I can't hanging. see it. Yeah, I've I can't see it. it. Here. I can't see. It's his lips in the way. Thank there you, Patrick. Out all day long, Patrick. He ain't used to handling these big fish, <laughs> as y'all can see. Oh, yeah, 21. 21 and a quarter. All day long. Money, 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 money! So money, I'm, Patrick Walters. You see how happy Dwayne is? He's got two. Now you can breathe, because yeah. everything at this point is an upgrade. And the only, the only team with a limit so far. Correct. Right. right. Good position to be in. They want to. They want to get rid of both those two. Let's not of beat course. around the bush. But I mean, you're right. That that lightens things up considerably. We saw it happen to this team earlier too when they put their first keeper on the boat. Rickard, Zaldane. Get him, dude. There you Big go. One, That's bro. a good one. That's a good one. Big one. Yes, That's dude. A good one, That's a good one. Buddy. That's a puller. 
That's a good fish there. Swimmer. Can you pull down for me? Power pull down for me? Yep. Ryan is just so methodical. That's a good fish, Chris. Yeah, this is the way he right approaches here, a place, the way he fishes a place, the way he reels in a fish. <laughs> it's just, well, it's I so textbook across the board. He at first. He just didn't look like he was that great when he just rolled. I don't know, man. Almost acting like he's hooked funky like here. You're good right there, Seth. You're good. Come on your left side. Come on your left side right here. Oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that'll work. That's definitely a better fish. Five that'll work. Six. I don't know. He's short, but he's got he's stocky. The stock of this fish is right, bro. Almost looks like the fish you caught the other day. You're right in the same spot. It does, dude. They've got a five pounder in the live well already. And this will be their limit fish as well. Oop. So wait till you hear one. his okay. attitude. You know, the guy he puts that yeah. second one in there. Dude. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Need a little heavier, but let's see what he is. You want to put him on the stick too? It's just shy of six pounds. We need to do it quick. He's there all day. 24. 24. There all day. Hey, you're good. You're good. like he was eight pounds. He gave me a quick little uh, glimpse of maybe he was eight pounds. A little short of eight pounds. <laughs> that's all right, we got two fish in the box. That's, that's, listen, our day gets a lot easier from here. We got two fish in the box and uh, we just need some upgrades. We got all day to get it done. He's good and chill in there. Man, he hammered that. Oh, yeah. Gosh, he acted like he was bigger than that. Look at that, dude, he hit it so hard he broke my bait in half. Woo. Is that what you want me to do? What's that? Hold it up for the camera back there? Is that Those what you said? Those guys, yeah. Okay, yeah. I, when you said hold it yeah, up, no, I wasn't sure if you meant for them or for them. That was perfect. Him. They're, sh they're shooting okay. stills, yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. But that, that was perfect. Oh my gosh. Ooh, don't get me excited, yeah. Chris. Gosh. I think I brought it over the back of one. Unofficially, your new leaders right there, Rickard and Zaldane. Oh man, that stuff is so nice. Dang, it works. First look at Florida team. Trying to win this thing, Chris Simpson. Chris Kennedy. Chris Kennedy. I think they see something. Yeah. yeah, what are we looking at there? It looks like either a school of mullet or it could be a school of redfish. Though it looks like the way they're popping potentially could be some redfish. All of our old hands at redfish that we listened to interviews with yesterday said don't discount the presence of birds. What's the first thing we saw? There, there you go. Yeah. Exactly. One back in that corner too, maybe. Yeah, there's two distinct groups there. Another another group out here, small group. Yeah. Glenn Van and Thomas Barlow. And we had to so stay a little bit that. to the left of that duck fly. Yeah, just a little bit. But we're, we're just all the four inches of water, more than we had. So those fish are going into a little bit deeper water. And they're, they're, yeah. finding, they're pushing them, them shrimp and them crabs out of the mud. We'll get back to the fish and Barlow and Mary. Get back to Rickard like now. And Sal Dane, your, your leaders, unofficially. I'm gonna pull down for a minute. Yep. 
Culling is huge for the Bassmaster Elite Series and the Opens and all of our five fish tournament limits culling is, but we often see guys can catch five fish and not have to cull all day. Today though, I feel with two fish limit for redfish, getting the limit's the key, but then you're just a slight upgrade is gonna be huge for these guys because you only have six total fish for the weekend for the whole tournament. Yeah. You're absolutely right, Ronnie, and, and the key is that as you just saw with Ryan there a minute ago, having two in the well allows the boat to become a much happier and much relaxed place. You don't have that sense of urgency that you may have to go to a new spot. You need to bail out on your game plan. You can settle in, settle down, start fishing slower. And, and that's what these guys, I see it already in their, their physical demeanor. These turn off so many times off that twitch. It's like, like big bass don't like that either. They oh, like really? Something they don't slow. like that twitch? Like yeah, it's that steady retrieve. You just got to make them decide right then, am I going to eat this or am I going to let something else eat it? Listen to the birds in the background. You were quoted at Bassmaster.com about what they were just talking about. You don't want to stop your bait in this game. No, because certainly the difference is that, you know, a bass will eat a bait that's stopped and suspended. But redfish are used to always attacking something and that prey running from them. So you never want to stop it. If you stop it, then he's going to stop and know that something's wrong. Get back over the team of Land and Savoie. They've been hooked up already today. They have a, a, a little bit of a height difference between we're talking about what a big guy Nicky Savoie is, but uh, let's take a look at a, a better illustration. There we go, there we go. Now that's okay. You know, the cool thing for Travis is Nick can uh, provide him shade throughout the day if <laughs> yeah, he just stays right. on the exactly. down sun that's side. Right. Look, he's doing it. He's, he's already speed. at it. <laughs> Oh boy. Nick's hooked up. Yes, sir. Ultra shallow. Yeah. We wow. should see guys from inches to how deep with the deepest you think this week. He's not the biggest, but. Oh, I'd shut say that they're I probably going to be, you know, somewhere between three and five feet of water. You know, it just depends on what happens when the wind starts to blow the water out of these ponds. They're going to have to retreat to the edges. And when so doing, what is that edge and where is it going to be you know, so clear? Snuck up in there and they're really eating a spoon. Nicky, I'm probably going to tie on a spoon here in just a minute. But not a bad fish. We're going to need two of them twice this size in just a little while. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. You're good. I'll move him out of your way. He's here. He just came at me. They're all little. Nick. One in the box there for Nick and Travis. And, well, I tell you what, uh, they talked about a, a, something. Our bass anglers are all, all just floored by the fact that you can be in a flat like we see so many of our guys. There's bait covering every inch. Where do you throw? <laughs> you know, that's what they're that's what they're trying to figure out how to solve here and I think you know what happens when that redfish sees that mullet even though he can't eat a mullet that's this big when the redfish is only this big Tommy but it doesn't change the fact that he remembers and it wants to it triggers that he would be able to eat it if it was much smaller so when those redfish as well as any other species is not around those mullet they have a sense of, of wanting to eat, and it triggers a bite, in my opinion. All right. You know? All right. We will watch that in action in just a minute. Let's get right back down to Port Aransas, our fantastic host city. And there he is, our, our weigh-in master for today. That's coming up later today. And so much more. The great Dave Mercer uh, here to, to, to tell us about it. Profess your love for red fishing, Dave. Yeah, guys, good morning. A beautiful morning out here today. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the world of oddities. You know, you, you've got bass pros competing in this, redfish pros competing in this, and all of us just trying to figure out 
where our place is. But one of the things you're going to see this week as you watch this tournament is there's some different tools. We get used to the tools that the anglers have on the Elite Series on their boat. But here you're going to see some of the boats. Unfortunately, our competitors aren't allowed to use them. But one of the most vital tools is this bad boy right here, the tower. You're going to see tower boats here. And we are actually right now watching Ricard and Zaldane. And where they're fishing is a super, super shallow flat. And what that tower allows you to do, it just allows you to see those fish get up over them and really the wind you've heard a lot of anglers talking about the wind if that wind lays down that allows you to see those fish that much better as well so I've got a tower on my boat but unfortunately none of our competitors are allowed that advantage but your eyes are going to be a major major tool this tournament well Dave we've uh, we've got some six bass anglers six elite series and well six bass anglers we should say five of them from the elite series have you had a chance to talk to them about uh, uh, how they're adapting to uh, a different species here and, and, and how if they're having a good time or not. I feel like they're all very relaxed. I mean, honestly, every angler on earth understands this. All you want is somebody to blame your failure on. So I feel like every one of them, you know, normally in an Elite Series event, they're stressed because they got to catch them. But the pressure's really on a lot of these redfish guys, I think. So So they were pretty relaxed and kicked back on the dock this morning. I mean, it's just, it's really cool to see anglers that make their living just change it up and fish for a different species. And the one thing that screams to me and I keep hearing from different competitors is the species you want to compare these redfish to is a smallmouth bass, very similar. And a lot of our anglers have actually said that. And I think you'll see that pattern kind of play out. I mean, it's a lot shallower water, but as, uh, as Chad, our captain says here, Forget about all the rest of it. I mean, it's just like smallmouth bass fishing, except you get rid of 20 feet of water. Just focus on those last two feet that matter. I think we'll take that deal. <laughs> Good stuff from Dave Mercer. Dave will be presiding over the weigh-in later on today. You'll find that right here on Bassmaster.com as well. We're going all the way to 3 p.m. Eastern time with our live coverage from Port Aransas, Texas. And we'll have more of this Redfish Cup action when we return. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Y'all will be talking to me on camera. Can I get this as a Christmas card? Can we card? do it like this? Please. <laughs> Can we do it like this? <laughs> hey, he's been wanting to sleep in the bed with me. I don't know. Yeah, kind of... Chad got one bed, and Dwayne got the king side. He said, uh, we're sitting there fishing first day. He said, you know what? If you want to, you can just sleep in the bed with me. I said, Dwayne, we're partners this week. <laughs> But I don't know how deep we're going to take this partnership. <laughs> I tell the truth. I said, we put pillars between us. If you come on my side, that's it. I said, right, if I'm sleeping in that bed, I'm going to cuddle. <laughs> All right, getting to know you. These guys partnering up from the Bassmaster side, the elite side. And of course, uh, that was Patrick Walters and a super highly decorated redfish guy, Dwayne Eshtay. It's important to gel your personalities as a team this week, I feel like, with red fishing because it's a, it's a netting the fish situation. You're not a solo angler, and so for, for Walters and these elite guys, they got to be used to gelling with a partner. Got him. Uh-oh. That's a good one. No, it's a trout. Is it a trout? No, it's a red. He's shaking his head. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Fight, baby, fight! Good fish. Hold on. Is it a good one? Just watch, I might have to come back to the boat because he's going back. Yep, take him around, take him around. Watch them poles, I'll pick them up if you need me to, okay? Good, good fish, good fish. And Walters are unofficial leaders already right, before ready. that hooked up. He ain't big, but he's a color. Yeah, baby! Good job. Yep, those are down. Yep. Oh, yeah, he'll go. Go to the front. Go to the front of the boat. Oh, we have more room. Yeah. On the drop. What's happening is we throw one out there, and, and most of our fish we catch is on the drop. So what happens Dwayne, is that sucker got it. You need to hook yeah. out. 
if they gut hey, you gotta them, cut it, cut it. That's what I'm thinking we'll do. Yeah, let's just cut it. it pretty good. Yeah, let's just cut it. We take it out at the uh, instead of messing with it. Yeah, him. I don't want to pull it out if it no. gets in there. He'll pull it no, up not later. At all. Ready? Yep. It's actually a pretty good it's the fish. the longest net I've ever used. This thing is. You can lower it. You can. You can. I'm stick it in. <laughs> Twenty-four foot long. I mean, he hooked him, and I was like ready with the net. That's yeah, he's a fatty. He's a. Chunk. He's a short guy. He's too. short, short too. He is short. He's a six, seven pounder. But look, I mean. Yep. Twenty-four. You want to weigh him or not worry about it yet? Oh, it's not worry about him. Ain't no need to weigh him. You just got to throw the little one with him. Yep. That's it, the third slot fish to come into the boat for Eshte and Walters. They are our unofficial leaders, and uh, they're on to something, clean. obviously, Rick. Absolutely. You know, what Dwayne's doing, Tommy, is he's fishing with a jig head and a paddle oh, tail yeah. that's made by Berkeley right, Gulp. Take care of this. And uh, right now he's using the darker version yeah. with a chartreuse tail, and he's just simply bouncing it along the bottom. And as you heard him say, that's hitting it on the drop. Mm. Number two. You want to put the board up or just leave it No. Yeah, yeah, Justin made it 11 pounds in the two fish they had in the box before that last yeah. hookup we saw right he's there. He's big, but he's a color. And this fish is going to actually get rid of one of the smaller ones. Yeah, baby! So they could be over 12 and a half if I do my math right. <laughs> that would be about a pound and change. He had a second place Al Dane and Rick up. Get that back to a Florida team, Sensi and Kennedy. I haven't heard from them yet. No. Oh, yeah. Those are definitely right redfish. You can yeah. see the gold backs popping out of the water. All right. You get the left side, I'll get the right side. See, the lead, it, lead ones are going that way, but there's some coming towards us. Yeah. Captain Rick, normally we they may be in a tower and they can pick out which redfish they want, but in this situation on the deck, they just need to get one to bite. Yeah. You get some good footage of that, Gilbert. And they're waiting for them to get close enough some to make a good cast. Are we, are, you don't want to land in them here, guys. I mean, they're coming right at us. Whenever you think we can make them, Glenn, we need to hit them. You tell me. All right, you ready? Yep. Vaughn and Bardlow. Fish on. <laughs> Going that way, you pass back and yes. him. Double duck. No, no. Going right from the duck mine, Glenn. Yep. Oh, I got a tank. Oh, you got to recast on. Recast on. All right, hurry up, because I'm mine's close to the boat. <laughs> Right, okay, let's just get mine. Glenn's trying to double up, you know. Coming to you, coming to you. Oh my goodness. He should be in the slot, right? He should, he should be. Down. Yeah. The upper the upper end of it for sure. Might be the biggest one we've seen so far. See? Yeah. They're not even disturbed either. Be interesting to see what's on the other end of they're this popcorn, right cord, Tommy and huh? Ronnie. They're still right yeah. there. I can't hear you. They're right there. Yeah, they're not even staring. They're going to circle back around. They're not as big as I thought. They'll work. Probably seven pounder. All right, grabbing the pliers real quick. See you all tangled up. Put the net back in the water, going. I'm gonna have to drop him. Oh, he's all tangled up in that mess. Mm -hmm. There you That's go. That's a fish nice fish. One. Seven and a half pounds. Wow. Whoa. Best yet. Belly to belly, spin it around. 
We're gonna make this quick. You ready? Because they're coming right back at us. Come on, fish. So I don't even need to pinch them. Seven and a half pounds, 26 and a quarter. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, good fish. Good way to start. Boy, you catch that in the 27 and a half inch model, gonna be a big one. What a scenario right there, Captain Rick. You got that big school coming at you, tearing up the bottom, and you got a popping cork in your hand. So how do you play that game? Well, these guys are doing something I've never seen before. Uh, Thomas, he shared it with me. And what they're using is the popping cork, but underneath the popping cork to, for additional noise, they're using a rattling type of bait. Wow. With only this much leader, Tommy, <laughs> because they're only fishing in that deep of water. Yeah. But so they use the popping cork to, you know, entice the fish with the chug. And then when as that popping cork brings the leader up, this jumps up in the redfish's face and listen to the rattles. You could hear the rattle when they was shaking in the net. It's pretty cool. Best one we've seen so Never far. Never seen that before in my yeah. days. Man, that was that was impressive. And uh, look at the size. You of the can school. see the rattle trap there hanging from the cork. See it? Uh huh. Wow. Another look at that when they, they played it just right. Fish on. <laughs> Going that way, you cast back and cast in them. So that would be a seven and a half pounder. And they kept, while they were dealing with that fish, they said, hey, let's don't lose this school. They're still right. out there, they're still doing it. You know, that's a very important fact. You know, Tommy, when you're measuring and you're netting and you're putting a fish in the well, one guy needs to make sure he keeps his eye on which way the school goes. Specifically on a day when it's really windy, you could lose that school and then never see him again the rest of the day. And that could be really a heart, heartache. Mm. But these guys got them located. In a damn big giant wake over there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was multiple ones that grouped up. Mm -hmm. And unlike our bass tournaments, you see school and fish. You need to catch five to make hay. There. You, one more cast with this school, Waiting another seven and a half to eight back. pounder, and they could be yeah. set for the day and and kind of. Hope to upgrade, but maybe look for some other schoolers in, in different areas that are pushing up. When you got 15 pounds in the well, Ronnie, it's a whole nother Maybe animal of right what now. you're looking for. It's you know what I mean? Die right there. You can do all kinds of things. You can go to bigger swim baits. You can go to bigger lures to try to eliminate the small fish from biting. You put on yeah, bigger things to catch mm -hmm. the bigger fish. Right now, you just got to get two in the well so that everybody can breathe. You can see that. Uh, Thomas there is not happy with themselves because of losing the school. Mm. You can see his, you know, he's a little bit like, ugh, how did we let him get away? Good for now. I don't think tide's going out yet. Still one fish in the boat, but a good one. Ed Manning is... Matt Heron, our Redfish Pro Bass Pro combo. You know, there looks like they're a round fish. They just got to get the right bite. You got to get the break. And that's the one thing that's crazy yeah. about fishing. No. Is you can't control no. what your hook. Maybe a Let's put power pole down anywhere. You put the net back up? It's in the back rod holder. I don't think he'll keep, but I don't. I don't know. I doubt it. Yeah, he's 20. I think he's twenty inches. And we'll put the we'll use the measuring stick. Uh, we'll use the stick on him just we'll, to make sure. We'll put the stick on him. Yeah, let me grab the stick out. I, think <laughs> I know, but let's just double check. I hate. He ain't, he's right at it. Yeah. You just lay him in the net. 
So they've got to push if they're going to pinch the tail here. They got to push the pretty pinch ruler or the the device. They got to push it to 19 and a half inches in order to make it measure the correct way. And the same goes for the opposite end of the slot. It has to be 27 and a half inches for the 28 inch slot. They have to push it to that. That's correct. We got something to work with. We got we got two. That's all we got. See again, they can breathe. That <laughs> little sigh of relief. Certainly not what they wanted, but they do have two. Two in the boat now for Heron and Manning. And still unofficially, it's Walter Eshtek on top with 11 pounds. We'll be right back. To Port Aransas. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Almost two hours of fishing under their belt now for the 10 teams out here in the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Things are heating up a little bit. We got uh, a lot of teams on the board, many with two fish, the two fish limit. But right now, let's just take a quick breather. Uh -oh. Work our minds out with a five-hour energy trivia question coming your way right now. Our man Such, who is on side, as a matter of fact, that's why he's not in the studio, cooked up this one. In what year were red drum designated as a game fish in Texas? Was it 78, 81, 84, or 88? So Captain Rick Murphy, I'll let you have the first crack at that one. Give us a guess. Oh, I'm going to say that we're talking probably 84. I'm going to agree with that. I'll go with C as well, Ronnie. Just so we're not chalk, I'll go B81 just to undercut y'all. All right. Everyone else, make your guess quickly. Here we go. Oh, look at that. See, wow. to yeah. break my trivia, uh, get, to get off the schneid, we had to go to a different species. I've been, <laughs> I've been winless in bass trivia lately with Such, so that's all we needed was redfish. So you're, you're undefeated so in redfish. So you won, yeah. so now I'm that done. means yeah. you get to buy lunch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. I didn't know that was the game. Nice. Very good. That's our Skeeter bird's eye view. Beautiful shots we're getting all Look over Look at this that marsh. Incredible place. Every place looks like it should have a redfish, every inch of the place. Wonderful. So happy to be here in the Laguna Madre in the southeast Texas coast. Let's get down and see who we're looking at down here. Oh, yes. Hudden off. Houston. The red. Yep, that's our red. I don't. Red I don't. Uh, yeah, but I don't. I don't know. I don't think it's, hey, a, it's a keeper. I don't know if he's twenty or not. It's a keeper. To start, dude. To start. It's one in the well. It's a keeper. To start. You can't trust a bass guy to look at a fish flashing on the surface and think that it's a 20 incher. <laughs> Come on. All right, so what we'll do for the viewer. <laughs> That's awesome. Is we'll show them how we're working this board. All right. You know, we know it should be a keeper fish, but we'll show the viewer how this board works. Should be 20 inches. All right, so let me get the board out. Oh, that's a new pro, that's a new spro paddle tail. How about that root beer? Uh, I hopefully got the first keeper today. So obviously this fish isn't uh, at the max, but, and then normally, if it was a tournament fish, I wouldn't be doing this on the, so you want to put the belly against the board and then pinch the tail. Oh no, he's not even he's a keeper not fish. Even, nope, not even 20 ah. inches. Wow. I stand to be I corrected. Oh, no, I guess. The last guy did there, see that it was not 20 inches. That's the board we're working with. Yeah. All right, let's get her back so we can catch another one. 19 and a half inches. Everything always looks bigger to the saltwater guy. Oh yeah, know, Tommy. <laughs> I guess that's right. Of course, now, no, he's from Baton Rouge. He's got enough saltwater experience. Yeah, whether, it, whether he wants it or not. <laughs> We fooled you twice, Captain Rick, with yeah. the wide angle we've got you with the lens. We'll have to hey. we've got to whip you into shape at that 20 inch lens. Well, you're used to looking at 28s. I know that, though. That's probably the deal. So, Cincinnator, this is Cincy and, uh, and Kennedy. Mm -hmm. We 
Haven't heard from them yet today, Tommy. No, not on the board as yet. It's on. This could change it. Yes, it sure could. Yeah, powerful. No, I can't. Feels good. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. It feels like a fish, and I like fish. Uh, loose drag. He's not making a run, but. Uh. Nah, it's not too big, but it's a fish. Something for the board. Something for the board. All right, get back to. Get back to fishing, I'll go. Got him? Yep. So, we got a little one here. It's a start, though. Got to start somewhere. Well, I might need a pliers for this one. <clears throat> Excuse me, sir. Look, that is something else. What did he do? So that's a nice fish with Chris Kennedy right. has there. When it gets uh, like Tommy. that, you just gotta cut it sometimes. Looks like they're fishing uh, the Slayer Inc. paddle tails. Okay. And he was probably hooked down deep, so it looks like he's just gonna All cut right. that off and let him First have we gotta it check right sure now, not inches. to jeopardize hurting the fish. Looks like he is. Watch, don't step back, Chris. I think he's gonna get us a quick measurement here. The official measuring board here. Slide them on there. And see he's easily over 20 inches, 21 inches. Well, first fish of the day. There you go. Little guy, we're gonna hope to call this fish later on, that's for sure. And I had to go and leave the jig head in his mouth and we'll work that out later. And come back here to so these two guys, personality-wise, they are wound tight. Him so oh, yeah? I'm glad they got one in the well. We yeah, man. In the water here. But they'll uh, they'll now be able to breathe a little bit. You know that calming. On here. I'm putting one the in type, there. A couple the of type going. A personalities. Oh saying. boy. <laughs> and what's incredible, you, they said yesterday these guys are actual Turn team partners, research. and they're from two yeah, totally different for states. Chris Kennedy and yeah. Jacksonville. For they Chris just met at a tournament number one. Day one. So speak tuned. You know, speaking of Jacksonville, you know with Chris Sensi being from Jacksonville. We call that the land of the cast, Tommy. A what thousand cast a day. A land um, of a no, thousand sir. cast. If you don't mind, we're going to leave that so up a little bit. So for him, blind fishing, he's really in his comfort zone. This is not as big of adjustment for him as it is for guys that are waiting for the sun to get up and to be able to do their sight fishing. Because Jacksonville, you just cast, cast, cast. Team of Van and Barlow. Just caught one out of that big school. I wonder if they've relocated. Yeah. yeah. The first ones we really saw pushing and tailing, and it was the biggest we've seen yeah. today. Is that is that a correlation? If you can you get, I mean, are these biggest yeah, ones going to be the shallowest at this time of the year? School fish I'm ready. have a tendency to school up, and they all have a tendency to be the same size mm. within a few. Oh, he threw literally right on top of them. Mm. Losing. They're gonna come to the side. You got him. Oh, he's got him on. Which way are you going? Which way are you going? I'm behind you. Fish on. Oh, I doubled up. <laughs> so, Ronnie, Here's now we're gonna know. Yeah. You know, if Go these over. fish are. The last Go fish over. they caught yeah, was what a seven and a half. Seven pounder. and a half. Biggest one so far today. Look at this. And look at the conditions they have. Slick oh, calm. He's an absolute Ooh, donkey. A... Oh, that's a bruiser there, Hold fellas. In the water. Wow. Barlow pulling double duty, oh. netting and fighting a fish yeah, at the same time. This. No, we're going to let big boy sit here. Beautiful fish. 
he maybe have a fish that's too big. It looks like to me he put his rod in a rod holder for temporarily. He choked it. Absolutely. I'm not sure. Where is I don't know what he did with his rod. You want me to work on that? And nope. Tangled up. Oh, he's got his rod in the rod holder. <laughs> Let's pull that off, man. Hurry up. Got it. Plenty long. 25 inches, he's a little smaller. Looks like he's 25 without the pinch, so he's going to be well with inside of the 28. Six and a half, six and three quarters. Get him in the lab well and off. Wow. Six and three quarters, he said. Yeah. Him, get him in the net. This fish is coming on, Glenn. Sorry, Gilbert. Boy, Gilbert, that's a gutsy go. move, that putting your rod in the rod holder, unless he knew the fish was an oversize. Bigger, We're going to oh, see yeah. here. He said, this is a bigger fish. Oh. Oh, now this could be the difference between the ooh and the ah, Ronnie. <laughs> he could be over. Where'd the bubble go? It's on the, uh, on the seat. Sorry. And if it's an ooh, it could be a big ooh, and they could have over 15 pounds for two fish already at, you know, 8.30 It local could be time. 17 or 18 pounds wow. if that's seven Correct. and a half yeah. in there was their first fish, and they had the six and three quarters. So there's probably 13 and a half, 14 pounds, somewhere in that nature. We've got to see if this one's going to measure. I'm on the edge of my seat here. Mm. It's been starting to cold. Good and long. Whoa. Look Seven out. Seven and a quarter. Seven and a quarter. Seven. Should be plenty under the 28. Come on. Wow, that's gutsy to put the rod in the rod holder. 26 inches. So far, none of the guys have had to use the pinch tool. Mm -hmm. It had two on one side for sure. We got to do some color. And they got to identify. Those were pretty similar fish. Obviously, yeah. one about uh, half a pound more. But they said, what did he say? There was two, was two spots on one of the home. sides. No boat ride for him today. Six and a half. So that's the lucky one. He's not yep. going to be put mm -hmm. into the protective witness program <laughs> for the next right. eight hours. He's not going to be kidding now. All right, partner, 14 and a half. Mm -hmm. One away. That's way it's done. 14 and a half, and it is happening Ooh. in that boat. And a double header. And a little bit more water. So, you know, we, Tommy, we've talked about having two in the well, but to be able to be on a school and catching two at a well, time, an what then, that does for your confidence is off the chain. Where'd it go? Again, now we're faced with what happened to our school. When they spooked, they went there, but I, I, I lost that them. That fish bit me. Lost them in the chaos. Put a little bit more water in there. They are. You can give them a little of that. Uh, that was kind of a rodeo, wasn't it? So what that, that second one? The first one, we let go, second one we kept. The second one was seven and a quarter? Yeah. The last one did you? That I caught, yeah, seven and a quarter. So they should be 14 and three quarter pounds. If, Where'd you know, they go? I have no keeping idea. Keeping that first seven and a half pounds. I thought I saw them out there, but. I don't know how long we can sit in the spot. That's not them right there, is it? Now, before practice started, I talked to Travis Landon. He said he would hope that around 15 pounds a day would get it done, 45 for, for three days. But with the weather coming in tomorrow, obviously didn't know that a week ago, you're thinking that maybe lower 40s, maybe 40 pounds gets it done. But we're going to see that normal 15 to 16 pounds today. It might just drop a little and then go back up. Correct? I think there's a possible hiccup yeah. with the weather, no. you know, well, with some of know, these teams. Uh, but, you know, time will tell. It's not going I, to be I, as I, bad I as we thought it was uh, going to be 24 hours ago, Ronnie. They've, the forecast is fish on. down a little bit. Yeah. Chris Kennedy's got another one. Right in the middle of the mullet. Right in the middle got of the one mullet. One in the box, smaller, Better three pounds. One, yeah. yes, sir. 
It's still not pulling me though, so maybe about five or six pounds, five pounds. He's not making any kind of runs. Like he feels a little bit heavier than the other one. Like yep. He's coming right in now. He ain't that big. Yeah, he's four pounds probably. All right. Either way, fish number two. Number two. <laughs> get back to fishing, Chris. Let's and I'll do all this. Out here, man. Where are they at? Have you hit the, you hit the red one? As you can see there, he's got his chartreuse tail uh, on his four inch swim bait. I'm sure it's probably a Slayer Inc. Uh, brand of bait that Chris Cincy owns Slayer Inc. Mm -hmm. so he makes a lot of different types of plastics. That bait right there. Slayer Inc, man. <laughs> we don't need nothing else. Small <laughs> fish though, but that's all right. Two fish. Check him for 20 inches. Yeah, I mean, it, it landed and he came and got it. Big ones will be moving on later. We, even big, big and we'll get into that chartreuse tail for these swim baits and why it's specific to certain areas of the country, you, that you know, in the next pinch. break or two, but we'll oh, definitely break that down with you, Captain Rick. Okay. I don't think the pinch made it in here, Chris. I don't know where it went. Well, that's big enough. He is all the way down. Okay. That's big, it's big enough. Just making. Just making the limit. Bring him back here to his new home again. A little bit of a line burner, but it worked out for yeah. Chris and Chris right there. Now they have two fish. Let's take a look at our leaderboard as it stands right now after that furious uh, 40 minutes or so with Van and Barlow. They are in the lead with, uh, well, estimated 14.8. We think it may be more than that. Right, Rick? It could definitely be two seven pounders. If they're over seven and a half, it would come to be 15 pounds, you know. Flash Day and Walters in second place. Uh, Rickard and Zaldane hanging in there as well. Lance Savoie, Benning and Heron, and we just saw him. Cincy and Kennedy now with two. We'll take a break and be right back. You're watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. First day of three days of Redfish Cup competition. There it is, our fantastic host city, Port Aransas, Texas, out here inside the Barrier Island. And as the cut goes through there, and the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship is just getting rolling here. We have six teams now who have a limit of two fish already today. So as you say, there's there's six teams that can freewheel it a little bit right now. They can they can swing loose. They can make adjustments. Obviously, there's a couple of those teams. They don't have the size fish that they want, Tommy. But and when you have two in the well, you know that any fish that you catch after that is an upgrade. And that's what allows you to have a little bit more comfort and be a little bit more relaxed, which has a tendency to slow your fishing down. And you become a lot more uh, proficient at it. Uh -huh. Ryan Rickard in the background, Chris Saldane in the foreground. Currently unofficially Get him, dude. in third good place. One. With That's a good one. I, don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh my gosh, I just got smoked too. No, he's not great. I don't think he's as good as what we got. Might be getting a little better. It's running, I don't know, dude. bro. It might, it might be better than I think he is. On average, they were bigger in this hole than they were back there. Nah, he's he don't have I don't he's not he's not. No. 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 His eyes are smaller. Be a better, better fish than the first one we got, maybe. Yeah, he is. He actually's well better than that first one we got. He's, He's longer. Better. He's definitely longer. Try 
trying to get out of your way. I got him. Got him? Yeah, he's definitely better than that first one. Look at that. We just lost. Oh, <laughs> boy. Look at that. Yeah, he's uh, seven pounds. Nice, dude. Really? Yeah, Heck this yeah, bro. Really yeah, he's here all day. Okay, 26. 26 and a quarter. Well, let me go call this out. Yep. You keep fishing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. call there and get that expected upgrade. There's a team right there that's still looking for their first slot fish today, Ricky Bort and Mark Menendez. Ryan wasn't going to give that fish a shot. Good fish. Not a big one. Not going to not going to help. And it ended up being a seven pounder for yeah. us out there. I'm coming. I'm coming, Ricky. He missed that Where one, didn't he? Right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah, that's a good, that's a keeper fish right there. You go, you go, you go. You're coming around to meet you, Rick. Where the hell I was. Get the hell out of that. It's hanging in it. Oh, boy. That helps. That's a hey. helper. That's a helper. Yes, so right up on that flat. That's a helper. I'm here. I ain't even gonna check him. No. Just throw his ass in there. <laughs> now yeah, that makes that team. run a hell of a lot easier. What's that? That makes that run a hell of a lot easier yes, now. Yes, sir. It sure does. The team that refers to itself as the old men in the sea. Is that Here's the fun fact themselves? about these two. Yeah. They both fished in the 1996 Red Man All-American. Wow. Wow. How about that? If we'd have had that to ourselves all morning. And we might not even stopped here. You never know. What's that? We might not even stopped right here. Yep. Step that right behind you, brother. Seven of our ten teams now have at least a keeper redfish in the live well currently. Not a boy. So you You're saw right. where the guys yeah, left the net down. out. That's a, a big lot. Rick Murphy yeah. superstition. I always more felt that if the net was out, be. we'd never have a it's need to use it. <laughs> so I would be putting <laughs> the net away <laughs> right now and the measuring board, even though I might make a cast and have to pull it right back out. Always felt better if it was put away so that I would need it. Yes, sir. Did I hear one of these guys refer to that net they were using as a $400 net? Yeah, because it collapses and oh, folds up. Extends to a, yeah, a extends two by five length. Two yeah. or something, right? <laughs> Between 20 and 28 inches. Uh, nothing under, nothing over. Rick, there's a fish right there. He's going away from us. He's headed to that back patch. You're dead on him. A little short. Must be in shallow water. It sounds like they're getting a little cavitation off yeah. of the trolling motor there. And they must have made a vast or a big move from right, their starting spot because they said now that now that run is worth it. Whatever we just did, now we don't have to worry about that run as much. Yeah. Like it didn't pay off or something. Right. Let's go ahead and <laughs> through there. I'll let you. Well, I don't know where right. Vaughn and Barlow are fishing, but look at the conditions, how they have oh, just yeah. slick calm. Flattened out. Come on, this is what was expected today. We had a little more wind than right. expected early. Well, we saw a yeah. good one. Spook. Saw three or four up there on it. <laughs> Near that second gut, right? Uh -huh. First, and they also like have an overcast. Do you see how they got yeah. overcast versus Bort Menendez have a blue sky, which 
again, very helpful for those guys with those slick, calm conditions. It really gives them an advantage. For this team. About an hour ago, located a school, and it was on from that moment. <laughs> they were passing out double headers like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches at the park. He's an absolute donkey. Hold him in the water. <laughs> First keeper, good six pounds plus. Like seven and a half pounds. Good Hopping problem work with what? Below it? A little rattling trap, a rattle trap seven. bait of some lipless sort. Crank. A lipless crank. Lipless crankbait with lots there. of rattles. Good stuff. We love to see a variety of approaches. Best approach so far, obviously unofficially. Dan and Barlow with 14, 8. They went 14 and 3 quarters. Ricard and Zaldane doing very, very well. Of late here, SK and Walters had that lead for a good while today. Landon, Savoy, and all the rest. We're going to get all our teams on the board before for too long. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is brought to you by Yamaha. Humminbird. And by PowerPole. So great to have you with us on this Friday. We roll out something really, really special here for live coverage. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter. Van and Barlow, this team with 14 and a half pounds, maybe even more than that, leading the way. Rickard and Saldane right behind. All the rest, six of our teams, the majority of our teams have two fish now. Seven of them, believe. As we take a look at our Unlock the Lake, and there it is, the, uh, the Laguna Madre, the Mother Lake, right there. And that's all the water behind that massive Barrier Island, Rick, that, that takes us all the way from the Mexican border almost to, to Galveston Bay. Absolutely. Now we stop down at the south end, down at Bird Island, and then we're going to take the boundary all the way to the north to the Port O'Connor jetty. And there is a lot of habitat, great areas for redfish to be. I love the fact that the guys have marsh ponds to be able to fish in right now, real shallow. But then there's also out in these big bays, Tommy, there's a lot of shell and oyster reefs that have been either put there or is naturally there. And those also hold a lot of fish. It's a blind fishing situation, not like a lot of the guys are doing right now. Unique, wonderful place. Richard on our Minn Kota. Unlock the lake for this morning. We're about to, we're getting close to three hours into our seven or eight hours of fishing today. The Lone Star State, great for fast fishing and obviously great for saltwater inshore hit, fishing smoke, too. Yeah. Ricard and Zaldane. Come on, baby, one time. Got him. Got him? Yep. Small fish, it looks like. Now, dang, what do you think? Spinning rod. Tell rod. me, can't tell yet. Surprising. It doesn't look like he's digging you. He's going Florida on us. Here. Yeah. Did you mean that? No, not yet. You know, at this point right here, Tommy, all you're trying to That's do is red. just he's stay small. connected small. to the yeah. fish. You know, whether it's a big fish or a little breed. fish. No, no he's so Your job at the, yeah, as the angler small. that's hooked up is just to stay connected. Oh, there goes Trait's rod. It's two rods broken today for the team. <laughs> Let me uh, here do this just to do it. I mean, I don't, I don't think that fish no, is. I mean, I feel a three like that. Three or four pounder. <laughs> two, two broken. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. That Get one, him, the, dude. That's where yep. the bass that's angler killed one. That's the one right there. That's the man that's right the there. One, dude. there. That looks like a good one. That's the man right there. Oh yeah, that's Heck the man right yeah. there. Hey, give me one more favor. This is just for this big bro. one. Pull this trolling motor for me. Pull it up. Just step yeah. on that right there. Yeah. And it'll be kind of loud, but. Oh my gosh, bro. That is a freaking tank. That is a tank. Come on, baby. 
They're running at me 100 miles an hour. This is a hole right here, dude, and we just got to the top of it. Nerve it's a good fish, bro. Come on. Come on, baby. It's like a seven, six, seven. He's more than six. Pretty sure. Come on, baby. Come to me right here, Chris. Uh-oh. Yes. Yeah, he'll, he's a little skinnier, but he'll go, I think, close to seven. Nice job, dude. He's croaking away. Mm, he may not be as good as I thought he was. and a half. I don't think he's as good as that last one. Let me, let me call this out. I don't know if he's as good as the last one. Quite a big live well there on That's that the steer. Head one. Mm. Where that fish, they were in second place with it. 12 12 unofficially, so this one needs to be about seven if they're going to get the good upgrade. Mm -hmm. I think he said it was only five and a half, so they're trying to figure out with the three that they have in possession now which one of those in there is the smaller of the two to see if he is larger or smaller than the one hey, that he know, has man. on the boga grip right now. much water in that live well he's having a hard time kick, getting the other one in his hand he probably would be best to lay that fish that he has on the boga on the deck you know in, in, in the cockpit and use yeah. the boga grip to use yeah. to catch the one that he's trying to catch he's eating up a lot of good fishing time there you go he got him do this one more time The lesser of these two will slip back into the water. I would say it was the first one. Settle down, settle down. Nope. Did it make it? There goes that decision. Which is just picking up with us here, the rules of the game in this Redfish Cup competition. It's, uh, of course, 10 two person teams, three days of fishing, two redfish per day. That is your limit. You only have two in the box at any one time, and they've got to be slot fish between 20 and 28 inches. Her Texas Parks and Wildlife rules there. Heaviest three day total is going to win it, and 50 grand for the first place team. Only 10 teams now, they'll be fishing all three days. It's bird's eye view, but get some sensational ones here to give you the, the sort of the lay of the land and what's down there beneath the water. Boy, some pretty potholes. We'd call that mottled bottom, which are all the potholes, sand and grass mixed. And as you can see, it's just a great place for fish to, to hide out. They, a lot of the redfish love to lay in that like white hole there to the left of the boat mm. and ambush. Uh, anything that may swim into the hole or swim by the hole. That's the boat of Matt McCabe, Trait Zaldane, I believe. See those white potholes would be something to certainly key in on because the fish love to change their color, get real light in color, and lay in that hole and camouflage themselves, waiting for something to come by. About to get our sunlight just about right now, aren't we? Oh, we should be starting to see some of these boys saying, oh, I, there's one, and uh -huh. make the cast, you know? So Matt McCabe is a guide out of Louisiana. Tommy guides over 200 days a year. Well, I wonder if they have 
throws the popping Permission cork. Permission to fly that drone so close to this. With the uh, naval base. Popping cork with the, the Whatever stuff it is. underneath. Just coming this you know. way anyway. So, Captain Rick, we saw, we've seen really one team see tailing or surface feeding redfish, and that's Van and Barlow. Who we were in Destin three of the at a photo fish shoot for seen. Skeeter, and they were shooting How many boat fish are in those kinds of schools? And we went I mean, that, that, that school looked like manage, it you know? was probably 30 or so fish. Okay. It's hard to say, um, but certainly it was a lot more than four or five. Naval Air Station, they sent it to the ground, it straight into the water. God, they ran that boat and tried to catch that thing. Boy, he was upset. Over the team, man. man. Barlow. Oh yeah. goodness! Wow. Fish on. Right there, bunch of them right there. Yeah. Mine's not very big, so. You can tell me when. Go ahead. They all spook. So, here, coming over here. Say that he just he, he got bigger. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty good. Well, he might be a little better. A little better. Oops, sorry. Let's go back there in the corner. Look I'd say he's not any longer. Is running. I'd say he weighs a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, he's had another 30 or 45 minutes to eat. <laughs> Hold that line, Glenn. Hold the line. The rope. There you go. He absolutely choked it. There are nine teams that would love that fish, and it might not even help this team. The one team that catches huh? it is right. not that big. Oh, oh my goodness. Are we? Exactly. Well, he choked it. <laughs> Van and Barlow, after somewhat of a slow start the first 45 minutes of the day, have really turned it on over the last hour. And we wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon, and talk with you, Captain Rick, at the monitor about that slot limit. We're used to seeing in bass tournaments 12, 14, 15 inch minimum length limits, but an unlimited maximum length limit. Before the redfish this week, there is a slot limit between 20 and 28 inches, and we've got that perfect pinch. And in this next redfish photo, you can really explain how that perfect pinch makes it. A difference when we get close to the top end of the, of the absolutely mark. so you're going to take the, the nose of the fish and the belly of the fish and you're going to lay it up against the board here's how this works this is a piece of square angle iron and essentially it's open on the other end so once the fish is positioned on the board we're going to take this perfect pinch tool push it down over the top of the knuckle here and we start sliding the perfect pinch to the 27 and a half inch mark
Just shy of our 28 inch mark. Just so shy it, of the 28. Okay. And what that does is it pinches this tail down. Remember this part is cartilage and this part is cartilage. So what ends up happening is it's mashing the tail perfectly for us so that we can see exactly where it's going to land on this 28 inch line. And that perfect pinch was kind of developed for these redfish tournaments so that it's not a subjective waymaster that's pinching it to his own discretion. It is across the board the same for every single competitor, correct? Absolutely. It just gives it consistency whether you're out on the water or you're at the scale at the weigh-in trying to get your fish qualified before you take them up on stage. So now we've talked about how they measure, but when we get to the fishing, this is obviously Port Aransas is one of the fishing capitals. They call it the fishing capital of Texas and as a bass fisherman, that's hard to say with how many good lakes there are for bass fishing, but red fishing is huge in Port Aransas and we've seen a couple areas, these marshy areas, these really shallow areas. We just saw a great overhead Skeeter Boats drone visual of that. Today is the day to really make the, make hay with that because of that calm uh, wind. What are these same areas going to look like tomorrow with that north northeast wind? Well, we we really don't know, but one one thing you can be assured of, one of the advantages that Van and Barlow have had is that they had a little overcast of clouds and it was slick calm in the bay or that little pocket that they were fishing. So that allowed them to see every little disturbance and dimple that those redfish were making. And that's how they were able to find that school several different times. Now tomorrow could be a whole nother animal when the 25 mile an hour worth of wind. And then Sunday opposite again as it comes back from the south, which is a desired wind direction here as we're taking a look at the Skeeter Boats drone here with McCabe and Trey Zaldane. It's one of three teams still looking to put their first keeper in the boat. First slot fish between 20 and 28 inches. That's what's, it's, it's so hard to know, Tommy, when you're looking at a 10 team competition like this, and we've already seen anglers have a great two fish limit of redfish. We're like, these guys need to catch them. They need to hurry up and get some fish. But just like in the Elite Series, it only takes five casts to be back in the game. Here, it only takes one school that you can visibly see, two perfect casts, and boom, you're back in the game like Van and Barlow. Yep. Van and Barlow got it done in an hour and 15 minutes. So yeah. There's Almost on two casts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the majority of yeah. them on two casts. Not a lot of talk going on there, guys. Yeah, you know, again, that clock is ticking and how, what they're feeling, I can tell you from personal experience is that you just want to get a bite. You got to just turn the thing around a little bit. Any bite right now, whether even if it's a small fish, is just going to be helpful in the momentum of the boat, you know? Doggone it, they need one. They do. <laughs> Come on, Trey, there. catch one. Where are these ginormous schools? I, I, I'm Everybody with you. About. I would think this is day number four on the water. We have, would have seen one by now. Dane and McCabe labor on there, anticipating the moment when they'll put keeper fish in there. We have seen that there's more than one way to get it done, Captain Rick. We certainly have, and these guys are getting it done. I'm really impressed that there's got a lot of teams that already got two in the boat, so they're starting to look for those upgrades, those little bit bigger fish. Lots of time left in this day, the first of three days of fishing here. With the weights carry over from one day to the next, so. Uh, has been pointed out multiple times a day. Today would be a good day to put a lot of hay in the barn. Oh, absolutely. And you know, it looks like it got sun down there, so it really looks like it's gonna be good for them in the afternoon, as the wind supposedly is laying down. All right, there's your leaderboard as it stands right now, unofficially, according to, uh, not, not fast track, but red track. Red track. Van and Barlow on top, Rickard and Zal Dane seeing uh, a, a big share of action today as well. We'll be right back. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats.
getting closer and closer to the halfway point in this first day of three days of competition down here. Port Aransas and the surrounding environments here on the southeast coast of Texas for the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Ten teams out there today. So happy to have you with us. All this live coverage here. Captain Rick Murphy, Ronnie Moore, I'm Tommy Sanders, and we'll be with you until the fishing wraps up somewhere around 3 p.m. Eastern time after about eight hours and uh, weigh in to follow shortly after that. Four of our teams there. I heard you say that earlier. Like, yeah, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Four different, yeah. four different guys. Okay, gotcha. Sometimes they have audio, sometimes they don't. <laughs> Rookie in the bass you, world here, you know? You hook up here and they zoom in on, on you. Oh, we're going to hook up right yep. here. Yep. I feel it. <laughs> so I wonder how many rods Tommy Chris Aldane has gone through today. I heard he broke a couple rods. One belonging to his betrothed, one belonging to his wife. Yeah, I don't know oh. if he's trying she's to She's already lost. <laughs> yeah, if he's trying to win that matchup by using some of her rods and breaking them so that, yeah. you know, that, yeah, she can't use them later. Yeah. Sounds like timeout Bright, to me. Calm sun, I'm going with different color, <laughs> going just like black, black back instead of like hard white. I like that. Yeah, I like so that just call. a little more black in there. You know, Tommy, that's what I love about the bass Those like, guys. just, you know, my bass swim baits are the real kind of like pearly real shaddy type and under this sun right here it's just like it glows white and it's it's kind of scary looking just some um, like we went in a tackle store yesterday and like all these redfish swim baits there's like a lot of blacks a lot of like browns and then with like chartreuse or pink tails and they notice those subtleties you know most of the time the redfish guy he's like throw, in throw it out right there he's gonna eat it five yeah. but for yeah, him to dissect what's in the local tackle here, store so to me is just phenomenal. They've been pretty nice guys. One of them even won't take me fishing. Oof. Yeah, Patrick Walters is. A, he's a, <laughs> he's been especially cool to hang out with and then eat lunch with and stuff. I hope him and Dwayne are crushing. I do too. And then We're just Texas rig, you can get into that grass pressure. a whole lot better. We're just moving on just them too like much, that. and these molars are too loud, so we're not going to get When they close. smoke it, you give them the wood, man. It's That's a good time. Back to his bait caster. He broke every spinning rod in there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that has fish in it, so that's what we're going to go try and do. Go. go do the same thing, just in another pond. One of the big things we're trying to focus on, too, is we don't know what this strong north wind is going to do tomorrow to these fish. We don't know if we're going to get close enough to them. So one thing, since we already got fish in there, we're going to go check on our other fish. And we're going to check on angles where we can sit on a shoreline and be able to cast these fish tomorrow without making any noise. Yeah. We don't know if we're going to be able to pull that off, but we're going to try. <laughs> and then later on, we're going to go check some stuff we never even checked over here. Because on the maps, everything over here looks deeper. We may need that deeper water tomorrow. Thomas Barlow kind of laying out the game plan. And then, well, yeah, but I don't think we you can know, get close to when you're place. in first place, you can start pre-fishing for the next yeah, day. Because you're not going to win it on the first day, Tommy, but you can certainly lose it on the first day. And it's really smart on uh, Thomas's part to be thinking about tomorrow now uh, because you know, if he catches another couple of fish, it's not going to upgrade his weight s substantially. You know, I don't think he, I mean, if he had two eight pounders, he'd be 16. He might gain in a half pound, uh, a pound and a half. But to be thinking about tomorrow and pre-fishing some areas that are a little deeper just to see if it has the habitat and maybe a few fish in there now, it could be a huge thing. Look at the white-tailed deer yeah. there walking across. <laughs> One of the pedestrians. <laughs> wow. Look at him, dude. Yeah. There Where's he goes. A swimmer. That is freaking cool as heck. Birds are looking what he's stirring up. It's going the wrong way. So they say a he. I wonder I don't see any horns. So we're about there, to huh? be off this flat in a second. Yeah. Like there's a main like the main residential ditch runs in. Oh, what's that right there? What's that? 
It's a structure. There's a, a structure. good portion of our main audience. Oh, there's, yeah. A good portion of our main audience freaking after deer right about now on a Friday. That don't hit the bottom. But they, when they do that, they don't eat. I see that. You see that floor. right I there? Do. Coming over that sand flat? It's going this way? Coming towards us, I feel like. I thought. I thought I was seeing like wake. It's hard to tell with the sun kind of still in our eyes. See how sporadic this grass though is? I just mm -hmm. feel like this, a lot of this drift, the grass hasn't been as consistent as what we had been seeing. You know, like and it over may there. Be out there. Yeah, that's what it looks like on Google Earth. This all looks kind of barren to me. Do you want to try to go that way? You I mean, I drip? want. Yeah, definitely. Let's. But uh, I just don't want to pop. You know, run right through it. That's a problem. Like, I want to start our. I don't know if we go down. And now, you know, I don't want to. That's my biggest fear. Is because everyone's been talking about how spooky they are. Quiet you have to be, and I don't, I don't want to put a motor anywhere near it. You know. Oh, there's that little, little bait chasing it. But it looks like maybe a little more grass is coming so, up. So Tommy, I'll give you a little fact. I did a couple of questions to all the team members, mm -hmm. and Matt McCabe, I asked him what was. He, what would he describe as his weakness? And and I asked Trait the same question, and Matt said that sticking with something too long could be uh. a problem for him. And then Trait said the doc talk and listening to it, and now she, here she is, and they are trying to find decide whether they're going yeah. to punt or if they're going to stick to the game plan. Interesting. Mm -hmm. We have Van and Barlow thinking maybe doing Kyle, some, some pre-work for tomorrow. We, we heard some Richard ice, and buddy. Zaldane talking earlier today saying, tomorrow, let it blow. We're windproof. Is that possible? Well, I think what Ryan has done is he's put together a really good game plan of shorelines that are in the lee no matter what wind okay. conditions. It looks like he's fishing pockets that are big, big bays that have knockdowns, as we would refer to them, mm -hmm. uh, of different shorelines. So he's assuming that the fish are on this shoreline today, and they only got to move two or three hundred yards across the bay to another shoreline to be in the lee. And uh, again, I think that's not a bad game plan. I really do. What I'm really amazed with is look at all three of the teams here have a chop on the water and Van and Barlow, mm. it's yeah. slick calm. Key on that white flash off of them little finger motor. And I can't tell you how I mean, helpful that is to see the slightest little dimple or ripple. Takes away a tiny bit of advantage from the redfish. Oh, it certainly does and gives us, you know, as anglers, a tremendous advantage just to be able to see one little thing that may let you relocate that school. Mm. I think these guys have pulled off of that school to leave it alone. All right, Chad. And I think they're now doing a little pre-fishing for go. tomorrow. They're looking in a place that said, well, let's see if there's any fish in this zone. Not far from where they are. Yeah. Ideally, they want to have an A spot, a B spot, and a C spot within 10 minutes of running where they are. If they can put that game plan together, it's pretty bulletproof. See, and that's the... The thing you were talking about that we'll have to see with Zaldane and, and Rickard is that they they may have found areas that are protected from the wind, but the wind doesn't necessarily have to bother you, but it could pull your playing field out from underneath you. Sure. Depending on water. how it drains, yeah. if it if it drains much quicker in your area, uh, or if it if it drains much slower with the tide, you know, going against or with it, you know. Yeah, that so, that one with this wind might not be too bad to And the water's up a little bit. Yeah. Might not be too bad just to look, you know, it's not yep. like it's huge. Then it's not far away. Mm-hmm. 
And you got that other spot right close to it too, but those, there's more of a small fish. So we, Ronnie, the tide is going to be coming in in the morning. So it's the last of the incoming tide is, I'm not sure exactly the time, eight, nine. I remember hearing the guys talk about the tide being high. Let's see what happened. Chris has had another fish mm -hmm. on. Definitely I think want to get on lost. this outside grass line though. But We're anyway, back to the tide. Then. Tide against the wind could keep the, 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 the amount of water in for a little bit. Yeah, so the morning period at least, yeah. But then as soon as the tide starts going out with a north wind, it, especially if it's northwest or it's north, it could place. literally be magnified. Now you got tide and wind going together and it could dump beyond expectations. That's so much. That's the ones we caught them on in here the other day. Yeah. What would be interesting to know is the depth of water that Chris and Ryan Rickard are fishing in now. If it's three feet of water and it only drops a foot and a half, they still might be able to get their skeeter in there. We think those are the biggest fish in here, but we don't know. <laughs> but we can leave those alone for two hours and go back to them, you know, so. But we do want to check because we're worried about tomorrow, worried about the weather for tomorrow. Because it really blows 25, those fish are spooky enough. But Jade's custom performance rod and a 30 mile an hour wind, I can cast it till the end of this pool. <laughs> I don't see anything anywhere. Down. Yeah, yeah, no, man, we're throwing downwind and a 30 mile an hour. If we get to right where that duck blind was and just sit there, we may just cast across that pond. We got another pond over here that's a lot deeper. That's got protected shorelines. But we all want to also want to go down here later. There's some stuff we never checked, and it looks deeper in case we lose our water, because we are fearful that we're going to lose our water. That's a really good strategy, yeah. Tommy. Oh, absolutely. To be looking, putting a yeah, plan B be together on the first day. And it's going to be wet. See anything over there? <laughs> Look at this one. Is that one right there? Is that a red right there? Hudnall. There's no. It's a shark. Shark. Okay. Shark. Wow. I've got a fish. Yep, red. Red? Yep. All right. Don't move. Go up, move forward. Grab it, get moving. Probably gonna be short too. Probably. Huh? Old chatterbait. Chatterbait, missile baits, shockwave on the back of it. Just trying to get on the board. Obviously, if that was a 27 inch, or I wouldn't be doing it up here. <laughs> nope. He's going to be just short. 19, 7 eighths. Yep. Wow. Oh, Ooh. hard break. Pretty fish, guys. Needing desperately to get on the board. Aching for it, not quite there. Just a fraction of an inch away. For Houston and Hudnall right there. Still Van and Barlow on top. Your thoughts toward tomorrow. What are they going to do tomorrow to hang on to that lead? Rickard and Zaldane, Ashtay and Walters, Lance Dubois, 
Benny and Heron are our top five at this point right now, but we got plenty more fishing time to come. In the Texas Gulf Coast, we will be right back. You're watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Getting closer and closer to the halfway point of our eight hours of fishing here in the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship Port Aransas, Texas. Uh, builds itself as the uh, epicenter of Texas fishing, and boy, it sure is good, interesting place. Let's take a look at our top three teams so far. First ones to take the lead, Wayne Eshte, Homa, Louisiana, originally, but now making it home in Lake Jackson, Texas, the upper end of this big complex here, along with the uh, young phenomenon, Patrick Wall. Getting better. Get in the net. Good job. Oh, she missed that. Point. Number two. Do you go for the board up or just leave it there? No. Mm -hmm. Got him. That's a good one. So Dwayne is fishing a soft plastic mm -hmm. on the jig head, bouncing in all the potholes. Blind fishing. Yeah, baby! Good job. They got 11 pounds uh, unofficially. Let's take a look at our currently second place team. Adam Boy. Ricard and Sal Vane. Boy. No. Big, big area, just absolutely loaded with mullet. You know, and the one thing that I heard them say earlier was that they've got the ability to next, yeah. two, you know, yeah, the next work. two days, to, no matter what the weather work. deals with, they seem to have a great strategy that's going to allow them to still fish in that's their zip code. Be a better, better fish than the first one we got, maybe. There's using yeah, search lures. Yeah, one of them, I believe, is throwing a spoon, and the other one is throwing a paddle tail, reeling it straight yeah, back uh, with seven pounds. Right. Oh, big yeah. swim baits, you know, mm -hmm. they're throwing into the schools of mullet. Uh, Tommy, one thing that is also huge is this duo is known for the runner-up position, both in the red fish game right. and back. They are motivated this week to take on that grand prize first place. Yeah, yeah they, they, what a story it would be. It would be amazing. Not yeah. to win. This exactly. team right here, and currently in the lead, they are Texas anglers. They know the territory here, Van and Barlow. And you know, Tommy, the technique that they're using, I have never seen before in my career of fishing. What they've done is they're tying on a small leader and they're putting a rattle trap, you know, a, a lipless crankbait underneath a cork. So the cork holds the trap in place until the school gets there, and then when they pop the cork, that trap comes up from the bottom, and they end up hooking. They had the good fortune to find themselves right in the path of a school about two hours ago, and they they took advantage. Absolutely, caught three or four fish out of the school, each one upgrading. They had a six and three quarter, and they've already thrown that fish out. Mm -hmm giving them two seven plus pounders in the well. I'm very impressed with what I've seen from these guys so far. Two seven plus pounders gives them the luxury of being able to uh, kind of look around, make some plans for tomorrow, check out some spots they might want to fish tomorrow in different conditions. And that's definitely what we're all anticipating for day two of this Redfish Cup competition. Unofficial leaderboard right now with Dan and Barlow on top. Okay. And Walters, Lance Savoie. Coming up in fourth place, Manning and Aaron got on the board, so did Sensi and Kennedy, and one fish in the box for Ricky Bort and Mark Menendez. Ricardo and Zaldane. to a decent start, you know, what do we have, like a seven and a five-ish? Seven and a little over a five and a half. Yeah, so that was a good start. We've had the trolling motor down for, what, about an hour, hour and a half, for most of the morning. And uh, just as soon as everything calmed down, we wanted to make another drift back through our main area. The <laughs> boat just came ripping in, just... shut down on top of it, <laughs> and it took off. So it's going to be a while until our main area yeah. here gets uh, cleaned out. But we've got more in the area, so that's good. Yeah, we've got a good start, though. We we just need one solid upgrade, and we're going to be great for today. I mean, really, we need one solid upgrade, we're going to be in good shape for today. 
I mean, you, you know, pre-fishing, we caught a lot of three, four, four and a half, five to five and a half pound fish. Not a, not a lot of fish for us pre-fishing over six and a half, seven, seven and a half. But I mean, we know they're around. We've caught some. We caught a few eights. But uh, we just need one solid upgrade right here, and we're going to be good for today. We didn't come two teams try to come right in there. this Rickard one because and they were Zaldane, the Zaldane, and Barlow on the left still. That's them back there, right? One thing, we, we, we listened I mean, to these I mean, interviews with our red fishermen yesterday, right and they said, second. man, you bass guys they were just cast all the time. You can't, how do you have any, you know, cartilage left in your arms? No, and this no, there's some right here on the other side of the shoreline. guys do a lot more watching and thinking, it seems like, than than active active casting. They're looking for the subtlest little sign, Tommy, that could be the difference and you know what that happens is that comes from guys that sight fish you make a 125 foot cast and a fish pops up 30 feet from the boat you're out of position and that's known to happen in red fishing quite often that you make this long blind cast and as you're going along with your trolling motor nice and slow covering the ground and territory this fish pops up out of a hole and you're in a retraction mode. You're trying to get everything back in as quickly as possible so you can make a cast to him. And most of the time he gets spooked off because you're not in position. So it's really funny how the guys on the left, Van and Barlow, both are qualified here from, the, from a redfish tournament series in Texas. That's how they got here. And they're not casting at all versus uh, Rickard and Zaldane. Zaldane hadn't stopped casting since he got no, on the water. He doesn't time. know anything else. Like right, that's, which is that's, cool. That's the the uh, way of life for the bass. About a month and a half ago, the very correct. first time I came, I knew nothing about this place. Didn't know anybody that lived here. As far as that could help out, you just looking at maps and what looks fishy and just uh, you know trying to figure out what you how you would fish it like you would back home in Florida. And it's really to me, it's really. It's pretty similar to Florida. It's just like a souped up Florida. Like, I feel like the fish respond here a little better. I feel like there's more fish here. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's all the experience I've got. Um, there's some fish there busting up against the shoreline for Van and Barlow. I just saw them, see them there mm -hmm. swimming down the shoreline. Wow. Now the question is, is that the right species that could be a porpoise, that could be an otter. Could, there's no telling what that could be, but it certainly looked like a redfish pushing down the shoreline from my perspective here. But again, the redfish guy's not casting, which is typical. Yeah. Well, they are on the move, whatever they are. Yeah, watch on, Chris. That does look uh, like redfish to me. See, see the fish in the front jumping? Mm -hmm. Look like little mullet or even a shrimp jumping out of the way. So it's definitely something predator-wise pushing. Path, they're a little bit bigger. Yeah. Right there is a 25-pound test seagar tatsu. So it's like a like a 20 diameter, but it's got 25 plus strength. FG knot, you gotta tie those super tight because I mean these things pull so hard and they're just a 30 pound Seaguar braid. And this is just our bass gear. This is a seven foot five Orochi double X. This is a, like a spinner bait rod, that's all you need. Remember, no stretch with that braid, so you need a little bit of give. And then just a seven five to one reel. And this particular reel's got zero bearings in it, so I'm not worried about them corroding up. And this thing bombs, man. They sent these to me right before this event and like I could freaking like bomb cast it and that's what it takes out here red fishing because you got to get to them before you spook them or do we do we just stop for a second and let them swim on past us no because we can't reach them No, they're still going. I can see them on the bank. They're still going. I 
careful where these other ones are. I'm trying to keep in touch with those schools. Oh, wow, that fish just ate something. Yeah, something there. got mugged there. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We're looking for 28 or less. These are not quite mature small. redfish, right? So they, they're homebodies. They don't travel far. No, right? they're, they're, they're staged in where they live, you know, yeah. so we're in the zip code. This off of this side. I'll be off your back shoulder, right? These guys aren't cast casting, and it yeah. could be because those fish are four pounders, well, and it's not going to do them any good, go any further, but it could shallow, disturb so the whole bay. Them over here. And I, they keep without on being there, it's hard to say, but. You see them right there on the, on the bank? I have no idea how big those fish are. I don't eat. <laughs> Blaine, you're going to be on this side of me. This side? Yeah. We're going to get them when they hit the point. So the question is, the reason the guys aren't taking that fight to the fish yeah, is they know. may they're be they're, they're on the they're deeper crazy. edge of the of this bay, and they can't get up there where it's shallow. And it looked like uh, oh, Barlow just right. said well, he was going to go down to the point power, power pole down, down and allow them to go in that pocket, and then you'd have a straight on shot coming back oh. out of the pocket. No, Which they're still cruising. Head on shot is going to be a lot better presentation see, for grass looks because like remember, dead, a redfish likes things running from him. So if you throw behind them and you reel through them, and now this bait would be attacking the redfish from the tail, that's not a natural predator-prey presentation, and that could be a problem. Could spook the fish. Straight behind us, Another school, straight behind us. Sounds like he's got another school in the back. Where'd they go? I don't know. I lost them. But I think if you get where that grass is. Mm-hmm. And those fish are cruising. I, I don't know where the big school went, though. I wonder if it's a little deeper right there. Mm -mm. Yeah, I do. I do. They're right there. Yep, yep. Going down the bank. Uh, about 20, 20 feet to the left. Should I go ahead and cast and just let it sit there? I wouldn't. Just wait. That little fish just blew up right there on the corner. But I think it's best that we get them once they get on that other side of gra that grass. Yeah. There's your difference. Barlow and Van, we haven't seen them cast in what, 10 minutes now. Right. Yeah. But if they Wait. make the right cast, right. they stay and extend their lead. They're playing the chess game right now. Yes, they are. With these redfish. And we'll, we will be back to check on progress of that in a moment. Right now, let's hit you with a five-hour energy trivia question, daily trivia. And we'll pose the question and pay it off after the break. What is the expected lifespan of a redfish? Can they live to 40, 50, 60, even 80 years? Think about it. We'll be right back. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Ten teams out there trying to, uh, well, put a little aside for the next three days, trying to make a big day of today because it may be the most favorable conditions. That's uh, one of the games that we have to play and watch throughout the course of this day. We've, we left you with a trivia question, five of our energy daily trivia question just a moment ago. We'll repeat it for you right now. It has to do with the age of redfish. What is the expected, expected lifespan of a redfish? Is it 40, 50, 60, or 80 years, Rick? I'm going to say 60, being that's my next birthday, so I'm yeah. going to say 60, just to go with it. Right. I'm going to go 50. I'll take, I'll take uh, half 100, right? You know what? I'm trying to stay undefeated here, Tommy, with the Redfish game, and I, I think I'll just go out on a limb and go D80. I think that they, wow. they live to be old. I don't know, though. All right. I 60 years. 60 years. Right on. Uh, how about that? I just got lucky. You ever caught a 60-year-old <laughs> redfish, to your knowledge? Well, I don't know, because I didn't ask for a proof of ID. <laughs> oh, no. see? So. You know, you got you to gotta profile a little bit out there. Yeah. Skeeter boats. Bird's eye view of the Eshte Walters boat right there. Wow. Again. Super clear water. Yeah, beautiful clear water. 
a mottled bottom with, you know, potholes, great habitat to have redfish as well as lots of crustacean types of bait. That grass that you see there, Tommy, certainly that's where shrimp and crabs can hide, uh, little fin fish of different sort. And so it's, you can tell, it's a, it just says redfish all over it. And of course, that's why Dwayne's there, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, this dude really knows. Um, but the other thing that comes to mind is the calm before that's the storm, ah. the proverbial. That's kind of playing in the background, isn't yeah. it? Sorry about that. Patrick Walters Walters. hooked up. About to make you go swimming there, buddy. Y'all want to see the Patrick Walter swimming special? Green Acres is the place to be. <laughs> Patrick, that fish better be over 18 inches. You got me over here with this big old net. You about to embarrass me. <laughs> oh, God, he's not as big as I thought, but he's not bad. He's not gonna cold though, I don't think. Nope. Patrick Walters, I've seen you flip big, oh, but look at those, look at the spots! Uh, it's too bad we're not in a spot tournament. Oh, what a beautiful wow. fish with all those spots. Is that not common? Um, it is, sometimes, I mean, it's, it all, they'll, certain ones will get different amount of spots. I mean, you can get some of them 20 spots, but. Hey, remember you got a look camera over there. You can take some pictures too back there. Something got his head. Yeah, look how pretty. All the different spots, even on the other side. Yeah. That's a pretty fish. Beautiful red fish. Captain Rick Murphy, you sit in the seat that runs the show here. Okay. On our live coverage, mm. you now designate our power pool replay of the day. Well, I gotta tell you, Van and Barlow, they are at the schools of fish. They've got great conditions to be able to locate that, those schools, but to have a double header, you know, that, that can change your live well quite substantially. And what really amazed me here is that Barlow put his rod in a rod holder to net Van's fish. You can see the bend of the rod in the background there. Wow. I would never leave a, a rod unattended, but it worked for him. And certainly the technique that they're using is something that I've never seen before, a popping cork turned around backwards with a lipless crankbait, a rattling type of crankbait to, to catch the fish, and it's working. It's on fire for these guys. Back to their uh, current project right now. I was tracking a, a couple slow. of yeah, schools. That might be that this, original school. This area they have been using as their headquarters for a while. Right there, now, Captain around. Rick, you gotta put a bow on that and say that was the power pole replay of the day. You gotta say it like that. That's oh, the... I messed up. <laughs> yeah, there, there they are in the pocket. Yeah. I hope, Content that, does, was I hope that doesn't cost me money. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but they're not moving real fast, not so they're hard to see. When they came around that corner, they were tight in the corner, you could see them better. So Ronnie, I want to show you that one of the things that comes to mind here is now the guys, because about to hit this point. of the compression wave that a big boat makes going through a shallow bay, what they've done is they've power pulled down and they're allowing the fish to come to them so that they don't have that wave of the boat moving slowly through the water, pushes this compression wave. They're sitting there settled waiting for these guys to get close enough to cast to. Apparently. It's a very stealthy approach. They're still in that patient, and if patient the, as well. Yeah. Coming this way. And again, nobody's casting. They're waiting until yeah. they get close enough to That's where they works. can but cast to them, I mean, make the perfect cast. The fish should be on. Textbook. Us here. It doesn't take much to disturb them. I don't know where they went now. You can tell these guys are a seasoned team. They're not in a hurry, they're not panicking, they're just letting it happen. It's like, you know, one of the great basketball players passing the ball off to somebody else and letting it happen. They, they stopped coming, that's for sure. Right there, look. Yeah, I see the wakes, but it's like yeah, they're just, they just like spinning held around, up. yeah. Come on, fish. The waiting game continues here for our leaders. Let's go over the team of Hines and Gibbs. Jeremy Hines, Nikki Gibbs, Florida anglers still looking for their first keeper today. 
These guys qualified through the Power Pole Redfish Series. They're a Power Pole sponsored team, obviously, and uh, looks like they're power pulled down now. Better? Yeah. That's out. They don't have a fish in the live well, right, Tom? No, do not. All right, so we're hoping for plus 20 here. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's the one we need. There we go, baby. Yeah. Finally, broke the ice. That's one we needed. Give us a start. Get another one of those, we'll be sitting all right. I don't know why they're being so finicky. They're up in that grass and in them sand holes. Let's say 23, 24. Three and eight. We're happy to have it right now. We need two more, one more of these at least, and upgrade them. We'll see how big he weighs right now. All right. He's 409. 409 on our scale. 409. You want to save him? Want to save Mark? I mean, it's a. Oh. I just left him on there, and I could just see the mark and how much weight we had. It's still there. Can you save it that way? No, I got it clear. So Himes and Gibbs on the board right now. Uh, kind of a little bit on the slender side for a, for a 23 inch. Yeah, absolutely. But again, they're one fish away from being able to breathe and being able to relax a little bit. That's all part of this game. Here's a team that hadn't caught one yet, and you know what? They got to get going. Absolutely. We only got two teams left that have not put a keeper in the box, a slot fish. And we have had a fantastic morning here. So the, the great diversity of approaches, different environments, different ways to catch them, different baits. That's what we look for on live fishing. Absolutely. All right. Get back to We're going to hope to call this one later on. There we go, baby. We got bass fishermen. We've got redfish. Superstars. Yeah, that's a great one. bunch to take on the three days on a truly unique place here with all the beautiful water, the sand bottom. So different, so challenging, and so many fish here. We're going to take a break. Coverage continues here on Bassmaster.com, and we'll be back here in an hour. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Ready to roll with three more hours of live fishing for you. This is the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Team Red Fishing. Going full speed down here on the southeast coast of Texas. It's in a very, very well known host city of Port Aransas, just about. 20, 30 miles east of Corpus Christi here on the southeast Gulf Coast of Texas. A great, great sport fishing environment here. And we have got 10 great teams facing off against each other for three days straight. The aggregate rate of weight of the three days will determine our winner. There's your rules of the game right there. They get two redfish per day. That's a limit. And they have to be within the slot as per Texas Parks and Wildlife. 20 to 28 inches long. Heaviest three-day total is your winner at 50,000. Goes to the winning team here in this uh, first ever event of this sort. So much fun to bring it to you live. Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore, the great Captain Rick Murphy, the winningest, winningest saltwater tournament angler of all time. What do you make of that first, first half of the day, Rick? You know, these guys were really on it. You know, Barlow and Van. Uh, I mean, it's really tight race there. Uh, the one thing that I'm really impressed with is how well the teams have adapted of having a bass guy with a freshwater guy and yeah. what they're bringing in tricks and techniques. And we're gonna, I can't wait to share with our viewers that are tuned in right now 
uh, all the little things that we're learning here in the studio. Yeah, they're, they're pushing each other along a little bit. They're, and they they're, absolutely they're, are. They've both got a learning curve that they're taking advantage of. But this is a special opportunity, and we're so proud to be able to bring it to you. As we say, three more hours live as we head toward the weigh-in coming up later today, right yeah, here on so Bassmaster.com. Right nice steady breeze, just enough ripple to break that, that light penetration up. There's mullet jumping everywhere. It's a hard sandy bottom mixed in with some grass. Outgoing tide, we're getting towards the bottom of the tide. All those bait fish kind of go to the, just those real subtle drops, like six, seven inch drops. And that's, that's where those apex predators hang out. Caught a couple through here this morning. Purcell Dane, right? The sun is real bright right They've now. They've been biting a little more subtly here yes, the last they have. few fish, just kind of nipping at it, short striking it. One thing's for certain, you have to have that color water right there. Like, you yeah. have to have it. Yes, it could be too clear, and yes, it could be too dirty, but that is like perfect. Yeah, it right is. There. So, you know, Tommy, these guys really had a pretty productive morning. Mm. Um, they were able to catch two fish early, which certainly takes up the confidence in the boat. It allows you, when you get two, I've said it before, you get two in the well, then you start to slow down. You have a tendency to relax a little bit more. And you also start to build a little confidence that knowing that you're in the right area. And all of that leads to more productive fishing. And as you can tell, Ryan is very methodical in the way he's put together this game plan. Uh, out of all the teams that we followed this morning, he's the most confident that the weather change that may occur later this afternoon and early tomorrow is not going to affect him like uh, some of the other teams are worried. They feel, he feels as though they can find protection from the wind, uh, no, no matter how hard it chooses to blow. Absolutely. And I love the fact that early they were throwing search baits, you know, spoons and paddle tail, big swim baits. That's certainly Chris's forte, and it really helps. Talk about a great morning. Let's take a look now at our leaders unofficially and have been for the past, well, two and a half hours here. Barlow and Van. Excuse me. Glenn Van and Thomas Barlow. So these guys were very fortunate that wherever they were fishing, look at the slick, calm water. Uh, they just didn't have the wind that some of the other competitors had to deal with. And what that allows you to do, Tommy, is it allows you to really see just the most subtle disturbance on the water, which can be a school or it could be a bait fish that's running from a school approaching. They're fishing a technique that I've never seen before. They're reversing a popping cork, which Ronnie and I will get into this in a few yeah, minutes. Yeah, looking forward to that. But they have a lipless crankbait with rattles underneath it, and they're using the cork to make that lipless crankbait suspend. Never seen this before in red fishing, and that's the cool part about fishing in general, whether you're bass or a red fisherman, there's always something to be learned. That's right, and if you can find something that separates you, gives you a little separation from everyone else, man, yeah, that it, could take you all the way. It certainly is paying off. These guys have double headers and some big, beautiful schools, you know? Let's get out to them now, Glenn Van and Thomas Barlow. We're live now. Hello, gentlemen, how's things? Got six fish so far, two in the well, 15 and a half pounds, somewhere around that. Um, school we were fishing on has shut down, so we're off to the next school, about a quarter mile away, and uh, see if they're going. We can kind of see them going off right now, but we don't know how many fish are over there, but we're gonna go check them out and try. That's it. That's about it. Having a great day. It's been a pretty day, and plan has worked out for the most part, it's pretty good. We haven't uh, haven't executed on every fish, but that's to be expected when you're when you're fishing this style of fishing. The, the fish can get very spooky, and uh, just got to swing for the fence in this deal. Yeah, we're in about we're in a marsh complex, and it's all about 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches. So we're barely fitting through here and uh, churning up a little mud as we go. Like now. 
Well, they've had a good uh, limit in their boat for a good long time, two and a half hours. Combination of baits that we're throwing is a rattle trap and a, a quarter ounce bad marine jig head on a um, with a down south lures burner shad in either twisted T or color X, and uh, the rattle trap half ounce saltwater grade rattle trap uh, with a, a weightless float above it and then all that weightless floats doing for us is controlling our depth so we're not hung on the bottom all the time um, it's working out real good for us so far that's about all we got <laughs> Keep on well, these guys uh, have been uh, tracking those schools all day long and, and and making the right moves playing the chess game to perfection out there. you know We left uh, take a little break about an hour and ten minutes ago. Uh, Bort and Menendez, Ricky Bort and Mark Menendez, had one fish in yes. a live well. But this happened during break time. I'm going to share it with you. Look at Mark Menendez. Mark oh, flipping that's red. Too, that's the right one. That's the right one. Get these away it up. Get his head up. Get his head up. Don't be over, don't be over. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir, that is not over. Uh, that is stud. Stud, stud. Well, that's a first for me to see him Excellent job, you know, Mark. flipping redfish, Tommy. That's nuts. I love the fact that the bass guys bring so many things, to, so many tricks and techniques to the fishing in general. Well, that's what 70% of them would rather be doing, no matter oh, yeah. what species they're fishing for. Yeah. So. It's a full contact sport when you're these bass guys. They really like, you know, being in contact with all, them all the time. Don't leave home without him. I got your rod out of the way. Don't be over. Don't be over is all I got to say. Now, nah. eat right ahead, baby. Do it on the deck, Swincy. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, putting it up there on the seat. Or look at this uh, edge right here, right up in the undercut part of the, it's not the undercut because it's vegetation there, but it kind of looks like an undercut bank. Yeah, it, I don't know what he was doing there. I can't wait to talk to him after the tournament hours are over and ask him specifically about that fish. It looked like he was just simply fishing straight down, but yeah, I could be wrong. Sight fishing. Yeah. Like he's back on the St. John's River or something. Do redfish like shade, just like bass do? No, I don't think that's really that important. I tell you, the best time to go redfishing is in the heat of the summer. They like it when it's hot. They uh, like it when it's humid. You know, they're a tropical-oriented fish, and uh, they, they seem to really, the, the heat of the summer, when it's pretty consistent daily weather patterns, is when it really, really works well. However, some of the experts that I've talked to that are in the tournament area, Guys that are uh, local captains, they they tell me that November is generally a really great time of year for the Texas coast uh, for red fishing because the cooler water uh, helps as well as that's when a lot of the bait starts to move in because of the high waters that you get in the fall, those equinox tides uh, that you get uh. in September and October and November. So it brings in a lot of green gulf water. And then the Texans refer to it as our bays are greening up. And what that huh. means is that clean green water of the Texas Gulf of Mexico moves into these places that it's not normally there. And then that allows those redfish to get up in there and eat the crabs and the shrimp that move into those places to spawn or to hatch or whatever it may be. So fascinating to watch these Skeeter bird's eye view shots we've been getting for you all day long and we'll continue to get through the course of this tournament it shows that that white sand you know it's people a lot of people have their red fishing experience in, in like venice and the delta it's a different looking bottom than it is over there in louisiana it's 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 uh, it's a combination of what you get in florida as well as what you get in texas because yeah. They do have yeah, we're catching the clear water, which is here, typical of what happens in the yeah, Gulf Coast of Florida. But then they have hard bottom, significantly hard bottom, not like you would yeah, typically have in Louisiana. Yeah. 
and that creates a habitat for really good sight fishing as well as um, you know your baits are a lot more effective because it allows that redfish to see it for a further distance you know when you're fishing in muddy water uh, you, you know you have to literally land on the fish or come by the fish's nose in order to get the bite but they have a tendency in the dirty water to be less spooky and more aggressive. So there's your trade-off. Yes, you get a trade-off. Mm -hmm. Notice how Ryan now has moved, because their power pulled down, he's moved down the gunnel of the boat, so it's allowing Chris to now be up on the front because they're both fishing on the left side. Uh, certainly their position so that they can cast down wind which allows them to get 20 or 30 feet further per cast. Just hammered through there dude. You just got hammered yeah. through there? Yeah. It felt like I pecked though. It wasn't that smooth. I wonder if I should cut that other watermelon one on and throw that one. I mean, you're, you're, they're definitely committing to you more than they are this yeah. paddle tail right now. Do you have another one? Yeah, I got another one. That's All on right, that cool. rod that I broke. You know, the cool part about this, Tommy, is when you are a fishing Don't guy start like Ryan, he's got the confidence that Chris can do the job. <laughs> you know, that doesn't always happen. And so to allow Chris to fish what he wants to Lake fish Clair, allows Ryan to fall, fish what like he wants. And they could be totally like from Saint two Clair. different spectrums, like but it also water. gives them a whole lot more to offer like redfish that may be a little diff river. difficult to catch. Yeah. Yeah. And it's nice for Ryan to be able to, you know, know that Chris can get the job done. He can really do it. And they like see it from a long ways away to come and eat it. Of course, Chris, residing in the state of Texas right now, but a California native and uh, from the area he's from, also a lot of saltwater experience, a, a lot of uh, uh, years spent dealing with these particular kinds of species, this particular kind of fishing. And uh, great to welcome you back into the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. The great Captain Rick Murphy giving us some top shelf analysis through today. And we also lean on some other of our great friends to do that as well. That one, that fellow right there in particular, Dave Mercy, our lithium pro, Dave Mercer, our lithium pros on the line feature. And uh, Dave, uh, give us some observations about the, the commonalities between red fishing and bass fishing. You'd be a good guy to ask about that. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And we are drifting over a flat, watching Dwayne Esty and Patrick Walters right over my shoulder right now. And looking down in this flat, guys, it, it could remind me of a shallow flat on Lake Champlain, an eel glass, grass flat. I mean, it really, it, it looks just like what we're used to seeing for bass. And, and just like bass, I mean, what you'll find in these big, flats like this this entire area and that's what makes this such a robust fishing area just this it seems to go forever but basically it is a big giant giant pond and uh, we made a long run we covered uh, several you know i don't know 10 15 miles whatever it was and we ran through six inches of water you know six inches the deepest i think we hit was was knee deep and that's a difficult playground to catch fish in guys just because everything's the same and these fish are always moving patrick and his partner just recently moved to that edge where those fish drop off and hoping to get a couple of bites there but basically these shallow flats where these fish are sitting and you can drift your way across them or you can hit the edge like they are doing there but uh Chemistry, chemistry is a big thing and that's what i'm going to be really interested in guys on the stage today to see how our teams get along. I mean, it's easy to get along in pre-fish. I saw Patrick and his partner went for ice cream and all sorts of happiness during pre-fish, but it's tournament day. You better deliver today. So I'm interested to in see how the chemistry is because you look at the six teams that are made up of bass anglers, you know, one bass angler, one redfish angler. They haven't spent a lot of time fishing together and you watch those redfish teams. I mean, one thinks it and the other does it. It's amazing. And, and that's gonna be key in this tournament because 
to get those fish in the right size fish, often you're going to be catching multiples. You're going to hook up two at a time and that sort of thing. And that's when that experience of guys fishing together for years and years, I think, is is really going to stand out. But but who couldn't get along with Patrick Walters? I mean, I'm, I'm, well, sure. I'm sure they're getting along famously. <laughs> Dave, what, 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 I mean, for a guy who's fished by himself on, in bass tournaments for 20 years, out there by himself each and every day, I mean, what's the biggest adjustment he's got to make with someone else there in the boat with him and someone else who, who, may, uh, who, may not, who may know some things he doesn't know about red fishing? I think it's just the timing, really, Tommy. I mean, it, it's the chemistry between those partners. I mean, I think that these anglers definitely can adapt and get to know each other, but everybody, it doesn't matter whether it's uh, tournament fishing, whether it's table tennis, it doesn't matter. Chemistry in partnerships really pays off. And whenever you are with somebody that you've been working with for years, you don't have to ask them to get the net. They're already standing there with the net. You don't have to tell them to cast back to that exact spot there because their bait's already in there. And I think really uh, the biggest uh, advantage they're going to have is, is just that timing. I don't think it's going to be tough for our guys. I mean, our guys love this. I mean, it, it's like going on vacation and, and getting to compete. So they're learning. And what will be neat, I think, is I've already heard some of the redfish guys say some of the stuff the bass guys are doing is different and, and vice versa. It'll be interesting to see how some of these relationships move into the elite series you know down the road are we going to see somebody win an elite series event with something they learned this very week i mean fishing a fish is a fish and whether it's salt water or fresh water i mean they both have brains about the same size and these guys are are trying to crack that nut although their brains are only the size of your pinky now they're, they're they can outsmart you trust me i i know I, I i know so well that's why i became a tournament mc so dave i got a question for you, you know Dwayne's from Louisiana and the Cajuns love to eat. Did I hear you say that they went for ice cream during their pre-fishing? They did, they did, yeah, they went for, and other foods of de delectable delights. I mean, really good food down here. Um, and they, that is, seems to be where they're definitely getting along. Patrick and Dwayne both uh, enjoying eating together. We just hope that the, the fish eat a little more for them. But yeah, they've been eating. I mean, this is a great part of the world, guys. I'll tell you, man, you come down here, this is, a, they, it reminds me of the island that Weekend and Bernie's was on. I mean, I haven't what? seen anybody walking around with Bernie yet, but, but, but it's only Friday. Give me a few hours. Okay, <laughs> keep a sharp eye out for anything that looks like that. Dave Mercer, thank you so much, our guy, who will be conducting uh, the weigh-in coming up uh, after 3 p.m. Eastern time. That would be two o'clock central here. In Southeast Texas, we get back out on the water. Looking for Ricky Board and Mark Menendez. They just put a fish in the boat. As we get to this point. Better push it. Oh, oh, oh. Put a second fish in the boat, I should say. There he is. There you go, Mark. Hey, I'm gonna let it go up against the bank, so. Better than you think he is. Yeah, he is, he is, he is, he is. Woo! Keep him away, keep him away, keep him away. Come on, Paul, get your head away from there. Get there your head away go. from there. There he goes. There we go. That's what we're looking for, mother. That's a, nice <laughs> That's a four and a half pounder, my. <laughs> oh, you great, you old one. big dog. Get him in the bottom there. We go get it. We're going home to get us a pizza. Yeah, let's and get us a little gasoline. We're gonna get some gas to go home first. Yeah, and we ain't even messing in here no more. Oh, we are done. Let's get that big dog right there. Big old grunter. Big old grunter, grunt, big boy. Come on. That's a 25 inch fish marker. He's gonna weigh seven pounds. <laughs> That's it. I will say it one baby. more time. Rage crawl. Don't leave Here. home without Here, feed the baby. Feed the baby. Oh, oh, he said, damn, didn't I? Like. Oh, he just said. Ricky better be careful there, Tommy. He's gonna be the yeah. uh, powerful yeah, replay of the day. <laughs> you don't wanna See, be that. You don't wanna be that messing around. Routine. Half a show and you're already, you know oh, the ticket. Oh, heck yeah. Whether it's a good Mark, thing or a blunder. Mark, you gotta get this other fish out first, brother. So Menendez is brought his bass crawdads to 
red fishing, which it's not strange, but the point is he was working it very slow. His whole uh, tactic was just to slide it, bounce it sl very gently. Sometimes if we pop these lures or we bounce them too hard, it offends the redfish and spooks them. But it looks like Mark's dialed in there. He's caught a couple fish real quick here. He might be onto something that's gonna really make a difference for him. They're that moving up, I can yeah. tell you that. that themselves a sweet little corner back there. They will advance in the standings up into the top four as it stands right now. So. Wow. Excellent work by our bass and redfish combo team. Now, do you think these guys are obviously teams, but these Elite Series pros fend for themselves all year, Captain Rick. So do you think they're keeping score in the boat at the end of the day? Like, I, I call both keepers, bro. Like you need to step it up, redfish. Oh, they, you that know that. <laughs> there, there's way too much ego on both sides, of whether it's saltwater or freshwater. You know, for sure, they got it going on. Well, Houston fishing with the sleep. The weather's definitely changed after the last four days. We haven't had a north wind blowing south, southwest, west, southeast. Slight front came through. You got a little cooler weather. Obviously, you got bluebird skies. Those are a lot of things to consider. I'm fishing some of the areas that I've fished in the tournament. Like I said, we, we, we haven't seen a lot of fish. We're just fishing some of those areas. And the tide's not falling. The tide, uh, every day was ripping out. The tide's held in right now. So we're getting in an area of a flat where I know these fish are moving. It's trying to land on them. We didn't see a, a lot of numbers of fish. So I'm just sticking with the game plan. I'm not getting all antsy and uh, running to a bunch of different stuff. If I can catch a couple good fish, I'm gonna start fishing new water. But up until then, this is the only thing I got going. We fished an area in the intercoastal, caught three or four small ones. That water's still high. We're hoping that water falls out, get back up in there about one o'clock, and hopefully we can bang a couple good fish. But that's where we're at right now. Fishing stuff. We're on Houston from yeah, the west coast just of Florida. The like interview yesterday said he just hadn't spent enough time here to really know his way around perfectly, so he's still sort of finding his way. And that's the situation for the team so far. They have had some hookups today. Yeah, they've caught a couple of fish. Unfortunately for them, they're a little bit too small, so they don't have anything in the well, nothing on the scoreboard yet. But, you know, there's a good example of a, a fish that was just under the 20 inch slot. Yeah, we all pretty much thought that one would make it. It yes. did not. It fooled me that it didn't, for sure. Well, I caught another short fish earlier that he threw in, was immediately grabbed by a porpoise. So oh, yeah. I don't know if that's a bad, bad mojo or bad not. Bad omen. Yeah, it could be. Could be. But they can turn that around, and they got plenty of time to do it. Look at the Houston and Hudnall, McCabe and Zaldane, the only two teams who are still yet to put a keeper in the box, but they can get it done. Van and Barlow still reside at the top of our leaderboard. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is brought to you by Skeeter Boats, Minn Kota, and by Lithium Pros. Ten teams out there in this beautiful place here, this place that is such a great mecca for sport fishing. Coast of Texas Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Ten teams, and they're all trying to lay the groundwork for a successful three-day campaign out here. Come up, come in with six total keepers at the end of three days and have the number one weight, and you take home the top of money. Tommy, I wanted to bring it into the Bassmaster Studio sponsored by Marathon and got Captain Rick at the monitor with me. We're going to go through a couple lures and the way that they can be fished because we saw two teams today throwing popping corks. And so when we get into the top lures aspect of it, there's a couple different ways you can utilize them. And Rick, I'm going to want you to explore that. But look at this video real quick. We saw one team, the McCabe and Trace Aldane team, using that popping cork as a surface disruption. Meanwhile, we saw our current leaders, Van and uh, Barlow, using it more subtly. So what's the difference in them and how you can use both these popping So the cords? way Captain McCabe's is, is uh, working it, he's using the concave part of the cork to actually call the fish. He's making a big chug. He'll chug it real hard once or twice, and then he lets the soft plastic, he's using a four inch jerk bait with a jig head underneath, and then he's waiting for that fish to be attracted to the chugging noise. However, 
that could be offending the fish in these calmer conditions in these shallow water. I don't know. That's a technique that he uses as a guide over in Louisiana, very proven. But our team that is in the lead, now what they're doing is they've reversed the cork around so that it doesn't cause any noise when they're popping it. The concave part is on the back is end. Is on the back end. So they've rigged it so that it's like this. More of like a torpedo coming through subtly than the big splash. That's correct. And then the line going to a lipless crankbait like so is now just using this to suspend this. Yeah, so no action necessarily because of how slow they're moving it, but it's keeping it in the face of those redfish that are not feeding on the surface and are not burrowing down in the, in the water. They're just in the middle of the water column. Because they're fishing over grass and potholes, they can't afford to let this sink down into the grass because then the treble hooks would get loaded up with weed and certainly redfish aren't vegetarians. They don't eat it with the salad on it. So what ends up happening is they're just using this float to make this suspend while they're waiting. They're casting out in front of the schools and then to wait for the fish to get to the float. The float is an indicator as to where it is in reference to the fish. Exactly. And then all of a sudden the redfish encounters a shape a silhouette of a bait fish of some sort. They just barely have to move it at all and they get a bite. Now explain this last cork to me right here, this cracking cork or this rattling cork. This one is much different because the float and the, the styrofoam itself doesn't make the commotion, but rather it's the beads and the weights attached on that, on that wire. That's correct. So the heavy beads are to allow this to float with this part down. And then when you jerk it, it lays over on its side and they call these clacker bobbers so that it's clacking. It's making the rattles or these beads as well as these metal beads make a noise as it slides up and down the shaft. This comes in a concave type of popping cork like that, as well as a pencil cork. So the frame is the same, but the oval cork or the pencil or the concave is your own personal choice of what you're trying to accomplish. So with this one, you can have a lipless underneath of it. That attracts the fish. With that one, you may have a soft plastic with no action, and the cork itself gives it the action and the commotion to attract the fish. So we're already seeing two different types of popping corks or rattling corks being used uh, besides all the casting swim baits we're seeing from the other pros like Chris Aldane and uh, Rick uh, Rickard. Rickard, Ryan Rickard. Ryan Rickard, yeah. Thank you, Captain Rick. You're welcome. Lots of ways to get the job done. We have seen some, uh, a great demonstration of some of these techniques. They're gonna be new to bass fishing fans. And always exciting to watch something new and especially exciting when it works and we've seen it work for eight of our 10 teams today. Get back to our leaders. Speaking of whom, Thomas Barlow. Pond and big school of fish in the pond. Glenn the Vant. And we're just gonna slowly make our way there try to pick off some singles on the way to the school. So Tommy, one of the things that I'm really impressed with, with Thomas Not as much Barlow's activity as it was this morning. Is yeah, that he has an area, an A spot, a B spot, a C spot, a D spot, and they're all within maybe five minutes of one yeah. another. He hasn't even cranked up his motor other than to idle out of the one creek and we saw him putting so he's not run to another spot, but he's got several plays in a very short distance. And as we all know, whether it's bass fishing or red fishing tournaments, time management is the single most important thing that can make you or break you during the day. No one's figured out a way to catch him while the big motor, motor's running. You don't catch him at 60, gonna, I can tell you that. It's not gonna happen. But believe it or not, I've just seen them both cast within the last 30 seconds. They are. They are newly motivated. Yes, they are. Professional. Yeah. There's been so much time just looking, just digesting data and information. Yeah. And again, I can't emphasize this enough. In the mind of a red fisherman, so many times we make that 120 foot cast and then a redfish pops South up Texas. 50 feet away and you're in the recovery you're mode of trying to re reel in as fast as you can. So sometimes guys and teams don't prefer to blind cast. Uh, it looks like these guys are pre-fishing Van and Barlow are pre-fishing for tomorrow. They're not, <laughs> see, look, here it is. 
look how he just saw one right there mm -hmm. close to the boat. If he would have been out there 120 feet, he wouldn't have been able to make that little flip. That fish had probably already suspected fishy, fishy. the boat, but who knows? Fishy, fishy in the water, bite my hook like you ought <laughs> Well, they've even got a, a call, a song. There's, That's how in tune they are today. Way, yeah. And you can see the dark or the deep Yeah, you water can see now. it today. Yeah, you couldn't see it the other day. Watch. That's the one underrated aspect I've already noticed within the first five hours of today is the importance of being in sync with your partner. Obviously, half of these teams never fish together. They're fishing together this week, learning each other's personalities. These guys, both of these guys pictured right here, Van and Barlow and Landon Savoie, they fish together so much, they can be patient and trust that they're making the right call. When he says don't cast, you trust that. Yeah, absolutely. Compared to being eager and not knowing. Absolutely. And knowing that the guy standing beside you has, you've won, you know, you've experienced the agony of defeat, and you know what the other one's thinking before he actually does it. So that's obviously a little advantage over some of the other teams that are just now experiencing being with one another. You know, Savoie is not questioning what Land's next move is going to be. They've right. probably already had this conversation versus guys that are haven't shown up. Yeah, I'm wondering what Trait's wondering right now about uh, what McCabe and yeah. Shear got to do to catch a fish. Saw that one, but I lost him in the sun. See, Barlow keeps seeing him swimming snaking along the edge of that not shoreline. Seeing anything yet. That's a sand hill. The shadows of their awesome. silhouette on the water makes it look like they are fishing down sun. I'm surprised he hasn't seen them a little sooner, but he just now power pulled the boat down. He's gonna sit there allow any fish that may be There's nearby one, big one to get used there, to yeah. the compression the or the, 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 get, the, the, the displacement of, of that boat. boat. And that maybe allow a fish to elevate a little in the water column once he becomes comfortable okay, and he'll be able to see him and can actually sight cast to the fish. Some nervous water out in the Looks like Nick is uh, now hit using a popping cork mm -hmm. of some sort. The only and Menendez. The only thing that could maybe deter one of these teams that has elite pros on it is if they happen to catch a bass somehow in one of these backwaters. They'll be distracted the rest of the day. Yeah. Tomorrow's going to play. Yeah. If Menendez catches a five-pound bass right now, <laughs> he's done. Or as as uh, Estedes would call him. It, it would be a green trout. A green trout. Okay. Yeah. It's already here, but the winds are going to back. The secondary winds are going to back in tomorrow. We're going to see winds up to 30 miles an hour tomorrow. Gusts. <laughs> Sorry about that. I saw you load. You really want to tell me that the trolling motor was high? Well, <laughs> take gum, you. This is the way it's been uh, for three days. Like two married women, just both of us back and forth. We ain't he, arguing. We're having fun with each he other. Said, he said so, he said something about when he was a bass fisherman, he used to be a redneck. And I said, <laughs> used to. And he went on and talked for about 10 seconds. He turned around, he said, you son of a gun, I'm gonna punch you in the mouth. <laughs> We're not done yet. <laughs> we still have two more days. <laughs> oh, hell, we've had fun. Mm, you laugh a lot harder when you, when you get your limit in the boat. Men is on board, billing themselves as the old men in the sea. Come into this one right here. Actually, their bass fishing history has crossed paths a few times over the last three decades. No, sir, that is not over. That is stud. Stud. There we go. Martin Mendez is to fish his jig right up on the bank. The dirt, dirt shallow. And these guys get something from each other, to be sure. I'll say hi.
because uh, he can see better out in that water. That's a, that's a big deal. I mean, uh, I've, I've, I've asked him 10,000 questions and he's asked me 10,000. And uh, it's unique to see all the different styles of boats here and what they do. Lord, I'd love to have one of these boats at an Okeechobee where I was 25 feet up in the air. And short as I am, I could see bed fish out there 40, 50 yards at a time. Um, but I'm gonna go with height. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Fishing for three days, and all you got to do is catch two keepers a day. That sounds like a dream come true for bass fishermen, but it's a lot more complicated than that. You got to get two special fish in your boat every day if you're going to be contending for the win here at the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. To you from Port Aransas. In southeast Texas, the team of Van and Barlow still on top. A pretty healthy lead right now, a nice little margin, but things can change very, very quickly. They put their limit in the boat very, very quickly this morning. Land and Savoie have moved up into the second place spot as it stands right now. Let's go after one of these teams that uh, was able to put one in the boat uh, oh, about an hour and a half ago. Took them a while to get going. Times. Jeremy Himes and Mickey Gibbs, Mickey Gibbs. Both, both guys from the west coast of Florida. They qualified through the Power Pole uh, tournament series. And uh, I, you know, to tell you the truth, uh, oh, Tommy, I'm surprised trying. that they're not, have done better. I don't know if uh, we'll something if changed for them in their pre-fishing. But, you know, Jeremy is just so scientific when it comes to fish. how he puts the things, his game plans together. That's and, a better uh, fish. He's got a head shake, but he feels better. But we'll better. see. They got yeah. a fish on I don't now. Know where we'll see at. what we He's got. He's right over here. We got two in the boat, but uh, not big ones. Yeah, he ain't no much half, better. Eight pounds he ain't total. much better. He felt better, but when I first hit him, <laughs> inches another small one we got two in the live well We've caught about 20 fish they're just all small guys I mean we can't find the big fish we had some big fish here and seen some big fish this morning and just can't get any of the big fish to eat catching all 20, 24 inches. But we got two in the live well. We're gonna keep working on it. So Tommy, I can tell you, I can feel that pain. I've felt it many, many times. And uh, the one thing that, you know, at this stage in the day, you're just now Pull trying to get. Little fish. <laughs> you know how we talked about getting two in the well? Well, you got you two in the well. Corner. And, um, but they need a big bite. And that'll re-lift yeah. and reinvigorate those guys. You know, they could put a big fish in the well, six or seven pounder, that their whole demeanor would change. As you saw there, Himes was putting on some fish formula okay. onto his plastic to give it a little scent. Well, they said they weren't like they were totally not around big, they'd seen a few big fish, just couldn't get them to bite. So yeah. I guess that, that probably hurt you as much as helps you. At least if you didn't see any all morning, you might make a move, pick up and move the whole operation somewhere. And it's hard to leave when you've caught 20. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, catching them. As we said before, you can't control what bites your hook. You can just only hope that the right size, the right one bites it if you're around them. But, you know, typically school fish, all are the same size. So if you're catching five pounders, you'll catch five pounders. Two and a half pounders or two pounders. Wonder Zaldane's got one on now. Little dude. I don't think so, Bob. I think he's better than you think he is. He's little. 
Is he little? Yeah. Yeah, TV drag on too? Mm hmm. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you hear Ryan saying you got a TV drag on, dude. Oh, I'm going to have to talk to him about that. What did he say? TV no, shows dude, don't put on tight real drag. real light, man. I wonder if they know a front's coming or something. something you know, That's a production weird. technique, I guess you yes, call it, right, Rick? Exactly. Yeah. Throwing a spoon. Looks like it. he's throwing a spoon there of some sort. No trailer. So remember this, Tommy, about uh, spoons. They're search lures, and they're designed specifically to throw out so. and reel back without breaking so. that reeling. Uh, the vibration of a spoon is similar to a spinnerbait in the bass world, and uh, it's designed just to allow that vibration and that... Uh, the flash and... Yeah, all. exactly, yeah. the flash, and more importantly, you know, the fish to be able to feel it as it's starting to mm. come into his presence. The lateral line of that redfish picks up that spoon before he actually even sees it. Ashtan Walters were our first leaders of the day down the lower right corner. Dwayne Eshte, very celebrated redfish angler, many, many wins. Patrick Walters, since uh, four years, maybe about to start his fourth year with the Bassmaster Elite Series, has accomplished a lot. Also, a couple of years ago, he set the record for the biggest blowout in history. The greatest winning margin in Bassmaster history. That's cool. Did it on Lake Fork. Didn't even have to fish the final day. Ended up no. fishing it, breaking the century mark, but his three-day weight would have won by like 15 pounds. Six or, six or seven pounds over oh, a second. Yeah, 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 cool. after what their four-day weight was. You know, when I looking at Dwayne's uh, his body, There's one. that's a good one, dude. Language. For sure. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we need this Chris. one. Uh -oh. We need this one. Stay on there. Control the motor, good. Yeah, we're good. Oh my gosh. Freaking feels like a classic fish right now. If he goes in the boat, just. Put that rod under. Oh my gosh, bro, that's uh -huh. perfect. We fish. need this one. Come on, we brother. Need this one. Bad. Come on, brother. Stay tight. What if I horse it? Can I horse it, Captain Ryan? You can a little bit, yeah. That was a no. You can. You can. What he's got to be careful here, Tommy, is a redfish is known for burying his yeah. nose on, into the sand bag. and into yeah. the mud, and he'll dislodge that bait. Oh. So he's got to keep that rod up high. I don't like that. He's like, if, yeah. See, right now here. you hear Ryan talking about, oh, I don't like how he's digging. Come, on, come here. Come here. Oh, oh, I hope Ryan. he's not over. I hope he's not, he's over. not over. He's in all day. He's in all day. All day. <laughs> got to be careful with that rod he's down low one. of them pushing that lure, dislodging it from the end it's of their nose. I like that hooked. silly little spoon. And then you see where he's hooked? Right That's there on the end of his nose. It's just like a six, dude. Hold this one. What was that, like six, six and a half? No, he's better than six. Heck yeah, he's better than six. It's a little over six and a half. Okay, we'll, we'll take it. Twenty all day. Six and a half. And a half all day. Nice. Good job. Good job. Keep fishing. Oh, I, I like that silly little spoon. This is uh, this is Ryan's little little gig. Dude, it, it looks just like a spinnerbait blade. That's all it is. A spinnerbait blade. With like one single hook hanging off of it and like a screw holding the hook on with one little weed guard. And it just kind of flutters just like this, just like a spinner blade, blade would, spinner bait blade would, would, uh, would rotate. This thing just kind of moves and shimmies and rotates and it works perfect, like in two, like two feet of water. Dude, that fish like hammered it. Uh-oh, I got a loose one. You're good, you're good. Let's, hold on, let me just make sure. I think that, that's gotta be a small one, but yeah. All right, let's see. Look yeah, how they're working together yeah. to cull. I love that. He's croaking. Hear that? Hear that? Bro, wait a minute. Hear that? He's saying release me. That thing's way smaller yeah, he's than smaller, what we have. Sure. Yeah, boy. My yes. boy is my yes. boy. That was awesome. Six, I think, is what he said. What, that fish? That. Yeah. A little, a tick, a, 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 just that six and a half. Just that six and a half. Dude, that's so much fun. It's just like uh, finesse swim baiting up north for smallmouth. Oh. Like the bite is super light sometimes. When you set into them, dude, they freaking rock it. Dude, that was fairly close to the boat, too. It was. It was. 
That was awesome. Had a boy, Chris. <laughs> yeah. One more upgrade. <laughs> Pretty comfortable feeling when you put a six and a half pounder in your fray bill net. <laughs> you know? No right, we just upgraded. We Captain Ryan took us to a, one of his one of his spots here. And uh, after you know three or four days fishing with Ryan, I kinda I kinda know, you know, the correct zones and what to cast to. And you know, me being from the California Delta, I know that the, the, the tide's going out. We're at the end of the outgoing we're going to the end of the outgoing here about around noon or so. And a lot of these fish relate to just the ditches. Like this is all flat, 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 and you just little subtle depressions, and that's where the redfish are hanging out. And then once you kind of figure out what cast to make, like the lure selection becomes a thing. By far, like the most consistent thing you'll see it all week long is going to be a swim bait, whether it's like a gulp swim bait or paddle tail or like a skinny dipper style. Definitely a swim bait is is like going to be the the best bait day in and day out but sometimes a silly little spoon especially in this kind of little bit more stained water and when there's less grass this spoon works so well and that one right there i mean it was subtle but as soon as you hooked into it you knew like that's the one so they're not huge fish they're not eights and nines like we well that last one should have got him up over got the team up over 13 pounds Get back to Houston and Hudden, all desperately needing a keeper to go in the box. You put the net? This will help them directly. Should be by the console. That's a red. That thing is wacky. Got the net? Where is it at? It ain't here. Oh, but it's under the front console there. Check under here. As soon as I got in this dirty water, man. Back up, son, back up. He's coming here. Oh, Good man. job, bro. That ought to be keeper number one. Like, turn that down. It's okay, guy. It's That's right. a keeper. Yep. That is a keeper. Halfway there, my friend, for day one. Come on. Got it. Get us another one. Might not be a monster, but it's a, it's a keeper fish. That's right. It is a keeper. Thank goodness. Halfway there, just like that, oh, you could have nothing it. all day. Yeah. And he's halfway it. to a, a limit and halfway to a solid day. A hundred percent. And look at the already meat. the attitude <laughs> yeah. in the boat, how it's <laughs> already been today. uplifted. You know, the hardest <laughs> one <laughs> is always the first one. Home in Abel, Florida. Might not be the meat, but I know you guys are watching live. This one's for you guys. We'll show you how they want us to measure these fish. Gotta have faith, man. God just gotta have that faith. Okay, so we're measuring yeah. the fish. He's 23 and 23 inches, 23 and a half inches. Yep. It's a start. The working man back home. Good job, partner. It's all for the working man. <laughs> Keep watching live. All right, we gotta start. You can play them on We say, three Captain three Rick, pounds. we say that the hardest fish in bass fishing are the first one and the last one to fill your limit. Well, for these guys this week, that, those are your two keepers, your first one and your last one. You so, got no other choice. Yeah, exactly. You got no other choice. Oh, some good stuff. Two key catches here in the last uh, five, five minutes. Incredible stuff. These guys really have a lot going on in this tournament. <laughs> it's okay. Well, you hope she does. Yeah. I hope she does awesome. I really do. It's, we're, we're down here to have a blast. This is our home state of Texas, and uh, and, and trade is no stranger to, to, to gulf fishing. She spent a lot of time down on the gulf here with her family over the years, so she knows what to expect. Hopefully they get around them and can execute tomorrow and, and uh, finish second. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh. uh, Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Oh, it's oh, it's. I can't just put that out there though, you know? Why can't? Because I'm trying this new thing where I'm a good wife, a good, <laughs> respectful wife that cares about my husband and wants him to win a ton, and what I want doesn't matter as much. No, that's not going to work. <laughs> not going to work these next three days. Sorry. Well, sorry, Chris.
We heard Chris Aldane before the break, Trey Aldane coming back, talking about something ginned up by a third party. Yes. Let's just put it that way, trying to trying to make some rivalry happen between husband and wife here, where maybe it does and maybe it doesn't exist. A tournament within a tournament. They kind of like, who's going to win the, Zal <laughs> the Zaldane family household and who's going to win the 10-team ten, ten so, event here? So who wins? The one of them that catches the biggest fish or the team? The hey, winning team they're on. Hey, I think, it, I, like Chris said, if either one of them win the $50,000 first pre place this week, they'll be totally fine. It doesn't matter. It, it goes in the same place. place. Yeah. Right. Like the Johnston brothers. <laughs> now, wait a minute. <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, that win tomorrow is going to help us. It's oh, going to hurt yeah. a lot of other people. Dude, it's going to really yeah. help us a lot. Boy, Ryan's got really that confident play, about run, the win play, not hurting him. I hope he's so right. <laughs> To think of this guy having 17 second place finishes. Which one? The North Spot. The North Spot. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Agreed. It's there if we, we need it. Well, agreed, bro. That's like oh crap situation. It won't take long once once you actually get there. It wouldn't take long. Right. So I've played this game that Chris and yep. Trey are playing oh. with my wife, and it is not good okay. when you beat them. <laughs> yeah, it's a lose-lose. I, lose I put you, myself right? in timeout for many, many days. It turned into weeks. <laughs> oh, Even if you win, you lose. <laughs> Keep what going. kind of game is that? Yeah. Dude, I haven't seen it yet. I love the fact that they're just so competitive. Oh, that was a hard. Good head shake. That was hard. Oh my gosh. Stay tight. You got 20 liter on that. You're good. What do we got? What do we got? Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's all right. I got it. I got it. Good job with the trolley. <sighs> haven't seen it yet, I dude. Yeah. I haven't either. All right, coming towards you. Oh my gosh. This is like, like a really, really big one. <sighs> We've not had an over yet today, have we? Oh my No, Lord. we have not. Dude. I got you. I got you. Go ahead and pull back down, would you? Yep. He's not that great, though. Oh my gosh. He's not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, dude. No, he ain't as good as that other fish. Uh -uh. Definitely not. I can feel it. Oh, sorry, buddy. I can feel it in the net. Just raise his head up with that, uh, with your line. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yep. Yeah, he's definitely. He's smaller. Good. As Chris yeah, said, he must yeah. be fishing yeah. the TV yeah. drag. Size huh? only released. Yeah. I'm gonna retie after that. Oh boy. Once again, on the little silly spoon, it's uh, the spinnerbait blade. Um, I really think the key here, and all the other kind of spoons I saw this week, whether you know some of the guys are had them tied on or the tackle stores, they're real heavy. And since we're fishing like in two feet of uh, water or less, we're using a little lighter one. I won't say what size, but it's definitely lighter than that normal five eighths and three quarters. Throw it on spinning gear, nice and nice and easy. The absolute key to this right now is just like when you're like bass fishing, uh, throwing that little finesse swimmer is you gotta you gotta find the exact right speed. If you start reeling it too fast, it goes to the surface and starts waking. They don't like that. If you reel it too slow, it just bogs down in the mud, the sand, and the grass. So you gotta find that real happy medium just off the bottom. And like Ryan just said, it looks like a crab. I mean that thing just looks like a twirling crab. So that's it. That's the exact way to describe how a spoon should be retrieved. You want to reel it fast enough so that it's not oh, skipping the, on the surface the of the water. Yeah. And you don't want That's it to right. porpoise out of the water either. Correct. But if you reel it too slow, then it's not vibrating enough mm -hmm. and the lateral line of the redfish will not feel it. Perfect explanation on how that spoon works. And really he's able to fish it just like splitting the difference of his two favorite baits on the Elite Series, a, a big magnum spoon with the flash that that spoon provides, but then also he loves throwing a swim bait. So that's the best of both worlds for him. He's very comfortable picking that up and catching fish. Yeah, he understands the vibration and what it feels like in the tip of the rod and the subtle bite that the fish eats. Remember now, Ronnie, that red fish is gonna come up behind the spoon and eat it and all of a sudden there is no vibration <laughs> yeah. because you know he's swimming towards you. 
Would you call these, Tommy, the father-son duo of Nikki Savoy and, and, and Travis Land? No, I didn't Based call on, them Well, we the ran into a little trouble son. this morning. Our A spot, we, uh, we made a real good drift, good setup, and we were only about 20 yards off the bank. We turned around and come back to leave, and our school was almost in the middle of the pond. We saw them when we were turning around, so we tried to recover from that and get around behind them, but once they knew we were there, they were, they were rolling too fast for us to catch up to them. And we got pummeled by airboat traffic after that. So we found a nice school around this riprap the other day. He caught a nine pounder out of it, actually. So we're just gonna cruise in and around some of this riprap and on some of these flats here close and see if that school's still here. That north wind's got the water st stirred up a little bit, but I think we got about 13 pounds. If, uh, if we could call that six pounder for a seven, I would be happy for a day like today with that front coming through. Nikki doesn't even have to move to We're cast try to make over it happen. top no. of Travis's head. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a match, that's a perfect matchup, isn't it? Now, if you're just joining us, Nikki Savoy on the, on the left was an NFL tight end, and Travis Land on the right is obviously an NFL fullback. I mean, he's just a, he's just a professional fisherman, it seems. And these two have qualified from the elite redfish series that fished both Louisiana and Texas this yeah. year. Got to try to get you close. See if them fish were on the inside. So, Ronnie, just a little tidbit on the two guys. You know, uh, Travis says that his favorite way to catch a redfish well, no, no, is no, sight no, fishing with a jig, which they're not doing now. But then Nick says that he likes sight fishing, but he also likes fishing a popping cork, which he's picked up here. Yeah, yeah. And Travis said that as well. He loves the sight fishing aspect because they normally can use some kind of elevated surface, whereas the even playing field this week, everyone's off the front deck of the boat. No towers, no no coolers, no no boxes to stand on. Yeah, he's already taller though than oh, that's about everybody Look, else in the field. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right I sure would love to see him catch a nine pounder right now. <laughs> That'll be great for live. Travis from Seguin, Texas in the San Antonio area. Those fish just kind of tend to they were just meandering around in here, in and out of this riprap and stuff like that, so. So as you can tell, Ronnie, Nick is using the concaved type of cork with that frame, where it rattles down the frame. He's looking the, for him the right clacker. now, I guarantee it. But he's using the popping cork Are they selection. Right there and he's throwing so out. he's got the popping deep tone chug like we saw on camera earlier <laughs> correct chugging on the surface <laughs> and the wire frame and cool. he has the wiring rattle clacker as the thing chugs so he's got both things going on which which may be a little different presentation compared to where we saw McCabe and and Trey Zaldane throwing it because they were shallow flat this is more of riprap could have various depths nearby yeah that's correct to call them up we correct full belly. 12 o'clock yep 1208 12.08. Just made a position change, just came on uh, this side of the bridge. We in a little shallower water. Yep. We most probably in about two foot of water right now. Uh, we had pre-fished right here and uh, caught some fish. So we wanted to come over here and see if maybe fish were in a little shallower water. Uh, and uh, give this a try. We got three or four spots right here in this area. We're going to try to cut some drifts across here and uh, see if we see any bait and catch a fish here. But it's a uh, northeast wind. We got uh, starting to get a little cloud cover. It might help us out. Ahead. And uh, it doesn't look like no mullet. We're looking for some bait, some movement, some bait. My boy Patrick's fixing to catch a fish right here. I'm about to get the net. I don't know what you guys at home are doing, but hey, <laughs> I like what I'm doing right now, <laughs> fishing. Wish you guys were out here to join us. It's a beautiful day. It is a gorgeous day. Yeah, we're most probably low, mid 70s. It looks like that Travis and, and Nick have moved into a place where they've got 
some of that model bottom that we had talked about mm -hmm. earlier. And with that bluebird sky, they may be able to, you know, physically see one here in a second. And we'll see if Travis can, uh, you know, catch that fish. Wind's starting to be felt from the north and northeast now too, so that's changing. But still, the look thing. at Van and Barlow. I don't know yeah, where, where are these <laughs> dudes are fishing, but it's just <laughs> slick. Hey. I think they were making that long run to Jacksonville or something. They were locking in through for to, to be real close. That's what they yeah. said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they'll be back way later than everybody else, you know? Well, <laughs> maybe they'll have enough to fade the penalty. Well, it's a tight race between uh, Zaldane and, and uh, Rickard and Lan and Suave. How do you say Nick's last name? Savoie. 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 Like Savoie Fair. Thanks for that. <laughs> mm. Like Ryan just missed one there. Menendez hooked up. Hold down, bro. Sorry, ripping up your microphone, bro. Sorry, son of a gun. He bit that about four times before we finally, finally moved with it. All right, we gotta fix some stuff here. Thomas Bartlow using his rod to see what the depth is because the water is dirty there. I guess you can't see it quite as well. Uh -huh. It looks like they both have picked back up on their cork. We just need to see a little glider. And lip, lipless yep. uh, crankbait, you know, their rattle trap. Menendez is on again. It's Don't only a matter of time, Tommy, till he hooks a monster. Mm -hmm. He's doing all the uncharacteristic things that are really paying off. You watch, he's, before this is over, he's gonna hook a big fish, which is gonna be really fun to watch. No geese. Here. They're over there where them ones were nesting the other day, or not nesting in the marsh the other day. I'm gonna spin us all the way around, Mark. Okay. <laughs> Flipper's out there having fun. Flipper is having some fun. Yeah. Back over Dwayne Eshte, Patrick Walters, haven't checked in with action. him for a while. Now, Captain Give Rick, something to talk about at home. They may not have a bunch of ability to skew their weight with only a two fish limit, but Patrick Walters is one of the low oh, ballers on the Elite Series, so they may. May have a chance of an upgrade here with what they got in their model. Well. Mm. Oh, they hooked up and. What I'm talking about? You know, Este has just done so well, Ronnie, over the years. He, his down. his level Ooh, of huge, confidence. Huge. He doesn't. You just see it in his body language that he's just so comfortable. Mm. You know, moving around. He's upgrade. Uh, hooking up, hooking a fish, and it may be not the right one, but he's just happy to be out there, and I think that's just good psyche for his mental state of mind, you know? I got him. Fell right where he should have been. Dwayne, all you gotta do is just sum him up, I guess. Yeah, I know. I don't think he's as big as what we got, huh? I check him, weigh him or something. Yeah. 
Go ahead, you fish. I got. Yeah, I think this. these guys both have two that are five and a half mm -hmm. pounds, oh, roughly. Oh, They're pretty okay. similar. They don't have a big one and a small one. They have two pretty similar ones. Yeah. We will check in on the uh, leaderboard when they get that one sorted out right there. See a couple of pins on the attire of uh, a lot of our anglers here today. A pin that commemorates uh, someone we lost last week. That's that man right there, Aaron Martins. He was the definition of a one of a kind, inspirational hero. And I can tell you that he will be terribly missed by all of us. You're watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. Getting closer and closer to the final quarter. Quarter number four, if this were a football game of our Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Day number one action 10 teams out there. Looking to get two keepers each and every day in the slot between 20 and 28 inches that weigh more than it, the two keepers that anyone else brings in right now. Team that fits that description is Van Barlow, two Texas anglers who know this country. They know the way this fishery works here, and they have demonstrated that uh, they know how to get around them. Captain Murphy. They know how to be around them, but you know what I'm really impressed with is our man Mark Menendez and Ricky Bork. They have been sliding up, sneaking up mm -hmm. the leaderboard, and Mark picking up and doing his typical bass sliding. Uh, a tube crawl of a crawdad along the bottom with a jig head, way to go, way to adjust to doing something that's a little different and making it work. Made a big difference so far. He and Chris Aldane definitely holding up the end for the bass fishermen who are in this uh, mixed field here. There are a couple of the, total. There are a couple guys today who are now rising up the leaderboard that had maybe their spot A didn't work out. We saw Barlow and Van. They might have been in the area, but the sun wasn't high enough. It got up and now they're good. A lot of these guys are making charge, but these guys, Zaldane and Rickard, have done well. They have all consistently all day yeah. catching fish. Eventually, one is gonna make a mistake, and they're gonna go from the oh, traditional six pounder to a big one. Ryan hooking up here. It's been Chris Aldane, the last three hookups. Pretty solid fish. Chris been throwing a little wacky spoon, and I don't know what Ryan, yeah, Ryan's using the same thing. It looks yeah, like he couldn't stand seeing Chris <laughs> catching all the fish, so he went ahead and switched over. Uh oh, uh oh. And I don't blame him. I did. Shoot. That one looks short to me. Yeah. I think it was short. It certainly isn't going to help them with them having, no, no. you know, two yeah. six pounders in the well. Almost there to 14 pounds, not far away. What's Estee doing? Getting oh, the backlash out? He doesn't backlash. <laughs> You're live, Patrick. Your turn. It's all you, Patrick. Show these folks at home what it's like to catch a redfish. I'm trying to run into them. Dwayne's over here lollygagging around right now while Patrick's fishing. Good. You got it out? Yeah. Good job. Hopefully I still got my leader. No leader. Yeah, I got my leader. Yeah, I got my leader. Well, while y'all while y'all were gone, I hooked into a big one and he broke me off. <laughs> Dwayne, while you're rigging, I might idle us up. All right. I'm gonna go look at the graph. They're in the yellow bag. We just passed the spot. 
three eight. Yep. Three eight ounce knotty hooker. Look at the barb. We got a real good barb on it. I want to make sure I got a good barb this way here. If I catch that fish, I want to make sure he's gonna stay on there. So we check those barbs. Just make sure those barbs are good. Make sure you got a good barb because uh, when you're fighting that fish, that's what's gonna keep that fish on there is that barb. A lot of people overlook that, but it might be one of the most important things on a hook is uh, it's just making sure you get that good barb. I'm gonna throw it up real quick. Just sit right here. Yep, I'm gonna just run a big circle. I love the fact that Dwayne has enough confidence in Patrick to let him run the boat while he's reorganizing. Yeah, that's... That shows that these two are really jelling. Yeah, yeah both you know? pulling their own weight, for sure. Yeah, of Not course. only just fishing, but the whole other aspects of a team tournament that you don't think about. The culling aspect, the navigating aspect. And by taking that pressure of having to make all the decisions off of Dwayne, it allows Dwayne to focus more on where they need to be to catch another redfish of the right size. I remember this morning when they took off from the takeoff, Patrick was driving. Yeah, that's so, right, you commented on that. Yeah. That's the importance of retying. We should have been retying. Yeah, good thing it popped off on a cast, though. So. Yeah. There's a weird glare on the water today. I can't see as good out there as I have been able yeah, to. Yeah, no. Let's do the wind direction. Yeah, we kind of northeast with kind of putting us that wind. They have that high cirrus cap of clouds that's making the glare certainly a problem we unless they don't have direct sunlight into the water we've got lots of company out here we're attracting a lot of people a lot of good people out there watching us here there they're pushing it yep that's him <laughs> patrick should be on god that was him I know there's a group between here and that where we just put it up yeah. at. I think what's happening right now, Patrick, is I think these fish are pretty much wadded up right now. They they not scattered across the flats right now. I really think that uh, they kind of grouped up right now because when we was pre-fishing, a lot of these fish right here scattered. were scattered, and yeah. and uh, that's I mean we were doing what, yeah. Doing the type of fishing we're doing right now, that's what we want. Yeah. We want scattered fish. I was about to say, we were definitely catching a lot more singles. Yeah, and, and I mean, I would say right now, the biggest problem is these fish are grouped up. And the problem with grouped up fish is, is I mean, you're looking for that little wad yeah. here and there. And if you don't get across them, you're just not going to, you know, catch them. So the thing that you want to do is, is find those fish that we're gonna are... We're going to have to go check the zone then, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have to go check the zone. Try to catch and, a 26 or 27. Yeah, and, and, just... and maybe around that point, you remember, yep, right yep. over there, we'll we there caught next, a real good fish by the power lines. And, Both, all these islands had them. Yeah, I mean, right now, it's just a matter of us finding that little wad of them, because they definitely wadded up right now somewhere. We don't know where, but they wadded, you know, and, and you just got to keep on keeping on. I want to say hello to the folks at home. My wife, my son, my daughter, Patrick's granny. Granny, just to let you know, you raised a good kid. He's a good kid. I say kid, he's a man, but great fisherman. I'm still, story's still out on him about everything else. <laughs> we still, we still, we're still trying to decide that. We got till Sunday to figure that one out. <laughs> He don't, he's not, he doesn't have a lack of words for sure. <laughs> That's true. He must not have proved himself at the dinner table yet. <laughs> <with Dwayne. laughs> 
the old and the new. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think either one of them have a lack of words. No. To be quite honest with you, and that's fine. That's why it's fun to watch a team tournament. So Pat, we still live? So Patrick, tell these people what, what you've learned this week. I've learned a bunch this week, really just how shallow these fish will get on these flats. And sometimes it's just little things they relate to and how, I mean, they can be, a lot of times what we're fishing for is isolated fish, not necessarily a group. And I mean, you have to make a lot of cast to find those isolated fishes because we're not targeting a lot of fish. We're just really, it's a difference between targeting tournament fish where you don't catch a lot of fish, but when you catch one, they're better sized fish. And it's just all in being persistent. You know, you gotta make a lot of cast, hit a lot of spots. And it only takes one drift to, to be done for the day. I mean, it, you might make 30, and it might be the 30th drift, it might be your first drift in the morning, but one drift, you just pull into a good school or two good singles. And you know, Patrick, I'm sure it happens in bass. I mean, you bass fishing, you can go all day and Typically, all of a sudden Typically, it's a time of day thing sometimes. Yeah. You Sometimes you catch them first thing in the morning. Sometimes you catch them all day long. Sometimes you don't catch them till 20 minutes before weigh-in. It's kind of like us today, right, Patrick? I I'm mean, you know, it. we didn't eat all day, but at some point we're going to eat, right? <laughs> I mean, fish do the same thing. <laughs> That's I mean, true, 100%. You know, I mean, they're not always sitting at the dinner table. Right, exactly. So it's just at some point they're going to eat, and you just got to keep on, you know, keep on making those casts and, and you know, and, and just be there when, they, when they're when ready to eat. Kind of the saying a friend of mine always says, you know, too, you know, you gotta, you gotta catch them where they wanna be, not where you want them to be. That's, that you is know, true. So, I mean, of course we want them right here, but they might not be right here. So we might have to move somewhere else and find them. And, and that's the thing about it, you know, is just moving around, bouncing around until you find them. And I mean, it was fish here. Oh yeah, Two last days couple ago. of days. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last Three couple days of days. Yeah, we had fish here, and we was like, oh man, this is this is gonna be the spot. And they moved. And, and I mean, they'll be back. They're coming back. They like it here. You know, I mean, at some point they'll be right here, and you know, it might be tomorrow. Tomorrow we might come here and it'd be like, wow. Yeah. You know. I mean, that's... I need to head up there to that island in front of us. All right, I'm with you. You I'm going to ride with you. Is that good? You going to ride with me? Yeah, I'm going I'm to hang around with you for a little <laughs> while today, Patrick. This spot since, is shallow. Since you're such a great guy. Plus, you promised me you're going to buy me dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have to think twice about it. Oh, no. Yep. Dwayne and Patrick are off momentarily. Change up positions right there. Good conversation between those two. We got to eavesdrop on a little bit. Also, we've gotten to follow this duo during the course of the day. Sort of an odd couple. Chris Cincy from Jacksonville and Chris Kennedy from uh, Metairie, Louisiana in the New Orleans area. You're absolutely right. But you know what? They really work very well as a team together. Uh, you know, the CC team, which means yes, yes, in yes, uh, yes. Miami, CC. buddy. Yes, so, well, they say we yes go. to redfish because they know this, that everyone else knows a redfish is a redfish is a redfish. Yeah, like you said, redfish is a redfish. Whether we're in Jacksonville, Louisiana, or here, we're looking for bait. We're looking for a consistency of the water, clarity of it, and, and a depth, a certain depth. They do like a certain depth. You can get too shallow and not catch them, and you can get too deep and not find them. But they do have areas that they like to get on and feed. So it almost doesn't matter where you're fishing looking for redfish. You're looking for the same things that you've been honing in on your whole life. The Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup is brought to you by Yamaha. Humminbird. And by Powerpole. So... Back with you, Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship. Man, Barlow still holding down a good margin in the lead right there. Ten teams out there trying to get the biggest two fish within the slot limit that they can put in the live well today and take to the weigh-in, which is coming up shortly after 3 p.m. Eastern time today. Rickard and Sal Dane land in Savoie. Barton Menendez, 
Eshte and Walters are top five right now. Some good competition out there, tra changing conditions, Captain Rick Murphy. We are not going to have the same conditions tomorrow as we have today. You're absolutely right. You know, the forecast tomorrow, actually the late this evening, around 11 o'clock, is supposed to start blowing 17 to 19 knots. So what that means, Tommy, is 21 to 25 miles an hour, not counting gusts. Now, as I'm looking at the leaderboard just then, the first five teams, one of the things that I noticed was how they're fishing differently. So probably, let's talk about that after we get done with this weather watch. Yeah, the Yamaha weather watch shows us the current conditions. It's just perfect uh, chamber of commerce. But that's tomorrow, not perfect exactly for fishing, but challenging, and that's part of the game. 15 to 25, as you mentioned, Rick, and uh, that's gonna, that's gonna, you know, not only, that's gonna move some water around. Right? Northeast. Getting around a little difficult. Anytime the wind blows out of the north in the Gulf of Mexico, Tommy, what's gonna happen is it's going to blow the water out. It will be very interesting to see when these teams show up as to who has water in the place they think they're gonna have water. Uh, Dwayne certainly says that he loves low water conditions. One of the, his biggest fears or his weakness is when he has high water. So it'll be hmm. interesting to see if this plays into his hand and into his experience. Wow. You know, when I was looking at the leaderboard a minute ago, the top five guys all fishing five different types of lures and techniques. You got rattle traps under corks, you had corks and jerk baits. Then you have guys that are throwing uh, Menendez, throwing a crawdad with a jig head and yeah. almost flipping. And then you got these guys are throwing jig heads with uh, paddle tail swim baits and bouncing them along the bottom. And then you got the boys, uh, Rickard and... Uh, the spoons. Yeah, yeah, throwing spoons. So it's really neat to see how all five teams are fishing, the top five teams are fishing different, pro different we, you know, we, products. Could we see a different bait tomorrow with maybe more waves and more surface disturbance? Maybe maybe a hard wire, a bigger wire spinner bait or something that you haven't seen today? You may see bigger spoons, Ronnie, you know, instead of the vibration of a quarter, which is the favorite size, but simply because of the vibration that it creates. These guys might jump up to a half ounce or even three quarter ounce spoons. Uh, and then you also could see some heavier jig heads simply because they're going to be fishing so much faster and probably have to move out to some deeper water edges. You know, instead of being in two foot or less, they potentially could be in three to five feet because the two foot or less play could be no water at all. I'm very curious to see how this is all going to play out tomorrow. And, and so, I'm glad that I'm going to be here exactly. in the studio with you <laughs> yeah. dudes Instead and of I'm not having not to try here. to figure that out. This is the best of the best right yes. here. Yes. One thing, I'm, one disappointment I have with today, I figured today would be the day we might see some topwater action and it what? just hasn't happened. Well, Houston started off throwing, he was throwing the Berkeley mm -hmm. uh, Jay Walker this okay, morning yeah, I, and uh, the hitchhiker, uh, I mean the hijacker, but you know, he didn't catch anything on it so he put it down. Well, let's make another drift. Okay. Could you see someone like Derek Hudnall, who Ron Houston said he picked up and threw a chatterbait early on practice, and it surprised me he started catching them. Could that extra blade vibration with a swim bait on the back help if it dirties up You know, it could be a great play yeah. specifically if they go to a big 5-inch or a 6-inch swim bait paddle tail of some sort because it'll create a lot more vibration but because of its size in general it'll be a, they'll allow, allow to be fished slower so you'll have the shaking on the front side and have the shaking on the back side and that to me sounds like a perfect combination you got to sit there and wait till it's time to so you're telling up. me all dads are the same yeah all dads are the same yeah 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 so, you know, I mean, that's kind of what it's like right now. We wait, we wait, we waiting for that fuel stop right now. To, <laughs> but he's fish to eat. He's sitting at the rest area, huh? Yeah, he's sitting at the rest area right now, making, you know, you know, how it goes. So all dads are the same, Pat. You, you got to wonder if the barometric pressure starting this fall to now, or actually, I'm sorry, starting to get higher because the front's kind of approached and con <laughs> coming through. And that's what the bluebird sky is all about. It may be the front and the background there, Tommy, with that line of clouds. It hadn't got through yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
definitely something has changed. But when dad's got to go, because guess what? they're not all stop, catching them stop. like they were. Not, my, not the stop. way they were three hours ago oh, yeah. at all. He's pulling over. Why are you stopping? Oh, I thought I heard something rattling in the hood. I got to check it out. <laughs> well, why we stop? I'm going to go ahead and use the bathroom. Oh, and as soon as we man. say that, Chris Cincy from Jacksonville hooks up. <laughs> oh, don't be oversized. Cincy and Kennedy are currently in eighth place. They got two small too fish. Small. Boy, since he puts the pressure on him, doesn't he? he I mean, he's not he's playing not around. Not he's, not. Yeah, oh, everything's decent. He's pulling on his fish. Hey, wait, hang tight, hang tight. I'm not doing nothing. Hang tight, Dave. Five pounder, six pounder. Pull him out. Yep, got him. Yeah, sure. Much better on Finally. Finally. Whew. Land of a thousand casts. Hey, put some <laughs> meat in the boat. <laughs> Well, being from Jacksonville, he had to make a thousand before he could get a bite. That's kind of how the deal is. He's using a swim bait with a chartreuse Black tail. Here in Texas, or so, for some reason. <laughs> that was a love tap. Not that big, right, but big we enough. Got a five pounder in the boat. Finally, five pounder. I'm gonna get rid of that little bitty one. Let's go see what happens. He's gonna Come go back, back in, Mr. Brandon. Upgrade there might uh, might get him even or even surpass uh, Himes and Gibbs. Seventh place right now. Here's the little one. I'm gonna measure him to make sure. The little one was 20, like just barely 20 inches, right? That's the small one. You sure? No. No, I don't think so. That's a big one. I think that's the big one? I think so. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Uh oh. <laughs> See, there it is. One little bigger fish, and already now you got Chris Sensi, you know, relaxing a little sure. bit. And a little chuckle there. Yeah, making jokes. Oh. Let's go see if this is a small one. This is strong. All right, little guy. I'm actually trying to let you go. Dang, that was the big one. Okay, this one's gone. This is a cull. Small fish. Back in the water, healthy and happy. Uh, a little bruised. Bruised ego. But he'll be fine. All right. Yeah, fish talks, they feel so big, you know what I mean? Yeah, it feels big because you haven't caught one today. Oh, nice little. Nice little upgrade right there, a couple pounds. It's gonna put us up around the, uh, well, about the eight pound mark. That could bump them up. Uh, yeah, that'll, put, that'll, that'll uh, possibly get them cool. ahead of Himes and Gibbs. I think it will. We were? Yeah. Yeah. Like they, they put you on live before. And it looks like Menendez right, and Ricky fish. both now have got a pretty short line that's in the lee. Mm-hmm. I just need to see one. Menendez and Bort in fourth place right now. About a pound behind uh, the land in Savoy. We've caught on this flat the whole week, and we stayed off of it one time a day. We'd come by and check it out. So. We're looking for some bigger fish. We have uh, a little bit over an hour because we have a 45 minute run back. So hopefully we can get it done.
45 minutes or so is probably wow. the, the longest, maybe maybe 50 minutes to an hour is the longest they can get away from the Port Aransas takeoff, just because distance north, but when you get in those bays and the marshes, you know, you got to go farther to the north and northwest compared to just straight down the intercoastal, correct? Yeah, but the big thing is that they've got good weather by the most part to really put it in make it quick high gear you know so he could be all the way to the upper or the lower boundary you know but with that yamaha sho 250 he's going to be able to get 62 65 depending on which model he's running there and uh he'll be able to get back to the way in pretty quick I mean, that could be a sign, Chris, you know what I mean? And then they're swinging in a rock or a Those are oysters. All he needs is a little cocktail sauce yeah, and wow. he had it made. Fresh water in there. Open it up, get a pearl. Nice Halfway to a necklace, quarter of a way to a necklace. Uh, well, Ricky would tell you he's the pearl. The <laughs> well, it was. What? I pulled out the small one thinking it was the small one, and it turned out to be the big one. That was sad. <laughs> you know where he was? He was in front of the boat, Chris. Huh? He was in front of the boat. Yeah, towards the so, island. So I was like... He wasn't on the drift we are on. I cast it way out to the side. Going. Where did he sit? Go! Yeah, so they put you on the two box with somebody else, and that means that it's basically you and like another person right next to each other on the screen. Fighting the fish or no? No, 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 no. You, just, you guys were just in a two box, and all of a sudden you went. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, they were like, all right, eight full box. <laughs> What Tommy, you, I think just we're on music. I think no? I'm here. It's different because it's redfish oh, that's, music for the power pole replay uh, of the that's day. That's why we didn't rejoin at the right time. Exactly. <laughs> hey, we're gonna give Rick one more big shot on day one to do this thing right. So, dude, I'm just gonna tell you. Look at these guys throw into this school of fish. They're using the cork to suspend their lipless crankbaits, and it's certainly proven to be a very, very effective technique. So much so that they've already had a half a day to pre-fish for tomorrow. They're sitting at a two seven and a half pounders for 15 pounds, and at one time they had a double. So they're really having a really big day. And simply, that's the power pole replay of the day. Yes, it is. Nice. How'd we do, guys? Very matter well of done. fact. I like that. I like well that. Well done. So we got some guys on the move. We got some guys still trying to uh, find a few things in this area where they're looking to maybe end their day. We'll see how it all unwinds in the last hour, hour and a half of fishing when we return. Retire. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. What a great place, the Southeast Texas coast for sport fishing, and we have one of the most beloved sport fishing species ever on display today in the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter. Team of Van and Barlow, the Texas team, doing very well here. They feel quite comfortable in these surroundings, and they have devised a good way to catch good, solid keepers. Rickard Zaldane, Chris Zaldane, the Bassmaster uh, guy, coming across the fence here to fish redfish, and doing very well, doing a great job of it today, bringing his usual enthusiasm to the task. As a matter of fact, it looks like we're going to go down and visit with this pair right now. We're going to catch him live, hooked up. Stay tight on him, bro. Don't give him any slack. Let's see an eight pounder. Is that it's a paddle tail? 
Yeah, put the heat on him if you have to. And we need that one. Well, that's always the that's nervous hammer, second that's when they turn right towards there. you. Get the uh, perfect pincher out. That's a hammer. Oh, yeah. Got it? Yep. I don't have audio, so you got to get to it. Oh, 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 oh you got it. Somehow, so you're hooked. We're going to have to do this quick, bro. We're going to have to get this fish in the well quick. And he said it was an eight pounder? Eight pounder, just like you called it, Rick. Wow. Yeah. Just measuring. Come on, baby. He fits all day. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Eight pounder. We may have a new leader, guys. We, we very well may have a new leader. So here's the question for you, the million dollar might question. need your help here. He um, stuffed it so hard. We'll wait. We, we'll, we'll wait to hold this thought. <laughs> to both of these guys, Tommy, Chris Aldane, who's going to now make a move into first, and then uh, Patrick Walters, have had great success in the state of Texas, but oh, not man. necessarily in the salt. They've had it up a little north of where we are, but now they moved here. Today. So that's one thing. And Walters, man, this was two years ago. Bassmaster Elite at Lake Fork. Yeah, he went. He went back to back oh, Century Clubs at the times we visited Lake Fork. November of 2020, he won and broke the century mark, and then this year, May, finished second to the local boy, Lee Livesey, and he broke the century mark. Just imagine, Captain Rick, I don't know what you'd equate it to, but imagine catching 31 pounds of bass, five fish limit, and losing by over 12 pounds because your competitor caught 42 pounds. I don't know what that would equate to in redfish, but he actually, he absolutely destroyed them on that final day, Tom. That's unbelievable to think of that. And, and this is what crazy makes it. I mean, I can't imagine what the bass guys go through, Ronnie, with having to grab those fish and not being able to net them. You know, there's some comfort in obviously being able to net a fish. And uh, God, I couldn't imagine having uh, those big treble really hooks why, on the top water. Just a lot of what Lake Fork yeah, resembles in my home. a lot of fun to watch. Just the shallow yeah. stumps. <laughs> there's a lot of big fish. And uh, what I like about it is you can really just target big fish at fork. You know, a lot of times, and that sounds weird to say when you're tournament bass fish, you know, you're always targeting big fish. But at Lake Fork, there's just so many four to eight pound fish in there. Cause I mean, it's just a world-class fishery that um, you don't have to worry about fishing for three pounders. You can literally go head hunting. And um, this year it was kind of fluke luck. You know, I was getting a glide bait bite every morning i'd get one and i didn't really want a bed fish i didn't want a bed fish there there was everybody was doing that and i just hate going down the bank for heavily pressured fish when that's what everybody's doing and so i kind of started out deep and the, 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 as the tournament progressed i had no idea i could catch what i caught i mean i knew i couldn't catch what lee caught but it was just one of those things that the fish migrated to me it was almost like they started dropping the lake but i think there was just so much tournament pressure on the bank where I was fishing offshore shallow points. I mean, it was only two to three feet, but it was off of those spawning pockets. And those fish every day were just migrating deeper and deeper. And it was just one of those things where those guys who were still fishing out, it was just kind of, they were coming to them. I do like fishing in Texas, whether it's bass fishing on Fork or red fishing in Port Aransas. Port Aransas. Let's hit that last hole coming up. You got him? Mullet. Trout. Grass. <laughs> oh, he came off. God. Did you lose him? I lost him. <laughs> I lost him. He was a good one. Might have been a 27 incher. Now that he's lost him, we will sure. never know. Yeah. That's that ain't a fish, 27 right? inches of grass. <laughs>
I noticed they're fishing relatively fast and they're twitching. Going to the redfish zone. We're gonna move to the zone. He's been and too calm all day. He's got, he must have to have something up his sleeve. fish. Dwayne? Yes. Yeah. Well, he's won like 26 redfish tournaments. So yeah. uh, you'd think he probably has uh, got something for just about any fishery Drink? that you guys yep. go I'll to. I'll take a water. He's water. probably succumbed to the, the old saying, if it's meant to be, it will be. This may be one of the most stress-free events. Every one of these teams, these 10 teams are competitors. They want to win, doesn't matter, second through 10th. But really, this is a big celebration of the sport. You get a big first place prize, really no entry, just a congratulations, you're qualifying for it. And then also the teams that are with the elites are just, this is an awesome opportunity. And so, huh? they're having a good time. And they'll know today, they'll get serious tomorrow knowing if they're behind or ahead. Well, here's the question with Chris Zaldane potentially being in first with well, this last eight pounder he just caught. A, is know, that 15 pound lead so going to allow him to whisper to into Trait's ear <laughs> <laughs> at dinner? It, uh, we've caught one redfish here and a couple of trout. Uh, still seems like they're all small fish for us, so. All we can do is keep, keep on keeping on. We see some good ones here. They get down in the grass here. Just keep plugging away. Having a hard time finding upper slot fish. We've caught plenty of fish today, just not the right, right size. Everything's been 20, 22, 23 inches. Many of our Florida anglers, Rick, have actually made the trek over here to fish competitively. Uh, I do that well, I think my wife don't see me drink water. Every She's single guy me, that so. we've got in the tournament this year has um, been to Texas. Okay. Now the question is, how long? You know, I know yeah. Ron Houston hadn't been here since the last time we had the Redfish Cup in Port Aransas, which I don't remember more what year that ago, was. Yeah. yeah, it was more than 10 years ago. And so things have changed. They've had hurricanes. They've had lots of it's population here. growth. The good thing about speaking of population growth, tomorrow with the wind being what it is and being a Saturday, these guys still might have all of this bay to themselves. And think about that. You know, they probably won't have that weekend traffic like they would if they had a beautiful day like this. Mm -hmm. There'd be boats everywhere. This goes down to a square down there. And then that line right there is where we've seen a bunch of them. Dude, we just put an eight pounder in the well. It feels really good. I knew, you know, like you said, if we could average seven, seven and a half pounds throughout the week, you know, with the southern wind, with the northern wind, with the temperature drop, if we could average seven, seven and a half, I mean, we're gonna be right, right there. And, uh, and, and to catch one eight pounds or better and put it in the live well, we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. We really worked our areas over. Oh yeah. And uh, it, 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 it's not worth it to kind of stay and go through a potential six and a half, seven pounder to, you know, to try to catch an eight pounder and just and, and gain one pound. No doubt, man. We we did exactly what I set out to. I, I said today, if we can leave today with 14 plus pounds, that's going to put us where we need to be for an additional two days. Anything happens on the, on the wind change. Yeah. Anything happens when the water drops out. So especially when it's flip flopping, yeah, you have totally. like what you said, a yeah. north wind, then a south wind, then back yep. to a north wind. Yeah. So. And I, I'm, uh, we we're may, sitting right where we need to we be. We may need some of these six and sevens in here We for absolutely sure. may. Yeah, so this is definitely the right call. 
we're just kind of trolling around our flat right here just to, so we don't booger it up too much because there's been some boats in and out of here but what is there like a channel right there hit that yeah, channel I'm gonna and go out that yeah, way so i don't so i don't kind of mess everything of course it's been buzzed over 10 times today by the guys chris aldane and ryan rickard their work is done for today and they've done a good job of it they have done a good job you know and Certainly putting in an eight pounder gives you that yeah, sense of confidence going into day two. I mean, these two guys, we talked about it, they have motivation to win this event as a team because both of them have came up short in a lot of big events. They're second places, they would love to win this one. And Chris Aldane's 2019, I believe he had five top fives, five top threes. And most of those were close, like one fish, five minutes away from winning. It seems like it's always in the conversation at the very end of the vast majority of the tournaments in that magic year of 2019 where the uh, world got a little bit off schedule. It was a great, great year for Chris Dane. Captain Killer just falling short of uh, Carl Jockinson there. Captain Rick, dude, a lot of these guys, even in the Redfish game and the Bass game, they may hold a second place finish against these anglers, but that just shows that they've put themselves in position that many times. What did you say, 17 seconds kind of for, mosey back. for Ryan? 17 you, you second places by Ryan. You these fish because the problem is you get one fish starts going belly up on you, and he does, let's say he does die, he puts off an ammonia, it affects the other fish, then he gets stiff, and it's just not a good scenario. So we're just kind of kind of mosey back we've got plenty of time and uh be back in time for weigh in at the right time so it is that's a smart yeah, move that's you know let's play in uh like, dang, really what happened <laughs> defense you know and the reason why is if you have one fish that's acting a little funny when one of our teams i think it was uh the sense and uh, sensi and Southie. kennedy have yeah, yeah, a fish with a jig in his tongue so, uh, you know, you gotta protect. The key to this is you gotta catch them, you gotta take care of them all day, and then you gotta weigh them in alive. Otherwise, it changes the dynamics of where you're gonna end up at the end of the three days. It affects the Elite Series because they have five fish. You lose one, you can't cull it. Same here, you can't cull it, but it's much more dramatic because it is two, two fish, fish limit. So you can't cull any dead fish and that weight penalty you only have two fish, you, you can't really make it up anywhere else. No, it's going to be a one pound penalty. Back to Hudnall in Houston. That's him. Is it? Yeah, here we go. Coming. Slow and steady. Slow and steady. Look like keeper. Just get that net ready, Bob. I was ready. Uh, we'll see. That's two bites right in here, though. Yeah, it's gonna be short. I'll take a 20 inch right now. I know. Come on. Let me put the poles on. You cast in here. All right. Yeah, I think he's short. Well, we'll find out. That's right. I just had two bites in here. That's right. one I'm looking for, but I'm in the right area. I just got two bites. It's a big dink bite today, the dink bite. <laughs> oh, rat red bite. Yeah, that's that weather change, bub. Yep. When you get that weather change, it's a dink bite, dink. They hit you, dink. <laughs> they hit you, dink. Gotta be 19 incher. What's Jacob Wilder say? Ding! <laughs> Ron Houston says, Ding! <laughs> huh? Oh, Jacob Wheeler? Ding! And, uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've got two that's bites him. in here. That's him and Mark Daniels. Ding! Yeah, but I ain't throwing a rattle trap. Mark Daniels should be throwing that rattle trap or that. Crankbait. Yeah, a dink bite today, my friend. Yeah, it's a little ones. Hey, but, sooner or later. But there'll be a good one eventually. Sooner or later. We've already seen that. You're gonna get the Jacob Wheeler. Ding! Go ahead, let me get that up there. These guys have a different kind of uh, cohesion. 
compared to some of the other teams? Wouldn't you say that, Captain Rick? Kind yeah, of a, you know? co cohesion is probably the right word. <laughs> Uh, you know, Ron Houston, we call him the midnight rider. He's a snook fisherman. He fishes a lot at, at times at night. Huh. And, uh, but, you know, so get, to be able to run around in the Everglades first. in the middle of the dark yeah. and not ever Could pull out a spotlight is kind of a talent in itself. And <laughs> you can tell that uh, he's a little frustrated, but at the same time, he's just happy to, to at least have one in the well. And, you know, he thought potentially that might put him in the second one in the well. And it's a sign at minimum, like you said, two bites at least, you know, yeah. and that's, that's all it takes. He could have no keepers all day long in the last 30 minutes, you catch two coming away and everybody thinks that you had a great day. Yeah. Pushing real good over yeah. There. Nobody knows it's a struggle except <laughs> yeah, exactly. you. And all of us here watch Looks better on paper, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I didn't know better, I'd say he was up against a dink bite today. Oh, yeah. yeah but just uh, you know, <laughs> it's all in about the dink. These guys haven't had a dink bite. Yeah, Landon Savoy. I think they've gone back to look for that school that they pushed up this morning. Currently in third place. We're going to go back over there kind of where we started, <clears throat> see if it's quieted down any, see if those schools have kind of gotten back together. If we can keep, see if we can't stick a few. We need one more seven to keep us right in the middle of things. If I had to guess right now, we're probably a pound and a half or two pounds behind, just from what I can tell from pre-fishing. So. We'll see what we can do. You guys stay tuned. We need one more. Pretty good guess. Two pounds, four ounces behind is what uh, Red Track has them at. You saved me there, Tom. I was about to slip up and say Bass Track. Uh huh. So, yeah. Red Track this week. Red track. It is Red Track. We're live. I'm, sh I'm serious, I'm expecting Dwayne to catch. I'll be really disappointed that if he doesn't catch a seven or an eight pounder before the day's over. A little bit further, you know, it's calm today. Um, we haven't had that much wind. It's kind of dying off water real clear and just it's all about making the longest cast that you possibly can on these flats. So that's why I wanted to see if we could just get out there a little bit further. Catch that big old redfish. We're just trying to see, making long casts, see if it's the boat, they feel the pressure of the boat. Or if it's uh or if it's just we're if, not in the right spot yet. If we're just not in the right zone. In the right zone, right? In the zone. Exactly. We are in the area called the zone. And look, we're live. Dwayne Eshte lost a tail. <laughs> got, got a whole bunch of <laughs> friends down here. I'm surprised he's Patrick, stuck. What you got there, Patrick? It was a he's, little bitty red. He stuck with his dark color was a little bitty one. body with the chartreuse oh, tail. Well, the chartreuse tail doesn't surprise I mean, me, Tommy, but close to Patrick. We are about him's to get on the bright, right here, you know, one of the rules of thumbs that yeah. we have is the darker the, the sky, the darker the fly, the or the darker gravy, the lure, yeah. okay. early in the morning, blocks out more You're silhouette. Like and then the I brighter the sky, the brighter the fly, which would be whites and light colors. Fish, I don't want you to be in my so way. I would have su was surprised yeah, that he didn't go to this yeah, pearl and chartreuse right. color <laughs> no, I'm ready for that. as the bright sky <laughs> came out. Because this is one of his colors, his go-to colors. Okay. That's what it's all about. Why'd you go hit that car? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. See that. Oh, That's why I want to get it out there as far as I possibly can. I mean, I would sit here and tell you we are fixing to be in the zone right here of where these fish should be, right past this little grass flat right here. It should be, it should be the spot. There was fish here all over. Wednesday. But today's not Wednesday, huh? Nope, it's not. Today's a new day. Today's the day I don't that we're going to catch further out there or not. I don't know. I think you cast, you cast that for. You think with a bait caster? Yeah. 
I think he cast just as far. That's what I was thinking too. You're, you're good, Patrick. It oh. don't matter what you do. That was not my question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you cast just as far with your... Now, if we put a half ounce, we most probably... You think so? Get out there and reach out there. But, you know, we're not three-eighths, 10-mile-an-hour winds. And one thing about this place here, when the wind blows, man, these fish are moving. And right now, we just, these light winds got these fish shut down. I think they got them wadded up in a pile. Yeah, they're probably all sitting in the ditch right now. Yeah, possibly so, because I know what he ain't <laughs> right now. Yeah. We almost to the spot we caught the fish. Dwayne Eshte told us yesterday in interviews, man, he loves this place because of two things, clear water, hard white sand bottom. Transplant from Louisiana, who lives here on Texas Gulf Coast right now, and all the rest of them get to enjoy some of the fruits of it all. That would, of course, include the team of Travis Lamp, Mickey Savoie, they got their own reasons for loving this place. You know, we're, we try to just, no, no different than bass. We're using garlic scents and we're using scented baits. Uh, you know, if we might throw a rat tail every once in a while just because the vibration of a powder tail sometimes tends to turn these fish away. We, we pretty much use the same baits. We use spinner baits. We mm -hmm. use, you know, just grubs. We, we, we throw pretty much the same stuff, like you said. One thing you'll see us use, you probably won't see a bass guy use, is a popping cork with a gulp shrimp on the bottom. I don't know if you can get one of these guys to do that this week, but that'll be interesting to see. You're watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, presented by Skeeter Boats. Our 10 teams laboring on here on day one of three days of fishing. Look at that incredible view from above. Some school and redfish in this incredible place here. Just some incredible views we've had today of what's extraordinary about this spot. The environment is just perfect. It's, it's such, a, such a great fertile place for sport fishing. As we look at our Minn Kota Unlock the Lake and we're fishing totally behind this, uh, this barrier island complex uh, going all the way from uh, Almost to, almost to Houston, basically, down to the Mexico border, but uh, man, 80 to 100 miles of ponds and marshes and lakes and drains and ditches and oyster reefs, just everything you could possibly want, so, Captain, right? So we're in the intercoastal waterway south of Corpus Christi Bay down to Bird Island. That's the southern boundary. Then you have all the way up to the north, which is about 60 miles north of the takeoff there in Aransas Pass. Uh, you have the Port O'Connor uh, jetty. And I'm gonna tell you what a perfect place to have the Redfish Cup Championship mm -hmm. because we've got marsh, we've got shell bottom, we've got oyster bottom, we've got uh, open water fishing, as you can see here with Dwayne and Patrick. They're uh, blind fishing in what we would consider hey, potholes. Oh yeah, this is him. And uh, is a trout? You know, we're looking for no, a big fish. For these I guys got 11 is, pounds. And again, I'd be very surprised if Dwayne, by the end of the day, doesn't put a seven pounder or an eight big, pounder in red. the boat. I'm hoping for him because he's always a contender anytime, all the time. This one looks like it's a little fish that got buried in the grass and there's going to be some disappointment on the other end of the line, that's for sure. Thank you, Patrick. No problem. <laughs> Change your pace right there. Kind of what we're looking for here. I mean, not the fish we're looking for, but, you know, we're looking for that. You had to get bit again, you know? Yeah, I mean, we've got to start somewhere. Oh, but so this is about where they were at, right off that yeah. island. you got to start somewhere, you know. You know, Patrick, just to let the folks at home know, I mean, when we were pre-fishing, we didn't even catch no fish like this. I no, mean, we weren't catching anything that small. I mean, everything we was catching was tournament fish. And I mean, right now, you that's know. That's what got me thinking the bite's kind of off. Is yeah, the it's size. just off right now. I mean, size that's biting. pretty little fish. I mean, a little, you know, three pound fish. I mean, pretty. But we want him to grow up and be a big boy one day, you know? So we're gonna turn him loose here. We're gonna let him swim off. 
right here. He could be a big boy one day. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it there, buddy. Patrick, I get just as excited, excited for those as I do the, the big ones because, you know, when they hit, you know, when they hit, you, you'd swear you had a, a big giant fish, you know? I mean, <laughs> that adrenaline just starts flowing when they hit. You're like, oh yeah, this is it. And you know, <laughs> you don't know if he's swimming to you, if he's swimming away from you. You just, you just, like a, a junkie, just, just, I mean, you just like pumped up. You're like, oh yeah, 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 this is the one. This is the one, and you want it to be, so. But, hey, we one bite away. We, we about to catch this big one. This team as it stands right now, just dead in the middle of the standings, fifth place. About four and a quarter pounds behind our leaders, Barlow and Van. We can move and make another, cut another drill. I've waited this before where we just oh, had them swim the bias. Mm -hmm. Tommy Barlow and Glenn Van are leaders down the bottom right there doing stick. more casting than I've seen them do all day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can cut one Yeah, on this side I think they're in that pre-fish mode. They're trying to put together a plan for tomorrow it's, it's right just in case there, whatever they had going on today, right which was here. a right. lot. They yeah, had schools one. of fish in bays that were somewhat protected. I think their big concern uh, by Thomas is that um, the wind is going to blow their water out. And so they're trying to get a lay of the land near and where they've been fishing so that they can position themselves probably to be in the same place as those fish are going to drop fishing's out Fishing's all about timing, too. In the bass fishing world, Rick, there are anglers always talk about managing my fish. I don't want to wear my place out. I need to, I need to leave enough, or I'm counting on them to replenish. Do, they, is, do red fishermen have the same sort of concerns? Oh, absolutely. Especially if you notice with Vaughn, and uh, Van and Barlow, what they did, Tommy, is once they got to 15 pounds, they immediately kicked into, okay, now we need to start thinking about tomorrow. So they were a lot more careful. They got out of the place where those schools were. They didn't want to mess with the fish anymore. They didn't want to educate them. They didn't want to sore lip them. They didn't want to do any of that. They didn't even really want to disturb them. They want to leave those fish alone and hopefully nobody else messes with them and then they've got those fish that'll be happy, so hopefully in the morning. And like I said, you know, looking at the forecast, it looks like it's gonna start blowing late tonight, but then as the day progresses midday and tomorrow, it's gonna start to lay down and switch. My big concern for our guys and our teams just, is going to be flat. the swirling wind. Water. Today they had a little bit of a and north wind, bites, tomorrow they're gonna have a real hard wind mm -hmm. out of the dead north, it's not northeast. And then on Sunday the, the forecast is for it to be hard south. So not as hard as Saturday, but it's still swirling, you know, and that makes the fishing inconsistent or can. So it's just going to be, see how this, the wind blows down the Laguna Madre and how it affects the eastern shoreline and the western shoreline, because there is not going to be very many places they can hide with a north wind. Not executing, but if they're baby trout. We have not fished this spot in pre-fishing. We're just come it, to look at it close by. I've caught a lot of fish here in the past. But... Got trout. <laughs> Baby trout. Baby trout. Oh. Ow. Sorry, bud. There's a trout the with a headache now. <laughs> It's interesting that the trout is still in the drum family. Look at them. Even though, it, even though it kind of looks quite a bit trout. different, you know, other than maybe uh, the occasional right? spot yeah, on it that would look right similar, but you yeah, know, toothy critter as well. Flat. Yeah, for yeah. sure. And then, you know, the cool thing about that canine tooth that they have there, Ronnie, is that that'll break off and grow back. Typically, they have two teeth. If you catch one and only has oh, one tooth, that, it's because he lost that other one. But in along. either case, if both of those Feeding canine himself, teeth yeah. at the top of their right mouth there. break off, they grow back, just like you and I will grow a fingernail back if we smash our wow. thumb with a hammer. You wow. know? 
I tell you, I'm seeing a little bit of frustration here with Cincy and Kennedy. They're disappointed. Their heads are hanging down. You know, Chris Kennedy needs to catch one now to, to elevate these guys, you know. Um, it was nice that they put that five and a half pounder and made a pretty good jump, but you can tell that they're, you know, they're hanging their head. Tom Dooley, as, mm. as on one that. of my mates Pitch would say. grass right there is worth throwing at. Clock is ticking ever louder in the background. Oh, yeah. Get closer to the end of our fishing day. They're both fishing uh, a four inch paddle tail with a jig head in the nose of that paddle tail. Uh, and they're just simply ripping it back, reeling it back. Steady reel, no twitching, not to interrupt the vibration. Same way that you would fish a spoon. And that's the beautiful thing about swim baits that have those paddle tails. They're designed so that they can just be cast and reeled back. And I found in my past, if I were to ever twitch them and break that vibration with a pause, I don't catch nearly as many fish as if I just reel it back, you know, with a straight ripping it back. You know, you'll have, you'll have nightmares about this place. You don't know everywhere to drift on this freaking class. Really, it's just no rhyme. I mean, it's shallow on the top part, not this part. And then uh, the middle one's a little bit different. Well, the water's hot. I mean, there's still mullet here, you know what I mean? It's not a lot of them. That's your favorite thing, isn't it, Chris? Mm -hmm. You're doing a good job sort of driving the boat, for sure. But it's, on a, it's on a good track. Are we drifting now, or you got to pull them No, it's pulling a little. It's on one. It ain't, it ain't barely overpowering the land. Uh, yeah, pinfish. Take my tail again. Golly. Little boogers. See some mullet jumping in the background, so at least he's around some type of fish mm -hmm. there, Tommy. Hopefully those mullet will trigger a bite for him, you know? Beautiful day, isn't it, Brandon? Mm-hmm. He's like, mm-hmm. Like, It's a three-day cumulative wait here. Just carry over day to day, so what we have at the end of today is only one third of the story. We will not have it all wrapped up until Championship Sunday, way in time. Six maximum fish for those three days, six yeah. maximum. So two teams right now are not able, you know, if it ended right now, wouldn't have the ability to get a maximum of six fish with one of our teams with one and one team with zero yeah. so far. So you want to make sure that's the minimum. You get your job done if you catch two, 
your job's really done if you catch eight pounders. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. It looks like we've only had, out of all the fish that we've seen, come onto the deck across the, the screen here, Ronnie, it looks like there's only one which was caught by Rickard, uh, an eight pounder, with yeah. Zaldane. That's definitely the biggest redfish of the day so far. A couple yeah. sevens mixed in, though, from the uh, leading team right now. That's correct. Dan and Barlow with a total uh, under 16 pounds. They've still got time to upgrade, as do all the rest of our nine teams here in this competition. There's some more fishing time to be sure here in Southeast Texas, and we'll bring it to you when we come back. You're watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship, presented by Skeeter Boats. Our live coverage continues. We've got a little less than half an hour left for you to bring you from here in Southeast Texas, the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship in Port Aransas and north and south. Here's the leaderboard as it stands right now, the Texas team of Van Barlow. Barely a lead, four ounces over Rickard and Zal Dane. Rickard and Zal Dane, who not too long ago put an eight pounder in their live well to close that gap considerably. They were a pound and a half or more back before that uh, fortuitous fish showed up. Take you down to the aforementioned leaders right now. Glenn Van, Thomas Barlow. So if you key in on the Barlow rage, y'all go look right behind him, see if the redfish is behind him. So you got one guy casting and the other guy looking. The reds are just kind of absent around here. <clears throat> what was that? A plane loader on top of oh. a barge? Scooping up those rocks, I guess, we saw the other day. Oh, yeah. That was something better than a mullet. Yep. See how quickly, Tommy? Sound like a red How quickly up. he made that cast. It's because, it's like aftermath. again, if he's make blind casting and he's out there 150 feet, 120 feet, he can't make that cast if that fish pops right next to the boat. So they're doing, I mean, they're really doing this the right way, mm -hmm. where one guy's just blind casting, trying to keep something in the water you can't catch a fish if you're something you don't have something in the water and then the other one is the last line of defense yeah you know yeah. and he's ready it's for any little thing driving. that may pop up within 50 feet of the boat and maybe the pile driver took off early today <laughs> i sure hope so uh, yeah man the thing was loud <laughs> the guys are talking about when they were doing the interviews yesterday there was somebody with a big crane pile driving in some steel girders, and uh, they were hoping that guy's not working today. <laughs> Probably into less than an hour of fishing left for these guys, and most of them have to make a run from anywhere from 70 minutes to three minutes back to port a so what's what's possible what's in the world of possibility for this last well what they're 30 to 50 minutes what they're thinking about right now is the guys that have those winning or leading fish of taking care of those fish they want to make sure that they don't beat them up so bad that they kill one by mistake they also uh, you heard Rickard talk about maybe just go ahead and quitting a little early. They had a 45-minute run back to the ramp or back to the weigh-in. And so what he's thinking is that he wants to take care of those fish because it's really important not to have a one-pound penalty if you have a fish die. The other thing that you run into, which I don't think we've seen a fish pushing the envelope, but if you were to have a fish that's 27 and three quarter inches long with 28 being the max yeah. size and that fish dies, then he's not as flexible and they have a tendency to get a little bit long and the wow. fish could actually oh. be too long. Wow. 
So you have to be really careful that if you have one that's not doing so well, maybe it's a fish that was hooked deep earlier in the day, you gotta really make sure that the most important part at this stage in the game for those guys that have a, the top five guys is to make sure we don't lose a single one. All right, fish care, always a big part of the equation. Let's take it out for the last uh, last few thoughts of the day before he sets to work on uh, weigh-in duties. That would be our own Dave Mercer. Dave, what have you enjoyed watching today from uh, this a different sort of tournament, team tournament, and redfish to boot? A different tournament indeed, but I'll tell you one thing that doesn't change. I mean, the playing field that these guys are allowed to fish on is roughly five miles wide by 80 miles long. And we have traveled a lot of it today. And I'm gonna tell you everywhere you go, it's not hard to tell why people call this, you know, Texas is fishing capital, just simply because everywhere we go, this water is alive. I mean, you just see mullet busting, you see porpoises everywhere. I mean, it's just wild, the amount of movement everywhere we go here. And the crazy thing is, you know, when we were watching Sal Dane this morning, he was basically in a residential area. Then we were with Walters and it looks like an industrial area. And then you get in this 80 by five, area that they get to fish then you get miles and miles of flats like we're up in here you can just disappear in those reeds it is truly a bountiful bountiful area when it comes to fishing and uh, man you look at these conditions right now this is what you want flat calm and and we can't find a boat that's i mean the problem is i mean we're in the right area i'm sure the leaders would be leading if they were here but, <laughs> but we can't find them guys we have devices to help us find them they're only in an 80 by 5 box but but i'm sorry i have failed i hope the way ins better oh, oh we know it will be better in fact we want you to give us a, a preview of what we need to look for in this way in here because it's going to be different from a bass fishing way from a bass master elite series way in it really going to be a lot different, Tommy. There's just two fish this time around, obviously. Uh, but the big thing is measuring them. There, there's, and I've got to, that's why I got to run back to get briefed by Hank Weldon to learn all the rules. But this morning we were talking about it. If you're, if you measure a fish, he says, and it does not measure, they will take that fish off. They'll measure the other fish. And then the other fish that did not measure gets a second chance to measure. I don't know wow. how this works. This is going to be exciting. But that fish has to weigh within 30 seconds. You only get 30 seconds to make it measure the second time. So it, it'll be interesting. I mean, we're going to be measuring them up on stage. And uh, I don't know if we've got a shot clock or what, but it, it's definitely <laughs> going to be different. All right. Well, that sounds good. That sounds like something well worth tuning into. And we will be watching. Lithium Pros on the line. Dave Mercer helping us out with that segment today all day long. And Dave coming up with a weigh-in later on today. It's probably around 4 Eastern time. Ronnie Moore, you yeah, say? They're on gonna, Bassmaster.com. They're going to check in 245 Central, 345 Eastern, and give it, you know, give them 10 minutes to get situated, get their fish up there, and then we'll be obviously live with Mercer through all 10 teams. They get to hear how they caught them today or how they didn't catch them and what their hopes are tomorrow. Got it? Yep. Good one? Uh, doesn't feel like it. Although he's pulling drag, not very much though. Let me get him out just in case. He's got two three pounders. It doesn't need to pull much drag to be bigger than a oh. three pounder. Tom. <laughs> huh? Uh oh. This freaking net's all jacked up. How big is it? I know that he was right there in that where that ripple yeah, comes. I told you. Had money rolled on. He might help. Nah, he ain't gonna help. He might, I don't know. I don't know. Manning in sixth place. Like some help. Mm, yeah, that should do it's something. Tough. I think so. I think he's. I think he's bigger than our small one, or pretty, pretty close. You hold him, and I get the other. All right. I'm gonna get it. That's our big. Hey, 
do little ones. I mean, I can grab that big one every once Put that dip nut in there and dip his ass out of there. I don't think he's going to help. It's not as easy as reaching in there and grabbing him by the lip, is it? No, no. It's just, <laughs> yeah. Well, Matt's going to, if he does that, he's going to draw really? back a bloody thumb. I can tell you <laughs> that redfish is pretty famous with those little sharp teeth that they have in there along the top and the bottom of their lips. There you go. And that will actually leave you with a, an impression of, and you grab one, one. you got to grab one. That's definitely the bigger one. So my dad at a, at a Bass Pro Shops put his fingers above the tank as a puffer fish came up because it was so cute. And the guy said, I wouldn't do that. They, uh, they eat nothing but oysters and clams. And so they, they will crush your finger really quick. And he's like, oh, okay. It looks pretty And they got teeth cute. like yeah. a rat. So <laughs> they went, oh, it goes oh. right on through. All right, we'll let them sort that out for a while. Get back on the water with the team of uh, Ron Houston. Derek Hudnell. With close to seven pounds for, yeah. for Manning and Heron, that's got it. That has to call. I mean, that's a, that's a three ish. It's got to be at least close to calling for them. Yeah, I think that fish was probably three and three quarters, maybe. Now, four here we pounds. go. Yeah. If Heron threw one back, it's probably yeah. the one he grabbed out, which was probably their smallest. So. Right. Chad puts the coal in. A few ounces. Yeah. yeah. As he famously said, as Matt famously said, that's in the box. That's, that's in the box now. John, look at the back pond. Huh? See the back pond getting dry? Yeah. Let's come down. That's yeah, certainly Hopefully some fish will come out to play. So the bottom okay, there that, uh, that one right there. Yeah. Yeah. Nikki and rolled over uh, that. Travis Whatever. are fishing. Mm -hmm. Land in Savoie. Uh -huh. uh, that bottom looks a lot like the bottom that you had Rickard and um, Zaldane. Zaldane. Yeah. See it. Derek looks like he sees one here. Go ahead and catch an eight pounder, Derek. We'll have to get some sound bites this week of the redfish croaking if we can get one up close to a microphone here. And oh, they croak. Make their little, they their make, little grunt and croak. Yeah. Well, Chris Aldane put, it, put his throat, you know, up there when, yeah. he, when he was holding one up and you could hear it yeah. really well. Yeah. yeah. Come on, don't play the suck game. Big roll up there, you saw it? Is it to the right of where you threw? Look, again, Savoie and Lan not casting, but simply just mm -hmm. looking for the slightest little dimple, the slightest yeah, little there, thing to give again. away a potential right fish. That bush. The long cast could make them out of position. Fishing time is growing shorter and shorter. With each passing minute, Van and Barlow hanging in there. Good job by that team today. Really seemed to be in control and uh, had a few good things happen to them as well. Rickard and Zal Dane, big push in the last couple of hours to pull up within just ounces. And all the rest in pursuit. Who's going to make the next strike? Who's going to catch one next? We'll find out when we return. Watching the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter Boats. We have a few minutes left in our live broadcast today. It has been such fun bringing you some terrific red fishing and some great competition here in the Yamaha Bassmaster Redfish Cup Championship presented by Skeeter, Van, and Barlow hanging on to that lead, albeit a small one. It could be a dead tie because these are, after all, estimates here on, uh, what do we call it, Red? Red Track. Red Track. Red Track. Now, 
Captain one more. Rick Murphy. One more in you. You're the man in charge. You're the man with the sole power to deliver one of our most important right, moments so of the day. So let's take a look at the power pole yes. replay of the day, guys. I like it. We're talking about Team Van and Barlow. These guys had some schools located in their pre-fishing. And what's so crazy is they brought a new technique, something that I've never seen in 40 years of experience. They're using a popping cork turned around backwards so that it can simply take a lipless crankbait, a rattling noise, and suspend it in the water column so that it's not down in the grass and wait for the schools to encroach and get close enough. They're throwing that cork out in front of the schools, letting the schools swim up to them, and then they're, they're eating that silhouette of that bait fish look that the lipless crankbaits have. You know, and what's so cool is these guys, Ryan Rickard and Chris Zaldane, caught an eight pounder, the biggest fish of the day, just shortly, a few, you know, yeah, a few within the past half an hour, hour ago. And it looks like it's put them, if not ahead of them, but real close within the same 15 pound range. Yeah, he is. And yeah, I'm gonna tell you, I'm really impressed with these two teams. They were very, very well prepared. Yeah, uh, they were fishing right a little there. bit oh, yeah, of a different technique. Right uh, they were around a lot of fish, not right to here, mention that all of these teams have not quite had the success that these two guys or these two teams have. And the truth is, here comes the big eight pounder. Oh, I know the feeling there, Tommy. Watch Chris's reaction here. This is the real deal here, man. And that, to say the least, that fish is eight pounds and he's only 26 and three quarter inches long. He still had another half inch. He'd be a nine pounder if he could go that big. He's throwing a simple spoon, a little wobble bait. That's what they were catching most of their fish on throughout the day. And who's, who's in the better place? Those two are Bar, are Barlow and Van. Well, uh, I'm gonna tell you the top three teams Certainly, Land and Savoie, they're right there too. They're only one bite away from sure. really having a real big fish. And again, tomorrow the weather is going to certainly be a factor. How many of these teams are not going to be able to get to the flats where these schools were? And then when they make their adjustment, is that adjustment going to be in the right place to be able to intercept all this? You know, and look at what we've had, Mark Menendez. Ricky Boyd. He has done. He's brought some bass fishing techniques. Now we're talking. He brought those techniques to uh, simply throw in where he can see the fish, uh, using a crawdad as on a jig head and working it real slow as the daylight lit up. They caught lots of fish early, but a lot of them were small. And, uh, you know, the name of this game is trying to catch that fish that's up to 28 inches, not to exceed 28 inches, and have him be the fattest. Once they moved into these back little creeks and uh, bays, then they started catching some fish. And when I see this, Tommy, the one thing that comes to mind, look at how the bottom is a little bit siltier. Yeah. And so I wonder if the fish have moved there because of the cooler water temperatures, because the softer bottom is gonna hold heat through the day and through the middle of the, yeah. Yeah, because it's, it's just, it's muddy, and those fish can lay down in that mud, and you can see that as those fish root around uh, as they're trying to get off of the hook. But Nobody more, else fish in a situation that looks exactly like that. It's now, unique, yeah. Yeah, and that's certainly the power pole replay of the day. You want to know what, Tommy? Captain Rick said a couple of these teams came prepared today, and they showed out by how many they caught and how big they caught. I think Captain Rick showed up prepared today oh, because man. that was an unprompted five-team power pole replay of the day, and you crushed <laughs> that was, it. That is just absolutely. <laughs> you crushed it. See, Ronnie's trying to butter me yeah, up. Yeah, so, I guess he's got so a favorite ass. So I can take him here. to dinner or something. Hey, I still need to go and catch catch the redfish <laughs> in my lifetime too. So I'm like, oh, oh, come be on, cash you're laying the in. groundwork for that. Yeah, exactly. exactly. We only got to either go north or south. Of here I mean <laughs> south or east of here sorry so here we got uh, again I, I can't emphasize this enough probably the winningest guy in Dwayne uh, Este from uh, Louisiana Patrick Walters we know that his qualifications but I can't believe that Dwayne hasn't put a six and a half or seven or even an eight pounder. I know he was catching these fish in his pre-fishing. He just, again, you can't control what bites your hook. And he's one bite away from changing the whole leaderboard. Wow. Okay. Well, let's think about this. Tomorrow, we do it again. 
top of the tide at 9 30 or so in the morning wind blowing in the opposite direction pushing against each other yeah how's that going to change things well certainly that's going to be part of the factor early in the morning you know until 10 or 11 o'clock and then once the tide changes and starts going out I'm hopeful for the teams that the wind is starting to subside. That's what their forecast is around midday into the afternoon that it's supposed to lay down. But the one thing you can count on, Tommy, is if the tide and the wind are going together, uh, it will magnify how much of that outgoing tide goes out. Okay. Because a north wind is going to hold the water out on the incoming and then help blow it out on the outgoing yeah so that is definitely going to be a factor these guys are going to have to strike quick in the morning hopefully they, the forecast is for it to be bright and sunny maybe they'll be able to see them uh -huh. but they are supposed to have the, the greatest amount of wind uh, early in the morning as you can tell there by the marker on that little point the water is pouring out of the marina there where they're headed in I can't afford the bait to go visual one of them Guys are headed up to the marina. This is this is the nervous moment, you know. Mm -hmm. They gotta go check in, and then once they check in, uh, then they're gonna sit around there and wait till the other teams show up, and then they'll get to weigh in their fish. I don't think any of the teams are gonna be too nervous about having a fish that's oversized. I didn't see any of that today. Uh, I don't think we got, yeah. So I, I think it's just a matter of how much do they really weigh on the official scale. Oh, wow. Day number one, just about everything that it was promised. Man, some great, great redfish action today. Such great diversity of approaches and, and, and baits and just everything. That's, that's what you like to see. You want to be exposed to many different ways to catch them successfully as you can. And that's what makes a redfish so fun is that he can be virtually caught on anything. The key, the hardest thing about redfish and Tommy is just being around the fish and being around the right fish especially in a tournament. Right. You could be around 20 inches, and guess what? That's not what we need for a tournament, but have a great day of fishing. Absolutely. Weigh in coming up 345 Eastern Standard Time on Bassmaster.com. We'll see you at 8 a.m. Eastern tomorrow.